Good morning. Good morning. How is everybody today? I'm just saying, I'm good, thank you. I was just saying now, I admire ladies and gentlemen who do cleaning. Because I cleaned my house yesterday and I pulled a muscle here. I've got a tum tum into my heel, my back and my leg here is aching, and I've only done the upstairs. Anyway, uh, there was something else quite profound I had to tell you. But anyway, let's do the early bird first. Here we go now, the early bird, something we sell perfectly well normally, and we take money off just so you can start your day. Now, when you bought this and you've checked out, it means that your um, PMP is paid for, because you only pay one PMP for the whole day. Yeah, yeah, I can't see. Can't see very well. Anyway, uh, now, this is brilliant, right? So this is your bobbin winder from Hemline. Now, I've already threaded it up, so you can see you put your thread on here, you wind your thread around the tension, and you put it around the bobbin, right? Can you see that? And then all you do is you press the button and your bobbin fills up automatically. So whilst you're, if you've got a sewing machine like mine that hasn't got an independent, you have to stop sewing to fill the bobbin, this way you can carry on filling your bobbin while you're still sewing. It's so easy. Just need three batteries. Batteries are not included. Uh, and it comes with full instructions. So, 37 99 Now, you know, normally take a couple of pounds off, don't we, for an early bird? Wait, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Not two pounds, not three pounds. How many pounds are you taking off, Ben? Many pounds, 17 pounds, I think that is, is it? Hang on, 20 pounds, 18 pounds. 18 pounds. Oh, Julie Peplow's just arrived. Uh, 18 pounds, come off there, almost half price. Oh, no, it's not clearance, it's not said. It's because Vic, I don't get clearance days anymore, do I? Uh, um, I don't know, Bex had the last one, Vix had yesterday. I think they think I talk too much. 19, 19, and of course they're phasing me out, aren't they? Phasing me out. Don't forget there's a new announcement today as well. There's an announcement today, it's in the first break. You need to watch the first advert of the first break. And also, we will be announcing all the winners. So the shop to win fr first, uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and the Debbie Moore um, panels winners. I oh, know, we've got so much going on, but you need to check out on this. You need to check out. These are going, these are going. Be careful, be careful, be careful. Make sure you go through now. Make sure you go through and get this. And then that's your PMP paid for for the day. How brilliant is that? Uh, it's so easy as well. It's so easy. And then when you finish, when you finish doing it, you see, you can then take that off there. It all packs away. Look, let me just take it off here for you. Oh, look, that goes down like that. That goes down like that. That goes down like that. And it stores away nicely on your shelf. No, 19.99, 19.99. Gorgeous little, look how it all fits together nicely and everything there, with the little clasp at the front. Absolutely brilliant. Then you lift your thingy up like that, your thingy up like that. And it's, it, I mean, you don't really need this because it actually has got arrows showing you exactly where it goes, which direction it's got to go around and everything. 1999. It's like something that Q designed for James Bond back in the 60s, isn't it, this one? Anyway. Beautiful, 1990. I keep going through loads of you there. Loads of you there. Oh, hang on. And there's loads of people. Hang on. Sorry, I've done this. Yvette says good morning. Paula says good morning. Uh, ja the other Jan says morning. Very misty and damp today. Wasn't here. Wasn't here. Uh, Gillian says morning. John Scott and team. Pam Minnie Harley says morning. Lovely. Cousin Susan says good morning. Louise. Morning, John and team. Sitting on my hands today after the sales yesterday. Don't you be doing that. Spending money on Vicky's day when you could be spending money on my day. We've got Hayley West today. We've got Sam Sabido today. You won't be able to sit on your hands for long, that's for sure. Um, hang on, who else? Dee says morning, John and team. Sue says morning. Kat says morning. I need one of those bobbin winders. Mine's broken on the machine. Get it? It's nearly half price. It's nearly half price. Look, Pauline says good morning. Hilary says good morning. Anne says good morning. Blimey, you're all there bright and early on this Tuesday morning, aren't you? No, 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 my machine doesn't have, it doesn't have an automatic one. Some machines you can, you can sew and fill your bobbin at the same time. Oh, no, they're high-end, high-end, high-end. So these are brilliant. Also, if you do like a Delphine project and you need about 20 bobbins filled, all different colours and everything, then you pre-fill them before you even start sewing. Make sure you use the right bobbin, though, for your machine. Trace says, good morning, have a fab day. Jan says, morning, gorgeous. 
She's obviously watching the other channel. I get two reels of cotton. Hang on, I get two reels of cotton, one for the machine and one for the bobbin winder. There you go, Louise. Here's another message now. Morning, John. This new version looks so much better than the old one. I've got the old one later, Carol. <laughs> but it's not. Different brand, different brand. Anyway, another message. Morning, John. Hope you had a nice bank holiday. Josephine, I cleaned the upstairs of my house. I, and when I say cleaned, I don't just mean like little. I literally took the shower doors off and cleaned the shower doors. I got the. Um, I, 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 what's that? Black mould and, and all that, all that. I did the scrubbing and everything. I had goggles on in the shower. I was in the shower and I... Because when you reach up and it comes... I can't be doing with bits of acidy stuff going in my... So I wear goggles. Washing the shower, washing... did all the... I've done all four bathrooms. They're all done. Uh, no, now, it's really funny you should say that. I didn't have a playlist on. And then I went into my office and I thought... Oh, so I put the... Um, Nuns of St. Ostal on, but that wasn't really very good. So I then put on a couple of my bang, uh, bang um, so I was cleaning and putting that. And then when we went downstairs, it's really weird. I went into the garage, right? And I put all my CDs in a big box. I thought, I fancy a bit of something a bit different. So I've got my CDs. Out. I found all these 70s disco specials, right? Hadn't even, they'd not even been opened. They still had the cellophane on them. So I just put it on full blast. I had 70s disco going on. I haven't finished yet. I haven't finished the downstairs yet. I've got to do that. When I get home, I've got a, a personal training session and cleaning to do when I get in today. Uh, Helen says, morning, John. Love your shirt. Thank you, Julie Vaughan. Uh, sounds like you had a burst, burst of clean. I did, but Julie, I've pulled every muscle. I can't tell you. I don't know how clean it. And last night, you know you have those nights where you think, I haven't slept a wink. I haven't slept a wink all night long. I haven't slept at all. I obviously had, but it feels like I haven't slept at all. Anyway, loads of you there. How many are in baskets, please? OK, there are 10 left. There are 10 of these left at this... You all right, Jay? Yeah. Yeah, there are 10 of these left, right, once you've all checked out at that price. Now, remember, that price goes back up at midnight. So make sure... I will remind you, actually, I'm going to remind you in the tools hour, uh, the second tools hour about this one. Well, is it gadget hour or is it tools hour? I don't know. This is Gadget Hour coming up now, but I, I won't remind you in this hour. I'll remind you in the second... Let, oh, I'm talking too much. He went, can we see the menu, John? Here's the menu. Gadgets and storage at 8 o'clock. 9 o'clock, grab and grow panels with Hayley West. Now, what pictures have we got for that? Bags first, yeah, grab and go. Look, there's six different versions of grab and go today. Six different versions. Oh, Julie Vaughan, Julie Vaughan, Julie Vaughan, can you do me a massive favour? Can you email in the picture of your needle holder, your needle keeper? Hayley's forgotten to bring it with her, you see. And I know that Julie Vaughan's made it and she put a picture of it on Facebook. So if you've got your picture, Julie Vaughan, can you send it to, uh, the, you know, the email address, studio at sewingstreet.com, studio at sewingstreet.com, if you've got time, only if you've got time. Right, then we've got sewing room tools at 10 o'clock, where I'll recap this. Oh, right, now there's only five, be careful now, be careful, there's only five left when you've all checked out now. I might not be able to reply to that later. Then at 11 o'clock, we've got sewing bunting. Summer bunting, not sewing bunting, summer bunting. That's one, two. Oh, no, hang on, the second one, we haven't got the second one. Oh, yes, we have, yes, we have, yes, we have. Tell a light, tell a light. Sorry, that was my bad. Oh, look, that's not in Haley's garden. Where's she gone to do that? That's a vintage Union Jack she's done there. Anyway, 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 and then, oh, Sam Sabido's in at 12 o'clock. Look at this. Now, if you follow her on Facebook, she did a competition to say which, not a competition, just a questionnaire, which one, which colourway should I wear? Have we only got that one colourway? Look, which one did you vote for? Next, next one. I nearly voted for that one. Oh, we've only got two. Oh, she's only sent two in, but she's four colours. I sent in the white background. Right, before I go over to there, we were supposed to do this straight away. No, what's the matter? Yes, we should have done, I should have done this before I did the menu. 22.50, now this saw that flew out on B-Day the other day. It's Joe Carter's uh, new B-toy. It's got a name, Ambrose. I wonder why they haven't put Ambrose in the, uh, in the menu, in the graphics there. Yeah, there you go, look. How gorgeous, 22 pounds and 50 pence. Beautiful, isn't it? Ambrose. So let's have a look in the box. 
There you go. So you've got your instructions. You've got your eyes. You've got your embroidery thread for the face. You've got your cream fabric for your wings. You've got your black fabric for your feet. You've got your wadding. And then you've got your gold and your... I think that's called banana. Is No, 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 no. Ambrose wasn't banana. The duckling was banana, wasn't she? Anyway, all of that there for £22.50. Now, there's not many of these left either. It's just yellow. It's just called yellow. Not all put that in the auction. Not many of those left. Now, they come directly from Joe's. If you buy it from us today, uh, they will be sent out. For oh, right. Now, I've just got to tell you something then. She's not in for a week. She's not at home for a week because it's half term. Right. So if you buy this today, it won't be sent out till next week. I'm only telling you to, you know, so you don't start messaging going, where's my bee? Joe's not sent me my bee. She's put a thing on Facebook saying she's... No, oh, there, yes, they would. £22.50. 19th of February was the first demo of this one. And then they did it on B Day this week. And uh, flew out, literally. Right, there are three ways you can get in touch. First way is by email. Studio at sewingstreet.com. That's how we're going to send the picture, Julie Vaughan, and Ben will keep an eye out for it. She might not be watching. She might have gone for a champagne breakfast or something. She lives that kind of lifestyle in St Albans, you know. Um, second way, Facebook Live. Roxana says, good morning. I love Joe Carter's bee toy. I, well, everybody does. It's very, very popular. Oh, hang on. Let me just stand up because I've got things. Yeah, yeah, I was just about to... It was charging. Right, Joe. Uh... So, uh, second way is Facebook Live, sorry, Facebook Live. Third way is go to the website, www.sangstreet.com. You go to the front page, you click on the top right-hand corner, watch the show live. Uh, there's me on the left-hand side, bike box on the right-hand side, yes. Carl, scroll down the page, you will see everything that's coming up on today's show. Left-hand side is things you've seen already. And right-hand side is things that are coming up. So here is my gadget hour. Oh, we haven't got the green machine out. Beautiful. He was in the other day and the bronze, the bronze bundle flew out the door. It was incredible. Anyway, that's all your first hour there. Bit of native lighting in there. Then we went to Hayley. Say she's got the, uh, she's only got the Onyx sewing machine. The others are there in case you want to have a look at them. Um, we don't know why Ian's put in the freezer paper. Uh, the, the jelly rolls are coming up later. Uh, there are six different panels to make the grab-and-go bag. There's the grab-and-go pattern if you want it. Beautiful. Then we're back onto tools. The blades are back in stock. Loads and loads and loads. That lovely needle. Oh, now the needle. I need that. I need to take that, actually. Uh, oh, oh, look. Prim mining ruler sold out already. Sorry about that, everyone. Needles, needles, needles. Fred's, Fred's, Fred's. Hand needles. Oh, there's the old uh, macaron again. I might crash on the macaron. No, no, we can because we had it in our under £10 out the other day. Oh, look, now haley has got her own dyes. haley has got her own dyes. Well. And that lovely recycled fabric she's got. Utopia, lovely for the shacket. Now, there's only 60 of the shacket patterns left. Now, I know that sounds a lot, but it's not a lot. You know full well it's not a lot here. Um? Yeah, hundreds gone in the past. She sold out twice already. She's got, she's got her own dies as well. They'll fit in your Gemini machine and your Sizzix machine. Yep. And there's your Sam Sabido. Here's the other colours. Oh, it looks different. The white one looks different on there. That's the one I voted for. Anyway, anyway, should we go on? Should we go on? Because that takes too long and Hayley gets angry with us. It's all changing soon. Right, so, big announcement in the first break. You have to watch the first advert in the first break. I even did, everyone was asking me on my Facebook Live, they say, what is it? What is it, John? What is it? I didn't even tell anybody. I refused. Everyone kept guessing and I kept refusing to say. So I've not told anyone. I've not told anyone. Necklight. Oh, the furthest thing away from the desk. Right, here we go. Right, here we go. Rechargeable necklace in the black. Only in the black today. No, it wouldn't have been good for my cleaning because it was a beautiful sunny day. Right, this. Look, look, look. Right, now, to switch it on, you, re you charge it up, right? You charge it up. Look on here, right? So each one, are you going upstairs or front? Okay, look, each one's independent of each other. Look, I'll get the right same... 
No, it's on split. Why is that on split pay? It's only meant to be on. Oh, be careful, Jen. It's only meant to be on split pay when Claire's in. Right, so what can you wear these for? Uh, reading, knitting, crocheting, sewing, walking the dog at night time. Now, the other thing I've got to do is they've got three different colorways. Well, there you go, I've got them both the same now. Three different colorways. If you keep your finger on it or your thumb on it, it dims down and brightens up. Look, can you see that? Look, 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 look. And then when it gets to its maximum or minimum, it flashes at you. Oi, oi. 25 99 three-way split pay. That's ridiculous. Uh, three eight twenty four five eight eight pounds something to be when they've taken away my split off my screen now. So eight sixty six, eight pounds sixty six, and they're really light. They're re no no, it doesn't give you the proper one. Right here we go, here we go, and look how look how repositionable they are. Beautiful. Oh, also aeroplane. If you can't be bothered reaching all the way up there, you can read. If the lights were turned off, you wouldn't know they were on. No, uh, 25 99 uh, brilliant, aren't they? Absolutely brilliant. Very fair. Oh yeah, now Ben's saying if you drop something down the side of your sofa, you can go looking for it like that, can't you? 25 99 Are they what, Hayley? I've said sewing. I said sewing, knitting, crochet. You're not listening. She's, she's so busy showing off today. She's got friends in today. Yeah, if you, yeah, if you as a husband, partner, boyfriend, girlfriend's watching the telly, right, and you don't want to put the big light on, you want to sit there doing your EPP at the chair. Yeah. You know what I mean? Twenty five ninety nine. Moving on. Right now, I dropped my two in one travel lamp last night, and it's fine. No, it's absolutely fine. It's not a torch. I mean, it is a torch. So you know the you know the stray cat that keeps coming into my house. I've got into this thing now. It comes into the house at night time, eats the food, right? Then it sits on the stairs and meows. I chase it out, right, with my torch, right? But last night I, I heard him coming through the cat flaps. So I'm going to be ready. So I got my torch. It was pitch dark. Got my torch. Nothing on. Pair of flip flops, right? Went like this. Tripped. I tripped on the Hoover wire, and the thing went flying. And it was perfectly faced. Fine. Split pay three way. Split pay. Look. 1533 or something like that, isn't it? Anyway, look, is it? No, it's not meant to be on split pay. Right, so do you, the way you switched on, you tap that twice. Look at the beam of light. Now, can we do the, can we do the studio wall, please? Here, yeah, what? Look, can you see it? Can you see it? Look, can you see how, look! How brilliant is that? It's so, now I can find the cats from my bedroom window in the woods behind my house by the lake. I know, I know. And so that, that's one good thing, right? But the other thing is you can also have it as a bedside lamp. Look, look at that. So really, really good. Uh, if you have it by the bed, you want to read and your partner doesn't. If you're going away, you've got one in your car, then uh, want to read the A to Z. Who has an A to Z these days, mind you? Do you know what I mean? Uh, and then you can, look, 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 look. Got different brightnesses there as well. How brilliant is that? $45.99. So, oh, okay, oh dear me. So when Ben gets up for a wee in the night, he puts the torch on. I don't know. So of course you wake her up. At $45.99, £15.33 on split pay. Uh, now you charge it with a C. This isn't the charger you get with it. This is not the charger you get with it, but you do get a C charger. It's a USB and a C charger, this one. Uh, but the one you get is longer than that. This one's off the um, um, uppy downy like this one. Anyway, 45 99 three-way split pay. Okay, so Ben thinks he wants to. Oh, Julie Warren says, I love my travel lamp. So powerful and portable. Christine says, morning, gorgeous. John Scott. Early bird bought, says Paula. And she says, morning all. Everyone's in today, aren't they? 45 99 Great light torch, easy to use in lots of situations. Oh, it's a FIFU from Linda. This item is brilliant, very compact from Melanie in Norfolk. And Valerie, fantastic for the holiday I'm about to go on. Five star. Oh, where did she go on? Oh, she's not watching. I wonder where you went, Valerie. Right, Joe, moving on. Up you down, you like. Now, Vix has got one of these. I've got one of these. Now, when I first saw this, I was thinking 
Who on earth wants one of those? Who on earth needs one of those? Well, I use mine all the time. Now, there you go, three-way split pay. Three-way split pay. None of these should be on split pay. Ian, it's Ian, right? Ian's meant to sort this out after the show. Right, so you switch it on here. There's a little button you press here, right? Uh, so you press the button and it comes on. That's lovely warm light you see there. Now, you can fade it up. Oh, actually, watch the... Uh, no, don't watch the table for this one. You can fade it up and down, look. So you got... So when Vix first had Maisie three years ago, she got one of these and she used it as a night light and she used to put it on low like that. When it's charged up, it, on low, it can last for up to eight hours. Now, I'm going to put it on bright, right? Because it's got this as well, look, because I've got mine outside. Uh, well, when there's a nice day, look, I'll just... Hang on, I'll just show you. It's got a handle there. Can you see that? Oh, there you go, from the top there. Right, while you're on the top, watch, dim the lights for me. Oh, dim the lights for me, oh. Right, so that there is your lovely warm light. Stay where you are. Oh, I'll tell you where you are. Look, 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 look. Goes to daylight, goes to daylight. And again, you can dim it down, you can brighten up, you can dim it down, you can brighten up. You can even switch it on and off from that side. And if we just turn the lights back up, you'll see there's the charger there where you just charge it up there. You can also, I never know why you would do this, but if you put it on the side there, it kind of goes half and half. You can, yeah, it's done it now. You can't see it on the telly though there. This side's warm and that side's cold there. 63.99. Zigzag lamp. I've got this one as well. <clears throat> They're all on split pay. Right. So now the thing... Oh, now, you see, that's my bad. I was practising with this and I didn't switch off and I've left it on inside the box. Oh, hang on. You're supposed to, are they, are they, you're supposed to just keep your finger at the one, two, three, four. There you go. Right, so what it is, it comes like this, folds up nicely, fit in your handbag, fit in the glove compartment of your car, anything like that. So you can then open this up, right? Oh, nice zigzag lamp. Switch it on there. And then if you touch this, you see you've got different brightnesses there. But it doesn't just do that. Ready? It's got an extender and you can angle this to wherever you want it to be angled. Angle this to wherever you want it to be. See, again, it's rechargeable. Now, please remember, it doesn't switch off when you close it. So you need to keep your finger on the button just for about five seconds, and that closes it away like that then. Uh, morning, gorgeous John. Oh, thank you, Karen. Uh, reverse light, brilliant for my daughter who suffers with chronic migraine. So versatile from Karen Lee Sussex. I, yeah, I, I should put mine by my bed, actually. I don't know why I don't. I use mine when I do my... Fa I did my Facebook Live from a different room this week and it threw everybody, didn't it? Donna says, morning all. Claire says, morning John. Fiona says, morning John. I bought the travel lamp for my husband to use in his workshop. Beautiful. Gorgeous. OK, next. Love heart storage bag. There you go. It's, that's the size. It's not the great big one. 4 99 Crash in. Cute, isn't it, this Rex of London? $3.99. I like the size of this one, because we do do this one in a great big, like, laundry bag, don't we, sort of thing. But I like this size for shopping. This is like when Hayley West goes down the pastry shop. This is, she'd fill this. Oh, she's filled two of these, actually. Two of these, yeah. Oh, they do, that's where I stop every day on my way home. Oh, what time was it? No, too late. Also, because um, they've had a few things on at Ragley Hall, I've been going <coughs> the long way around and going to Tesco's at the top of town rather than that way. The bridge is back open again now, by the way, if you go to Florals. Yeah. And there's no lights on it or anything, so I'm presuming it's done now. Well, I don't know. I don't know. But there's no, there's no signs, there's no tra traffic lights or anything. I feel sorry, really sorry for this. There's a place uh, in the next village to me, there's a place called the Florals, like pub restaurant place. And um, uh, they shut the bridge. So you can get to it from my side, but you can't get to it from the main Stratford side. They must have lost so much business while that bridge has been closed. And it's been closed for like a year. 3 
Shopping bag, red hearts, lovely red handle. And it's going to uh, plus it in the side, look, so it's nice and deep, look. Why? The thing is, you'll put it in your car and then you'll walk to the shop and realise it's still in your car. You have to train yourself to remember to take your bags. There used to be, there used to be, at Waitrose, you used to get a bag for life, and when it ran out, you could take it back and they give you swap it for a new one, they don't do that anymore. I found that out this week when I went in with about 10 of them, going, could I have 10 new bags, please? And they just laughed at me. So you don't say. So I know that, no, not the Ulster one, in the Stratford one. I know all the ladies in the Stratford one. No, no, I know some of them in the Ulster one, but there, uh, uh, there's one lovely lady who does the, um, the self-service tills at there. But the, the others, I don't know. It's a very big staff turnover in the one in Ulster. There's all the, the ladies that used to, when it was used to be Summerfield, so there's a lot of the ladies that, that used to be Summerfields. They've kept some of the old birds on there, but, you know, they're still there, and they're nice. But they have a lot of youngsters. Right, whippersnappers. Right, Joe, where are we going next? Is that a Joni Crow tin? These are so cute. These are the empty ones. Which one first? Now, if you're looking on the website, <laughs> you'll think this is a great big tin. Because I was looking for the great big tin this morning. One ninety nine. It's the slidey top. Wait, oh, hang on. Come on, just There you go. Slides off. What are you going to keep in there? Pins? Uh, breath fresh mints? One ninety nine. A mint's in the car. But I've said pins. Could keep needles. Oh yeah, you can, you, if you bought your um, I've coming up later. I've got the Schmetz needles coming up later. One ninety nine. You keep your pet spider. Or your dead daddy long legs. One ninety nine. It's cute, isn't it? Oh, look at the, look at the code. One, eight, seven, nine. Beautiful. Next one. Loads in baskets. Loads. There's not that many, actually. Add it to your order. Remember, we don't charge you extra P&P. Beautiful. Then I've got the other one. There's the other one. Fior, fiori, fiori, fiori. That's like being Liverpudlian, is it? Being angry. Oh, I'm fiori with you. Fiori. One ninety nine. One ninety nine. It's a beautiful, isn't it, Janie Crow? Now, uh, what, she's done something, she's launched something this week. I saw a, a, um, a picture on Facebook that she's, anyway. One ninety nine, lovely little tin. Gadgets. <sighs> he knows I hate doing this. You have got all these. I have done some stitching to help this because someone's nicked all the stitching that we put in the box. Right, so I've stitched along here. We've got films. We've got films to show as well. Basically, what it was, was um, Sally Ann Harrison came in one day with a beard trimmer. And I was like, it's not that bad. You don't need to bring a beard trimmer with you. She said, it's for un unpicking stitches. So then she then bought one for me and it was bright pink. And I went, who on earth can I wear a, use a bright pink? Anyway, then we found this at Bridgewater, right? So it's like the sewer's equipment. Do not use it on your beard. It's not a beard trimmer. It's a stitch unpicker, right? And then uh, it comes, hang on, it comes in the box like this. And it comes with the instructions, the charger, a little brush and an empty bottle. Right? And then what it is, see this side here, that's where you fabric it so it's nice and smooth. And then if you watch this bit closely here, right, watch. Right, you see? So there's a blade in there. So that's going to cut, your, and between there, <coughs> it's going to cut your uh, stitches. Now... You know, if you're like um, 
Little Paul used to be a member of the King's Heath Batten Twirlers Society, right? So he had a sweatshirt with a thingy on here. Then he moved to King's Norton. So he couldn't be in the King's Heath one. He had to then, so he had, but he had a sweatshirt. You know how mean he is with his fabrics and everything. He unpicked that, right? He unpicked that. And you can do it by like this. Shave the back of the embroidery and it unpicks it all. You can also, you know, if you, people don't do it so much anymore, but back in the day when we used to take the jeans pocket off, if you've got a hole in your jeans or, or the, the crotch started going threadbare, uh, you'd take the pocket off and patch it, wouldn't you? Well, if you want to unpick a very, very sturdily sewn jeans pocket, you can do it with this. Also, I've done some stitches on here. I don't, I don't know if you're going to be able to see them, actually. I've done a zigzag here. You can either do it like this, because it's not going to harm your fabric. Just do it like this. Look, you see how it's just taking the thread? Look, it's just cutting the way through the thread. Or the way I like to do it is I do it like this. Get, get that here, like this. Hang on, hold it, get in the right place. There you go. Right, you ready? Look, look how easy or easily it's unpicking those stitches. Not affecting your fabric or anything like that at all. That was a big zigzag stitch that I'd done on that one. And then we've, oh, have a look at the pocket one before I do the straight stitch one. There you go. At uh, 34.99. See how easy that is. You don't, uh, you, uh, beautiful. You'd think that person would moisturise their hands first, wouldn't you, before they were going to do a video like that. Okay, now here you look at this straight stitch. Very easy. Look at the way it's just sliding through. So if you've put patchwork together or dressmaking together and you realise you made a mistake, how brilliant is that? Also, I've gone out of shot. How brilliant is that, right? And then all you need to do... There you go. Beautiful, £34.99. I don't hate it at all. I don't hate it as a get gubbins. I just hate having to get these ready and everything like that. Especially when someone nicked all the ones I'd already made. Right, I never have to unpick them. Beldre vacuum. Now, um, Jay, in the box, was an, there another nozzle? Right, so this is a, a, a vacuum, right? So basically, this is your charger. This is your charger, right? Now, it can either sit just like that, like ours was, or you can screw that to the wall, and this can be stored like this on the wall while it's recharging. Do you know what I mean? Look, make sure, though, that you put this on the wall very close to a plug, right? Don't worry, Jay, don't worry. Right, so it comes with two nozzles, because it's dry or wet, right? Oh, I don't think I've got any biscuits with me today to crumble up. Ben, have you got any of your custard creams? Oh, I normally have my, my gluten-free biscuits, don't I? He's going to grab a gluten-free, right? Uh, not gluten-free, I think. Basically, you see the end here? It's got a great big wide nozzle on it. You can use it like that, but if you're doing it dry, then you put this nozzle on and you just hoover like this. Not hoover, vacuum. Right? But then you can also... I haven't got the, uh, I'll try it with this nozzle. I haven't got the wet nozzle here. But also if you spill a drink. Right? Now I am going to be doing this with the dry nozzle, so I'm not quite sure what's going to happen. Look! Even with the dry nozzle that's done it, look. So whether you're doing your car, whether you're doing your stairs, if you've got a caravan and you don't want to take the uh, stairs, if you can't carry your main vacuum up the stairs to do the stairs, use this one. I've done it now. I can't do it because it's got water in it now. Oh, well, what He's half do? eating biscuits now. It doesn't matter. Um, what you mustn't do is when we were in the old building, I did the dry biscuits, then I did the water, and then I gave it to Floor, and they just put it away and the whole thing went mouldy. Right, so what actually happens is you can clean it by taking that off there like that. The filter comes out like that. I'm just going to tip the water away. Hang on. 
I've got a sink down here, don't worry. Right, and then you just put it all back together again like that. This is the filter that you can wash. And then that goes in there like... Oh, no, come on, John. Why can't I get it together? Hang on. It's my bad, this, sorry. There you go. Anyway, so that all fits on there like that. That fits in there like that. There you go. There you go. And it all fits back together again like that. £34.99 and, and it comes with the charger. It's a proper plug. It's a proper plug on the end of there. So hand vac, dry and wet. Two in one, dry and wet. Lovely. Steamer. Oh, right, you f what you do is you take this bottom bit off here and you fill that with water. It has got some water in. Now, Jay filled it earlier, but I've been practising with it, so I've used some of the water. So you literally just open up the thing here. You don't have to use bottled water, you can use tap water. There you go, you see there's the nozzle there. Fill it with water. There we go. Close the nozzle, put that on there, Click, just clicks back on. Uh, have we got any blue paper, please? Blue roll, whatever it's called. Oh, hang on, I've got some fabric, I can use that. Oh no, I made it worse. Thank you, Jay. Oh, that's nice. Oh, it's not blue roll, it's um, Hobby Maker cloth. Well, no, it's got Hobby Maker written on it. I don't know what they sell that for. Anyway, not on air. Right, so what happens is, you see under here, you've got a little switch, right? You press the switch and watch, 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 watch. Can you see the steam coming out of there? Now, while you've got your finger, you can just do, you control it like that. But if you're going to be doing your curtains or something like that, you think, oh, I can't bother pressing that all the time, John. You press it and you put the lock down. Look, no hand steam. Can you see? Can you see it? Now, during lockdown, we all learned, didn't we, how important it is to um, sanitise everything and things like that. If you've got cats like me... Come on, that's it. Oh, thank you very much. Hey, my fabulous assistant there bringing me some fabric to steam. Um, if you've got cats like me and they sit on the sofa, they sit on the armchair and everything, you're going to need to steam curtains, mattresses, all sorts of things like that. Obviously, you need to let it dry or whatever. But look... Can you see? Can you see, look? Brilliant, isn't it? That, this is, you'll see this piece of fabric later on. It's Hayley West's uh, demo later. Yeah, need it she needs it back. It's, it's a pound otherwise. Anyway, it's brilliant. Uh, brilliant. It's plugged in. It plugs into the main mains there. It's got a little bit of light on, but you do get this. Thanks. You do get this as well. So it's got a lint brush and a velvety brush on there as well. So that, that's for when you do it this side, that when you're doing your um, fabrics or your curtains and things like that, clothes and things like that. Because obviously you don't want your clothes going against here. So you can literally just do that like that, like that, like that. There you go. 24.99. Now there you go. It's brilliant. The amount of, these handheld things, I normally go, oh, there'll be no steam on there. Oh, that won't. It's actually quite satisfying as well, the feel of it. So it's vertical steam, anti-scale, lightweight, but you've got to remember that bit at the front there obviously gets hot. 24.99. Don't touch that front bit. That's Ben's words, not mine. Oh, right here, next. Yeah, 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 the little bit iron in the blue case. $29.99. Look, so there's your iron. Oh, there it is, there it is. You get the iron, the case, and the little water jug, and your instructions. 
$29.99. Gorgeous. Uh, now, uh, they sell the case on its own on the Long River. Not a blue one, the black one for £16. So you get the iron for 13 basically. It's lovely, isn't it? And the little iron, everyone loves the little iron. It's got a 1.9 metre cable on it. I'm not going to unravel it from the bag because one of you will get this one. You've got your, your heat, your steam, because it's steam iron. Brilliant to the travel iron, but brilliant is having as the iron next to your, uh, um, your sewing machine and your little pressing mat. Oh, it's gone up. It's 17 99 now. Look, just the case. No iron included, 17 99 So you're getting, the, you're getting the iron for £12, aren't you? Yeah, exactly. You'd think the iron would be more than the case, wouldn't you? $29.99, check out, check out, check out. I love the little powder blue case. Beautiful. Oh, Liz, she's late today. Uh, love my little iron, use it every day from Liz. Liz, you're cutting it fine today. She has to be in her upstairs bedroom by nine. She works from home for a very, very big corporate business. No, well, I said that to her. Ollie's just said, oh, I wouldn't be disciplined enough to do that because when I was a freelancer working from home, I was rubbish. Kept any excuse, Dulcie drink, go, do you lunch? Oh, yeah, let's go for lunch. I can make this frock ne next time. And then I'd end up doing three all-nighters and I'm going, I'm never doing this again. Um, no, Liz works for a very, very, I won't say who, but a very, very big company. And they can see when she logs in. They can see when she's at a screen. And, no, 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 and I said, we well, can wander off, make a cup of tea and, you know, have a comfort break. She went, I'm allowed one 15-minute comfort break in the morning because they know if I'm not there. Well, there'll be a camera, won't there, on the thingy? 29 99 No, I said that's what, no, it's, it's much, much. Hi, John, morning. I've got the multi-steamer pro. It's fabulous for freshening up clothes after they got creased in the wardrobe. Have a fabulous day, everyone, from Maxine in South Yorkshire. Thank you, Maxine, my lovely. I finally got on the little irons after my travel iron gave up. Don't know why I wait so long. It's brilliant from Kate. Now, Kate, which colour did you get? Which colour way did you get? Did you get the blue one? Ben says you got the blue one. I quite like the pink one. We've only got the blue one today. Only got the blue one today. Right, Joe, moving on. <laughs> Missed it. it. was last weekend. Yes, no, it was yesterday. This weekend, just gone. Oh, yeah, 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 but it was Birmingham Pride yesterday. Six ninety nine. Six ninety nine. Uh, it's brilliant for keeping your scissors in, keeping pens in. I wouldn't use it as a plant pop. You could do if you wanted to. Have you got that many thimbles? Well, if you collect your thimbles, then you buy a little case and put them all on the wall. You wouldn't just throw them all in a box, would you? Or a tumbler like that. Anyway, look at the gorgeous colours on there. Have it on the windowsill. Imagine a light flashing off that during the day. You've got a south-facing window. Six ninety-nine. Beautiful. Got them. Hemline Gold, Sewing Notions box. Ollie thought this was a jewellery box earlier. Well, you see, the thing is, it's got sewing implements on the top. That's the giveaway, Ollie. Then we open up here with the magnet. You've got your nice sturdy tray on the top there. Lovely, oh, sorry, lovely deep box like this to put everything in. But if it's, you mean jewellery making, do you mean, Ollie? Put, you'd put your findings in there, would you? And your pliers and everything and your wires in there. Is that what you'd do? To Ollie, it's a jewellery box, but what is it to you, he says. twenty four ninety nine. that's what it is. <clears throat> Beautiful. I saw Claire McDonald's one. I've not seen her for ages. 
We had a bit of a smooch in the corridor. 24.99. She went to Tunisia or somewhere gorgeous like that, didn't she? They got a little pocket. Lovely. It's funny, when I go home the long way round to go past her house, and I know that if you walk along the towpath, you couldn't go straight into her bathroom. That sounds a bit weird. I didn't mean it like that. What I mean is, if she's in her bathroom, people who are on the towpath can see straight into her bathroom. Yeah. Beautiful. She's gorgeous. If you don't know who I'm talking about, she's the guest on Jewelry Maker today. She's gorgeous. Beautiful. She's got a very, very, very hunky, handsome boyfriend as well. Sewing threads box from Quilted Bear. Here you go. Six pounds and 49 pence. Good value for money, this one. No. So things I thought we were crashing on, we haven't. And now this one I didn't think we were crashing on, we are. Go on then. Uh, I think that's an early bird price, to be honest. Is it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Three ninety nine. And oh, these are brilliant. These because they look that they're small, but you can fit your Gucci threads in here perfectly. Did uh, uh, did um. Julie Vaughan sent in that picture. Oh, Julie Vaughan. $3.99. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have they have they announced that yet then? Okay. Twenty-seven reels will fit in there. Look, there you can see there. There's a, there's a little um, what are those called? Spindle to put them all on. Loads in baskets. Keep going through. Keep going through. Keep going through. Beautiful. No, no, I didn't look at the start. Oh yeah. Key going through for that. Well done, well done, well done, well done. Thirty-two. Right, this is what Hannah thinks is the um, opening scene of Greece. Well, uh, well, uh, well. Uh. Now it fits nicely in a drawer as well as on a counter. Four ninety nine. Thirty two spool rack. Lightweight, very lightweight. It's from Hemline. There it is in use look. Four ninety nine. Gladiators the T V show. Oh, okay. So the stuntman that was Pierce Brosnan's stuntman, that, you know the one where he jumps onto the top of the O2 building and slides down it? The stuntman from that was one of the winners off the um, Gladiators. Yeah. And Eunice, the lady one, Eunice, she was uh, one of our stunt doubles in uh, GoldenEye. Four ninety nine. It 99 She was uh, Isabella Skorupko's uh, stunt double. Beautiful. Keep going through for that one. Do you mean this one? Yeah, now, normally these aren't the same. 
let me show you them both, because normally we show you this one and the turquoise one, which are the same. These are slightly different. So I'll do the red one first. So you've got your sturdy handle there. You've got your zip front. Now, you'll, uh, you'll fit your um, 570. Oh, now, will you fit your 570? Yeah, I'm sure you'll fit your 570 in here. And your um, 550, 560, 570 and your brothers. I think the Onyx might fit. Oh, no, no, no. I'm not even going to say that, just in case, because I've not tried it. $21.99, good sturdy bag, really lovely canvas. And also it feels like it would be, um, if you're outside in the wet, it would feel like the water would dribble off it. And you've got your sturdy uh, feet there on that one as well. $21.99. Uh, morning, John and team. Watching while sitting on my sunny balcony in Aberdeen. What are you doing in Aberdeen, Andy Lynn? Right, and then we've got this one. Fifteen ninety nine. This has got your little key, key ring scissors there. You got your pocket. Same uh, idea. Pocket on the front, not quite as big as the pocket on the last one. We well, all right now? Is that um, custard cream going down the wrong hole? This is slightly smaller than the red one. Oh, is that Ollie? Well, that didn't sound like Ollie. Anyway, look. Black canvas, purple trim. $15.99. Beautiful. Oh, I can answer that. Uh, do you want to put the question up first then? We Hi, John team. Will you be getting the list so many iron in stock again? I keep missing out. Jane in Pontefract. Oh, I love your cakes, Jane in Pontefract. Uh, now, we cannot get, at the moment, we cannot get the little one that we had in, but Paul has acquired a different version. It's still the Aliso. I can't give too much away, but watch this space. It will be coming back in stock, but it'll be different. It won't be the turquoise and grey one. It'll be a different version. Yes. And, and, oh, and the same with the, oh, I'd better do this, actually, the Elisa, big yellow Elisa iron, right? Now, I think we've only got five in stock, right? Um, we can't get any more. And it's to do with the shipping, the, that comes in a crate over from wherever it comes from, and they'll only ship so many at a time. So we have to wait for them to ship this iron over. So if you've ever wanted this, the, the Elisa, yellow Elisa iron, Why? When was that? For today. Right, okay. I'm ever so sorry for all the hundreds of you who've bought this before. Till midnight tonight. £10 off. 152 99 Three-way split pay. So £50.99. Now there's only five left. There are only five left. I'm not saying we'll never, ever, ever get it again. We will, but when, we don't know. And it might not be the yellow one. It might not be the yellow one. So I'd get it now. If, I mean, I'm, not, I'm not adding any undue, um, what's it? Undue, no, what's the word I'm looking for? And what? Undue pressures, that doesn't sound right. Anyway, I'm not adding any of that because I'm saying there's only four left now. There's only four left now. 10 pounds off till midnight tonight. Three-way split. Pa oh, three left now. Three left now. Th three. Two left. Two left. Two left. Two left. Two left. No, no, look at my screen. There's Jay. Come and have a look. There's two left. They don't believe me. They don't believe me. Right? Please be careful. How many are in baskets? Five. Five in baskets. Two left. Oh, yeah. See? That was Ben's nose that you just saw in the picture there. Two left. I've got to go. I've got to go. Haley's gagging at the bit to get going. <laughs> there are two of those left, right? Poli oh, one left. One left now. Only one left. Am I going to wait? Am I going to wait? How many are in baskets? Seven in baskets. There's one left. I'll just wait with you for, I'll wait for 30 seconds and then I've got to move on. Oh, unless it sells before then. There's only one left. I've got a clock in front of me. 
There's even more in baskets now. There's even more in baskets. We're taking £10 off for today. Go on. Sold. We're going for a break. Remember, watch the first advert because that's got the announcement in it. And have we got the winners yet? We'll see you in four minutes. We're proud to welcome the Debbie Shaw brand back to Sewing Street this Thursday. Joining us will be Debbie's ambassador, Sheena Benton, who will demonstrate new and exclusive designs by Debbie Shaw and her daughter, Kim Hine. We'll also be launching Debbie's Half Yard Sewing Club, an international subscription website full of sewing projects and more. So make sure you tune in this Thursday to Sewing Street. Hello, I'm Sheena and I'm so excited to be joining the Sewing Street family. Um, I've enjoyed lots of crafts throughout the year, but never more so than when I discovered sewing. Once I'd finished that very first project, that was it for me. I was hooked and it just opened up a whole new world and now I just can't imagine sewing not being in it. I think what I especially love is there's just so many different facets to sewing, from dressmaking, quilting, free motion embroidery, bag making, toy making, homewares, etc. There really is something for everybody to enjoy. There's always something new to learn and to be inspired by, and it brings everybody together. I think it's quite magical how a fabric and a sewing machine can just transport you to a new place for a few hours. You get to relax, and at the end, you produce something really unique and special to you that you can keep and enjoy, or you can give to others. I'm really looking forward to sharing that passion with you all and hopefully have a few giggles along the way. I look forward to um, seeing you very soon on Sewing Street. Take care. Bye-bye. Shopping with Sewing Street couldn't be easier. You can shop via our website at www.sewingstreet.com where you can watch our live shows and see all the products from that day. We also have a huge amount of products on our website from your sewing room essentials to fabrics, sewing machines and much more. You can download and shop on the go with our Sewing Street app. Simply head over to your app store and search Sewing Street. Alternatively, you can contact our UK-based call centre 24 hours a day on 0800 001 4433. Shopping made easy at Sewing Street. Never miss a show by watching on the go with the Sewing Street app. Head over to your app store now and search Sewing Street and simply download to your smartphone or tablet. You can watch the shows live and see your favourite presenters and guests. Click on the Today button to shop all of the products that are featured in today's show. Want to know what's hot? Then click here to see today's bestsellers and highlights. Have you missed a show or want to watch one back? Then click the schedule button and you can go back seven days to watch and shop and you can also see what's coming up over the next seven days. Want to say hello or ask a question to our guests? Then send a message to the studio. You can also keep in touch with all the latest news, events, product launches and much more by clicking here for our social media pages. Never miss a show by watching on the go with Sewing Street. Not only is Sewing Street live from 8am till 1pm on Sky 670, Freeview Channel 73, YouTube and the Sewing Street app, now Virgin subscribers can watch on Channel 754, which means there are more ways to watch your way with Sewing Street. And we'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. Bye! Did you know that you can continue shopping 24 hours a day, 7 days a week? Even after we've finished broadcasting live, just head over to www.sewingstreet.com for thousands of sewing supplies available from top brands. You still pay only one PMP with split pay available on certain items and an easy checkout service too. Plus, you can get expert advice and tips from our Sewing Street hub and UK customer support is available 24-7. So head over to SewingStreet.com and continue your sewing journey. Did you know that we can deliver to over 20 different countries worldwide, spanning four continents from the UK to Australia? 
check out our website for the list of countries and delivery costs. Sewing Street, stitching the world together. Every day, our experts will bring you a wealth of knowledge. They'll take you through the steps of making projects and we feature fabulous tips along the way. Whether you're new to sewing or a seasoned pro, you're sure to learn something new. We're live every day from 8 a.m. till 1 p.m. And you can also watch back all of the demonstrations featured on the show on our YouTube channel. to the winners of the competitions in the beginning of the next hour the beginning of the next hour we'll do the work because we, we just need to get we've got friday saturday sunday a shop to win and we'll need to get the derby more um, ones as well right Hayley West. Busy old weekend. What was oh, there? absolutely. Now, I haven't seen you for ages. Where have oh, you been? How have you been? I've been all been? over the place. I've been at weddings. Who got married? A, um, David's daughter this weekend. So oh. we had a lovely weekend. We were in the, um, the Forest of Dee. Oh, yeah. It was lovely. So, oh. yes, yeah, lots and lots of fun. Really that enjoyed it. Nice. So, um, and what else have you been doing? Busy? Off in Tallulah. Oh, yes, yes, yes. to home. Yes. So, yeah, most weekends we're off and away. We're going to um, the, what have we got on the list? We're going off to the Lake District. Yeah. We've been to Montgomery on the border of um, England and Wales. Um, we've done Devon. We've done, um, oh, Tenby, one of my favourites. Oh, oh nice. Tenby's beautiful. Have you ever been to Tenby? Yes, yeah, when I was a child, not for years. Oh, oh, it's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And I think this is, we've got so many hidden gems, haven't we, here in the UK and, and obviously Scotland and Ireland, all, all around our local area. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's lovely to, even if it's just getting half an hour away. Exactly, but also it's more and more people I know are getting motorhomes mm -hmm. so they can do Popular. that. But also Airbnb, it's so easy now, Absolutely, isn't it? Just to go, yeah. we can go there. We can go there for two nights, can't we? Or we can That's do that it. and just kind of do that. That's what we like. We just kind of sh shut down Friday um, evening, clock off at five, and then it makes it makes your weekend useful, I think. Yeah, it may, yeah you feel as if you've done something. So, yeah. Lovely. Okay. Right now. What are we here for today, then? Well, grab a go bags. Um, still going strong, still always welcomed um, by everybody, which I'm always very thankful for. Um, I had a few messages come through asking about whether we'd got any that were themed potentially for Father's Day. Oh, which yes. Is why some of the ones have evolved. Um, and we've also got a bunting show later on, which kind of coordinates with some of the new ones that we've got as well. So, yeah. Brilliant. Which one do you want to do? Look at all of them. Look at the six of them. <laughs> the six of them. Now, a couple of these, uh, they're not all brand new, are they? Are they all brand yeah, new? Yeah, all brand new. Are they all brand new? Every I thought I'd one. seen one of them before, but obviously no, not. No. All brand new then. All oh, brand new. So it doesn't matter where I start then, does it? Absolutely. So let's just start with this one then. So this one is your, um, your starry night and uh, beautiful blues. I do like a blue. Oh, which way are you going? Which one are you going to, Ollie? You're going to the front. Go to the front. Go to the front. Right, okay. Where did the idea come from for this? Bag? So the idea came from. In fact, I'm just going to grab mine. Sorry, let that's, me. No, that's right. We can go and show you. I forgot this. to have. It, I forgot to have it here because it's it's one that we we haven't got in stock at the moment. Yeah. So the idea came about. Now, don't judge me, but in our family, we have quite a few of these, uh, and it really frustrated me that I wasn't finding a use for them. Yeah. And they were just getting in the cupboard, stacking up. So I thought, well, what about you turning them into something useful storage? So um, this, that's exactly how the grab and go bag evolved because there's room for two. Some Sometimes you can get three in there, and I've used them for all sorts, and I know you guys have as well. So um, in this one, I've got some of my little kind of quilting bits and pieces. I've got ones that I've got makeup in. I've got some that have got kind of little crafty kits in there, first aid kits, um, snacks. Yeah. <laughs> There's all sorts in there. So that's where it evolved, but they are so easy to put together, and that's why we, we keep bringing them back, at, because people just love them in the different styles. Exactly. We haven't got that one today, we haven't but sadly, we've got yeah. six new one so this one here is called what did you say this particular one starry night starry night yeah which is gorgeous i love this right so again i'm not going to open this one because you've seen the inside there but the difference about this is so you get half a meter of your fabric right that's for your lining that's right and that will actually make two because you only use a fat quarter to make the uh, the bag itself but look every single thing that you need is on a panel that's it now this becomes your pattern for your lining as well so make sure you're cutting out your lining before um, you actually start and um, kind of constructing because you'll need those as templates i'll give you some tips on that in a little while okay but you don't need to buy instructions you don't know so uh, for you 14... did used to no 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 well no i've got the instructions if yeah. you've got your own fabric later i've got instructions coming up but look 
$14.99 for a panel plus half a metre of fabric. So take a half a metre of fabric off. That takes that down to, what, £11 or I something? I mean, if you, if you as friend, keeping that price down? Absolutely. And no measuring. No measuring. No, no nothing at all. So I suppose all you need is a bit of interfacing and a zip. Is that That's it, yeah. It depends on how sturdy you want the bag to be. So I tend to use in our form because I like the kind of firmness. You could get away with your um, H640 if you wanted to, but a little bit kind of H640 floppier. would be a squidgy though, wouldn't exactly, it? Exactly, yeah. Want, so I, I think I, you kind of want it I to do be. like that, and it's, yeah. And it's user-friendly. People look at the uh, 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 Bosley in our form and go, oh, no, I, I can't. Oh, no, my machine. I'll give you oh, some no. tips on using yeah, exactly. that as well. Yeah, right. so, yeah. So, so it makes it very easy. I was lucky enough to be bought up in Tempe. I never really appreciated how beautiful it was until I left. No, Sheila, oh, isn't yeah. that the thing, though? Mm. Isn't that the thing? You don't appreciate somewhere until you move away from it and then Absolutely, suddenly you realise. Yeah. But rediscover. Right, where do you want to go next then, Ben? This one. Now, this one is your vintage sewing. Now, we have got bunting coming up later on that are going to work with this one. Um, and this one, again, just a beautiful kind of vintage for your sewing bits and pieces. We love a bit of sewing storage, don't exactly. we? Exactly. Lovely rose-coloured lining there. And then, so you won't use, you don't, well, you don't use that much. Oh, it's lovely, isn't it? So what are these then? What Are, are they adverts, sewing adverts? They're kind of, little, yeah, like the old magazines or the, the, the kind of billboard um, uh, kind of style of posters and things. So you've got all sorts. You've got mannequins on there, old sewing machines. Yeah, thimbles. Parapher ben was saying he's going to collect Paraphernalia, I think the phrase is. Paraphernalia. <laughs> now, what's the what's the um, QR code for? Um, we've got a YouTube um, channel where you've got a video on there. Oh, oh so, so, step so, by step. so we'll yeah. do top tips today, but that takes oh, you yes, through the yeah. whole... It's one of those ones that, as time evolves, as there's most things, and you're making them different um, different ways as time goes on, yeah. you think, oh, that's a good little tip. I'm going to share that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And rather than reshooting a whole <sighs> video and starting again, it's just kind of those little nuggets. OK, so for 14 99 you not only get the panel, you get half of me to this, you get the instructions, and you get a whole video of how to make it. What's it? You need to work out your prices, girl. <laughs> right, Joan. You know, better to run to Lula at this rate. <laughs> we, can to, oh, go, we can only go downhill because we can't afford the fuel <laughs> to go back up again. <laughs> Next one. William Morris, right, OK. I love the green you've put with this one. No, so no, there's no. It's your strawberry thief. Oh, yeah, no, right, strawberry thief. And the nice thing is as well, when I'm doing the panels, I can actually position the fabric. So you don't have to worry about placement. No, of the or, or wasting fabric. Exactly. Yeah, because yeah, otherwise, yeah. if you'd bought half a metre of the fabric, you think, oh, I'll have to move that bit across there to get yeah. the bird in the middle, that bit across there. And then you've got those kind of oddments in That's between, it, haven't yeah. you? This no. way. Now the placing is all done for you, look. And with every single one of the panels, just next to the instructions, there's a, almost a square piece of fabric that there was a gap. So I filled it with the fabric again. So you've got enough fabric there potentially to make, I don't know, an extra little kind of purse or something like that. Brilliant. Fantastic. Lovely. And then, so that's the William Morris one. Strawberry Thief. With the, uh, now, I don't know what colour that green is. I really oh, like I that green. I can't remember. Is it it's moss or something like that? I don't know. Oh, I can't remember. Ben will tell uh, us in a minute. Right, right, yeah. So, now I've got, what's this one, basketball? So this one, no, it's Vintage America. So oh, again, okay. we've got vintage labels. And this is where the next three were kind of thought towards Father's Day, although they're not exclusive to Father's no. Day. Because this style, I've got loads of T-shirts with the old kind of varsity font on yeah, it. Yeah, 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 like exactly. That. So yeah, so, uh, yeah, this one, again, just a nice look. Beautiful look. There you go. And again, you've, you've placed the fabric, so it's in exactly the right place. You've That's got it, lose, yeah. You know, so the variance, where you've got the zip, you'll find that the fabric is going to pattern match above and be, um, below. Oh, um, wow. Some of the elements, like the strawberry thief, you've got the birds right in the centre. Sometimes you haven't got a kind of hero image, yes. so it's kind of scattered around. Um, but the same size across all the different bits and pieces. Um, so, yeah, you don't have to think about it. No, Vintage USA. Now got game on. Now, this one... Oh, I was going to say this one feels heavier, but it's the bag. Well, you can open this one up because this one came about not because of the actual um, takeaway container. So, somewhere to put your gaming uh... bits and pieces. So, again, lots of female um, gamers out there, lots of um, boy gamers. There's loads and loads of you out there. So, nice room there for your big games as well as your kind of handset as well. So, if you've got, uh, I don't know, an overnight stay somewhere, you can just... Just take a few with you. Now, I yesterday uh, I've been cleaning my house and everything. I found loads of CDs. Right? Okay, yeah. My CDs would fit that way. I don't know what. What's this? That's a controller. 
For what? It does look a little bit like a uh, flying saucer, doesn't it, or something is like that? Is that what they play on, is it? Yeah. Right, but CDs oh, yeah. fit perfectly that way, wouldn't That's they? That's it. So when I get my motor home, there I can you choose go. what music oh. I'm going to have for the weekend. Absolutely, yeah. It's like a little survival kit. <laughs> <laughs> right, so that's that one. So it's not just for sewing and, bo and Tupperware boxes, yeah. takeaway boxes and everything. So that one's what we called that one. That one's Game On. Game On. Game On. Right, and then last but not least, now, I had to look twice at this this morning. Okay. Because just recently, not recently, in the last couple of years, there's a man has designed some fabric. Now, forgive me, I can't remember his name. Right, and he's drawn on it all men who work in sewing. So okay. apparently, well, I know it is now. My face is oh, one is of the faces it? on this piece of fabric. Nobody getting, asked me. I was going to say, are you getting royalties no, for that? Nothing, nothing. How rude. But anyway, <laughs> yes, yeah. So, so here we go. So this is, I love, I love this one. So we call this one Barbershop. So this is kind of the idea of like a grooming kit that you might be giving a, as a gift. So yeah, uh, you can assume whoever you like for those images. I have to say they're just, just people. <laughs> yes, yeah, I'm not on it then. I was looking thinking, oh, am I on it now? <laughs> but look, there you go again. Brilliant. And also the other thing you don't have to worry about is the kind of direction because you've done all the direction. Exactly, direct you've yeah. you've fabric, you have to remember to cut all the pieces the right way. Exactly. Right way round and things like that. Beautiful, and we've got the black uh, lining in there as well. Now, there are all the panels. You don't need instructions. The instructions are on the panel of fabric, so you've got everything. Make sure you keep those for future use. And also, uh, no offence to Hayley, but you can... I shouldn't say, because I don't normally say this when the designer's not here, but what you could do is just draw, draw around the pieces. Well, I would. Do you mind? I would. Oh, what's your, what's, your, what's your... Angel policy, if you want to make and sell, by all means, you can do. Um, just brace yourselves, because when people start seeing these, you will get people asking you to make them for you. So, yeah, you've been warned. Yeah, so there you go. So Now, if you want the pattern on its own, if you've got your own fabric, we've got the pattern on its own. Right, now have a look at the price of this, see? No, it's a good price, it's a good price, $9.99, but it ma makes the kits look even more. Does, Obviously, yeah. these are going to be uh, slightly more thorough because you get the templates and the pattern pieces in there and everything. There's a bit of a bonus in there as well because it does explain to you how to make a little purse as well. So there's a bit, kind of like a bonus yeah. element with, with the pattern, I suppose. $9.99, £9.99. £9 yeah, yeah, beautiful. Check out, check out, check out. Now, finally, <laughs> we've been going on about these since the day she arrived, right? Do you know, it's, near, it's coming up the beginning of July. It'll be a year since I'd... Uh, yeah. That's, where's that time That's gone? That's frightening, isn't it? Yeah. It's nearly a year since I left my previous um, job, yeah? Wow. I, that is scary. There's yeah. a lot gone on in those 12 months. Yeah, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. You're very welcome as part oh, of Oh, bless you. And I'm still here. <laughs> right, yes, she's still here. Right, okay, so what are these? Tell me what these so are. So these are zips. Now, my go-to length of zip is 18 inches. Now, with the, the um, grab-and-go bags, I do suggest a minimum of an 18-inch zip. What I tend to do is add the little fabric tabs, though, because one of my little bugbears is sewing the end of a zip into a seam. I don't like doing no. that. I just think it's bulky. Well, it, it's always, a bit it always goes a bit... You've got a little bit of a, a yeah. kinky bit, haven't yeah. you, if I can say that out loud, but there you go. Um, so with these, what I tend to do is add a little tab of fabric, which I'll show you how to do, using the spare fabric that you've got on your grab and goes and these are 10 different colors um, they're 18 inches in length and uh, yeah just brilliant value for money and we're not doing them again that well this it. is it once the stock's gone that's it because i've done I, I will be bringing some zips back not these um i'm going to be bringing some other kind of quite unique zips but these particular ones once they've gone they've gone so yeah it's giving nothing away so she got unique zips coming. I mean, I haven't ordered them yet. Oh, well, that could be well. <laughs> no, that's it. Anyway, look, you get how many do you get in here? Ten tents for twelve ninety nine. Yeah. Brilliant and lovely colours. Colours you're going to use as well. Because so often you see a bundle of zips, you think, well, yeah, I'll use the black one, the white one, the beige yeah. one, the red one. But then oh, well, I'm not going to use the citrus, so I'm not going to use this. Look at their all usable colours, aren't and they? With, with all of the... Exactly. They're, yeah. yeah. They're designed to go with the grab-and-go bags kind of themes yeah. as well. Yeah. But you could use, like, like you in the game one, you've used a black zip, but you could use a green one. You could use, you know what I mean? You could use a white yeah, one. with the white one, nice whatever, yeah. It's up to you. you. You choose the design of it. Twelve ninety nine. Get those, get those, get those. How many have I got in baskets of those? Okay, uh, way too many people. There's only 17, 16 left now, 15 yeah. left now, 15 left and 41 in baskets. Have you seen that new thing we've got? Yes, 14, 11 left, 11 <laughs> left, it's going to be one of those days, Dave. Eight left, 
Eight left. Oh, six left. Six it's, left. Taking a set. Five left. Just a bit scary. I love. At the I get very time. excited when this happens. Four left. <laughs> All the three left. Gone. Sold. Thank you, Hayley. See, I should have bought them sooner, shouldn't I? Yeah, exactly. There you go. Sold out. Sold out. Completely sold out. Yeah, 20 people are still waiting, but there's none left. They've all gone. They've all gone. Right, I'll just quickly do this, because you will need something like this to go inside. That's and we it. suggest you use this one, Bosley in our form. Please don't be frightened by it. it no. You first get it out and you think, oh, I could never sew through that. My machine won't go through that. It's very, very user-friendly. And how many of these will I get out of this? I think four, because it's a fat quarter's worth of fabric. Oh, well, there you go. So, yeah, so I think definitely three. Yeah. Uh, because you haven't got, like, a pattern flow with the, the in our form, you can kind of nudge the little pieces in. Things like the handle, I suggest an inch wide with your, your bosel um, or your, your, your filling, whatever you're using. But you could, if it was ended up being three quarters of an inch, it's not going to ruin anything. No. So, and you can join it as well, can't you? Yes, exactly. I know some people don't like joining no, it. No, no, no. But no. I do, especially yeah. with crafty projects like this. Exactly. Twelve ninety nine, and you can make at least three out of that. So remember that. This is the sew-in version. Don't try ironing this in. This is sew-in. Right, look, I was going to stop and do a demo now, but I'm just, I've only got three more things to show you. So I'm going to show you these three different things, then Hayley can have the rest of yeah, it. It's all right. Yeah, I'm sewing, more right? than happy. Uh, now, this is a walking foot, right? With guide. Now, tell me about this. So it's, okay. you, oh, you've got one, you've got one. I've got one here, my darling, yes. So walking foot, we'll all be familiar with the sewing machine and you've got the feed dogs that are underneath that are going to be passing your fabric through. Well, with um, fabrics, when you've got multiple layers, layers that are different kind of um, densities of fabric, sometimes your fabric can slip and slide. So if you've had the scenario where you'll start off, your fabrics are all neatly lined up and then suddenly you get to the other end and you've got what I call a cliffhanger where you've got a bit hanging over the edge and it's like, well, I've lined it all up. I don't understand how it's happened. It's often just to the way that it's actually fed through. So the feed dogs on the top will feed the lower fabric. With a walking foot, you've got these little feed dogs at the top. So if you imagine this is going around the, the screw that, um, or the little bar that holds your needle in place, what happens is, and I hopefully you'll be able to see where those feed dogs on your walking foot will raise up and then drop down. So these are feeding your fabric from the top as well as the bottom. So it's always useful um, to have and it's a universal one which will work with any low shank um, machine and on the website you've actually got an image that shows you how to figure out what type of machine you've got now also it has got an opening here which is seven millimeters wide which means that if you're using a decorative stitch then you can actually still use that decorative um, decorative stitch and the benefits of the walking foot there as well so yeah nice open uh, feed with that and it will come with a little bar which I've forgotten to get out um, and that's for things like your parallel line so if you're wanting to do your own quilting where you want to do the diagonals or the straight lines or the kind of squares you can use that as a I call it a little hockey stick yeah it, it kind of slots in the back there and you will kind of get your your distance between your stitches and the actual guide so you can keep those parallel lines without actually having to draw on your quilt. So you're telling me this will fit on any machine that is seven millimeter mm -hmm. maximum stitch width yes yeah and it's a low shank that's it. Now, okay. obviously, I've not tried it on every single no, no, machine, no, 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 no. but it is a universal foot for low shank, so there's no reason why it shouldn't. I will give you a little tip, though, because when you actually got that going over the needle screw, sometimes if you're doing um, a, a wider stitch, so one of those decorative stitches, then you might find that your needle is moving left and right. So the needle bar that sits in there, so the little screw, oh, sometimes yes, yes, can yes. slide out the way. So what I would suggest you do, and quite often when you buy your machine, you will find that you'll have two kind of little screws. So quite often it will be fitted with a standard one, which is the shorter length. And in your accessories, quite often you'll find a, wide, a longer one. So what I tend to do is I use the longer one because then I'm ready set up for using the walking foot at any time. And it just means that that little kind of, almost like a, a claw has got more scope. So if the needle is moving, then that can kind of pass through without dropping off, if right. that makes sense. Okay, then. That's so sixteen ninety nine though. That's it's it. not a regular walking foot. It's fifty forty nine fifty. Well, pounds. I know them. Certain brands. It's in excess of a hundred pounds. Yeah. Now, do obviously be mindful of the way that it attaches to your machine. Some brands have got their own unique way of you putting your foot in place. Um, so I, I know Bananas have got a set a different way that you attach. But that's these. the same if you buy a um, quilting. 
foot, a, a ruler foot, isn't it? Yes. You can't go with one of Pa's normal ones. They have to exactly, pick up yeah. a one. And that's it's quite. I think, that's the only brand that I know of that is quite specific. Over you, you, you have to buy your feet from them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I've I've found it works with all the Husqvarna's. It works with your brother, your Genomis. So yeah, it's pretty pretty universal with the brands that I've used. Yeah. Brilliant. Sixteen ninety nine. Right. Two other things or three other things we've got to talk about. This first of all. So this is your ruler set. It is. Oh, sorry. Oh, hang on, talk it's just, just fallen out. It just popped out. It just, uh, it, right, we'll just put the graphics in while Hayley sorts stuff out. So you get all three of these in a zip-up bag. You do. Now, the zip-up bag, I will mention, is just for um, kind of transportation. Yeah. So sometimes people will use these. And if you're a little bit energetic with the zipper, you might kind of pull it off. It is literally packaging. If you look after it, yes, you can use it for storage. But what I tend to use is use that as a template to make maybe a clear-fronted bag to keep them in. So yeah. use that as a pattern and you've got a series of three different rulers in here as well so with these you've got and I will be using this later on for cutting my fabrics using it for making my boi um, pointing my, boi <laughs> my pointy bo bunting flags <laughs> boing <laughs> so those you've also got a patch maker square which is perfect if you're wanting to do your quilting um, squares so let me just pop that on the back so as you can see that you've got um, lines there for everything from two three three and four inch squares, whether you're creating squares, whether you're doing um, half inch square, uh, not half inch squares, half square triangles or quarter square triangles, all of the seam allowance is accommodated for. So basically what you would do is you'd have a right angle of your fabric, you would place where it says use this line on that edge there and you would cut up and across and that is the perfect size fabric piece for say on this example to do three inch half square triangles. So this is useful for most How of the shapes. Normally you have to look at that chart, don't you? And think, yeah. if I want a three inch, then I have add to do this, this add on. this, add seven eighths here, one eighth here. Yeah. Ruler's done it for you. He's, he's done it for you. And that is because I'm lazy. Well, no, no, because you've done the work for us. Well, yeah, lazy, I, I get confused when I'm adding bits on, and especially when you're talking about inches as well, because sometimes they can be a little kind of peculiar when you're not used to working with them. And I was finding I was getting lots of errors. So with this, it will help. And also you can kind of square up your shapes if you wanted to, because you've got the centre points there. So that is in there as well. And then the last element is your binding square. And this is designed where you are using this for creating your, your binding, whether it's binding to go around a quilt or a project, but you can also use it for things like your straps because you've got different shapes or different widths should I say you've got one inch you've got one and a half inch one and three quarters and two inches and basically you do what it says on there so you will cut your fabric strips to double the finished width so if you want it two inches wide and um, you would cut it to four inches if you want it one inch wide you cut it to two inches and basically you will fold your fabric together and then feed it through and then you can basically use your iron to create your binding and we can always have a look at that later if you want to as well. yeah yeah brilliant brilliant because we've also got that little ruler keep checking out on those keep checking on those we've yes. also got that one on its own as well haven't we yeah, so we if have. you just want the if you've already got the ruler sex, I know hundreds of those are sold, right? If you just want the um, binding tool, the binding square, $7.99. Oh, now, please be careful. These are really, really limited. There, you, you, get, you, get it. you don't need to buy it if you've bought this because it's in there. That's it? It's exactly the same. But we did have people say, well, can I shop for the binding square on its own? So we chose to bring it separately. But for me, for the extra, um, I don't, don't want to do your job, John, but for no, the no, extra no, no, no. 12 99 why wouldn't you go for the full set? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Anyway, I just want to, oh, they're going. They're going to go. They're going to go. <laughs> they're going to go. Right. Uh, just one more thing we have to talk about. What machine are you using? So I'm using the Onyx 15, and this machine is a fabulous machine. Um, maybe if you're just getting started, or maybe you've got a machine that's uh, a little bit tired, needs a little bit of a, a service or something like that, well, this is going to be a perfect one for you. Um, you've got things like your straight stitches, not your straight stitches, your regular stitches, your stretch stitches on here. You've got um, a stitch dial that you literally will use to, to move and select your different stitches. And it's got a quarter inch um, seam uh, in there as well, so you don't need a special quarter inch foot um, does your buttonholes as well so yeah it's a nice solid little machine and of course Husqvarna Viking I, I love working with Husqvarna Viking machines because they're solid machines that you can trust so there you go okay a few messages before we start the saying uh, Derek says morning Hayley and John you're looking good today Hayley says Derek awesome. 
Oh, love the grab and go bags, uh, John. Your shirt fabric would look good in a grab and go bag. Yeah, I'm not chopping it up just yet, Derek. I've not worn. I this can take though. a bit out the back. Nobody will notice. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Ruth says just finish one of these bags. Coming on nicely. Any tips on attaching the lining? That's what we're going to be. We're going to be talking about that. Yeah. Uh, Thank you. Hayley is looking very chic this morning. Oh, is that? You're better come in hangover You're more too often. too nice. Uh, <laughs> Becky Alexander Frost this morning, John and team. Hayley, loving your bags. Tenby is gorgeous. Uh, we're sending you loads, loads of love, Baffa. Oh. She's had some sad news. Oh, oh much uh, uh, And she's fabulous panels and zips. Got mine. Uh, the checkout payment page has changed. It threw me a bit. Oh, has it? Oh, well, I didn't it? know oh, that. Gosh, uh, uh, Marie says, uh, morning, John and Hayley from Marie in Stockbridge. And Brenda says, would you advise the universal walking foot for my new Elna or an Elna walking foot? Will Sony Street be getting the Elna walking foot in future shows? I don't know if we are. I don't know. Uh, we've, yeah, we've, we used to stock it. We used to stock it all the time. We used to stock the open toe and the closed toe one. As long as your machines are seven millimetre, which which machine did you buy, my yeah, love? Low shank. Yeah, low shank. Seven. It needs to be low shank and it needs to be seven millimetre stitch width. Otherwise, and I'm not trying to not get you to buy Haley's, but we like to be totally honest here. Oh, no. If you want to go for the yeah. Elna one. But I tell you now, the Elna one will be £54. Mm. No. And also, as well, we say seven mil, that's because of the widest of the stitches. Yes. If you, you've got a machine that only does, say, five mil, you can still use it. Yes. Um, it's just a case of that if you've got a nine mil machine and you're doing a zigzag, then it's going to hit yeah, the, exactly. the full. Yeah. I couldn't have it for my... I, well, I, I could use it for my machine, but I'd have to make sure I didn't go to anything Any above the nine. seven millimetre. Yeah. 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 Right, OK. OK. The demonstration. Time. So, let me explain your panel to you. As John very um, eloquently said, you've got all the pieces that you need. You've got your instructions there and you have got some icons there that are going to help you qr code give that a little scan and you'll go off to the video tutorial that will take you through everything but as i say as time goes on um, experience evolves and i get hints and tips from um, guys like you suggesting different ways of working with your fabrics and your panels so some of those i'm going to feature today so the first thing that you'll find is the instructions will tell you there to cut out your fabric pieces and with the exception of the handle piece cut the same pieces out of your lining fabric now what i tend to do um, and I couldn't put this in the instructions because not everybody use in our form for actually creating theirs so what I would usually do is I take my panel and I kind of cut it into logical pieces so I'd get a pair of scissors and I would cut out the bases in their kind of with their excess fabric I would do um, the panel there that we've got at the top there for the lid and the body base but I would keep them intact at this stage I wouldn't separate them um, and what I do then is I actually attach my inner form to the whole piece oh. um, and then I just find it's easier to use that as my pattern have you piece. used iron on in yours yes ours is sewing oh is it yeah, oh, oh, oh I did ask for the iron on oh, <laughs> so you? sorry have we got the iron on one in stock Ben see if we can get the iron on one yeah I do a pot. I didn't realise that. One Sorry. sided. Okay. So then I would take my lining um, fabric and I would use this, um, the, the piece with the bosel on the back or the inner form because it makes it a little bit sturdier. And then I would actually use this as my, my piece. I've chosen uh, a cutting mat which is a little bit too oh, do you want short. a big cutting mat? Have you got a larger one there? I didn't think, because this one's got the. Um, the pre oh, you're all right, John. <laughs> it sounds like you fell off your chair then. <laughs> that was bigger than <laughs> I thought it was going to be. <laughs> so what I would do then is use that. Obviously, still use a rotary cutter, but you could use something like um, a, a heat erasable pen or something to draw your line but I what I tend to do is once I've got that I will use my um, rule and then just cut down the side there so place my rule on top and then use that as a pattern piece um, and then you can see there you're starting cutting out your lining pieces as you go with that the lining is made separate to the main front piece okay just going to interrupt if you want the single sided fusible in our both in our form here it is, 13 99 for half a metre. Um, because uh, that's what Haley used. She didn't use the sew-in, she used the iron-on. Just one-sided, single-sided, 13 99 So if you did just buy this one, you want the iron-on, cancel that one and buy the one with the... Um, I suppose you could quilt it if you wanted. Well, you could. To, yeah? You could. But if, if you want to do like a quilted version, uh, it makes it easier when you start. Yeah. If you've got yeah. single sided. Yeah. If you're just getting started, then I would suggest the the um, bows or one, um, the single sided. So I've cut my pieces now, so you can see that is going to be my lid and that is going to be my base, which I will come back to in a few minutes. Now, one of my top tips, because when you're actually sewing um, in our form together, you have got quite a layer there. Now it's very spongy, so your machine isn't going to struggle with it. You might think it will when you 
look at it, but it won't. But a top tip that I picked up is to zigzag your pieces before you start. And then what that actually makes it is that little bit thinner. So I've just literally put a, a narrow zigzag around the edge of all of those different pieces. Let me move that out of the way so you might be able to see it a little better. And that just makes it a little bit more manageable. So it, it kind of squidges it down a little bit. So if you are worried about the, the kind of thickness, so there you go, you can see that's the thickness that it would usually be. But then if you use your little kind of, just like uh, about a three mil zigzag, nothing too huge, keep it within the seam allowance and it squidges down the edges. So it, it turns it into maybe something that you're more familiar with the thickness of working with. So I'm very quickly going to do the, that down the long edges because I'm going to put the zip in and it will help when I put the zip in place. And, and with the, um, the Onyx 15, you've got um, a good selection of zigzags with this one. You've got a dial, so it will, depending on how wide you want that swing to be, um, is where you put the dial. So I've kind of got it quite close together, not as close as a satin stitch, but all I'm going to do is going to place it on the fabric like so. I've got a, a two mil length because I don't want it again to be too open. And all I'm going to do is literally zigzag. I've got a runaway pedal today. Mm -hmm. It doesn't want to be my friend today for some reason. So there we go. I'll put it on the, pa uh, the pad. It might stay where it is. So all I'm going to do is just, just a quick little a zigzag. Oh, hold on. No, I haven't. I haven't got it on the right one, I've got a straight stitch, so let's just do a little zigzag. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. Um, you could overlock it if you wanted to. It just kind of gives that, um, that kind of squidgy edge to it, but just on the edge of there, running that through like so. Oh, that's a good sound, isn't it? There we go. So what I will do, once I've got to the end of this one, I will put the zip in on the base. I would tend to do both sides if I was sewing this at uh -huh. home, but it's going to be a bit boring for you watching me doing uh, those zigzags on the top as well. So that is what I would do. So now you can see the two sides, when you put them together, there is quite a difference with yeah. how, how it behaves. So if you are a little bit nervous, then I would suggest that you do that. Put that little zigzag, it doesn't have to be a big one, but it makes it nice and easy to manage. So we're going to come back to that in a few moments. But our zip. Now, before, could I borrow the bag that you've got there, just so as I can illustrate it? Thank you, darling. So when you are inserting your zip, you're going to put it between the top and the base, and it's going to come right the way around to the back piece. Now, I personally like to have fabric tabs because it's easier to incorporate that seam when it's just regular fabric than actually using that zip because that, that kind of bit would go in there and it just makes it a little bit awkward. So the excess fabric that you've got, so you've got that spare bit of fabric, so what I would tend to do is cut a piece that's roughly the same width of the, the zip but I mean don't don't beat yourself up about it it doesn't have to be it could be a little bit longer if you wanted to so a little bit wider should I say so just cut that fabric like so and then trim down the other side as well we will actually trim some of this away so if there's some white showing it doesn't really matter anyway and then give myself a nice piece of fabric to make my zip tabs and then I would basically take that and cut it in half like so and then with those, I am going to cut those into again, like so. So I've got tabs that are probably, what, a couple of inches long, something like that. There or thereabouts. And I'm not precious about which fabric or, or the placement or anything like that is on them. And then what I would do is I'd take one piece and put it face down and one piece on the underside and put it um, face up. So what will happen is I'm going to stitch those through everything, keeping away from that little kind of tab bit that you've got there. And then that will create a tab on the end and then a tab um, on the underside as well. So um, with these, actually, it's a little bit shorter because I'm not going to gain a, an awful lot, but just I will gain enough there. Yeah. Um, so I'm just going to so take I make it. yours a bit longer. That's it. I've made mine a little bit um, too short on yeah. this occasion, but not to worry as well. So I'm just going to take that and take it to the machine and just do a little seam um, stitch. Just make sure that your needle doesn't go near the little metal bit that you've got there. And then we can fold that back and give it a little bit of a press. And this is one of the zips from the bundle, which they've gone now, actually, haven't they? So, yeah. Yep. So I won't mention that it's, yeah, it's a zip. <laughs> if you've got a longer zip, um, you could obviously use that and trim it down. But to be honest, if you've got a shorter zip, you can extend it. Oh, I've still got my zigzag on. Hang on. Schoolgirl error. There we go. 
stitch through it like so. And then all that will happen is I will take that out, finger press it if you want to. So you can see it's extended the zip a little bit on this occasion. There's a nice long tab on these, so you can get away with them just about without putting this um, extra fabric in. And then I would usually, I'd snip to be on the safe side. I don't want that metal bit getting anywhere near my seam. So I'm gonna take that out. And then you can see I've done that on one side and I'll just very quickly do it on the opposite side as well. So I've got both of those done. So there we go, like that, hold those together. Clip or pin it if you want into. I was going to say, any, any tips on keeping the end of the zip together? Yeah, I would sometimes just get a little quilting clip, which she says. Uh, the, in the, on the drawer, I was going to say. There you go. And then just put those two bits together and hold it. You don't want them to splay out too far. No. But you certainly do want that zip um, pulley to be out of the way. And again, just take it up towards where you've got that kind of little um, join and then stitch that again and then just fold it back like so i'm doing it at a bit of a funny angle oh, let me move that out of the way for you and then just go straight across you still got your posh nails from the wedding aha uh -huh. do you like them what did you wear what was your outfit i had it's quite a 40s theme i mean i haven't put the the, the pictures up um oh well, i've got a hello the, the bride exclusive. and groom have <laughs> yeah not quite <laughs> um but yeah it was one of those situations that i just I tried different colours and different styles. I, I didn't make the dress on this occasion because I, I just thought to myself, you know what, I'm going to treat myself. And I, I fell in love with this dress and it, it was, um, it, it's kind of like a, it's quite a voluptuous oh. if you don't know. So yes, yeah. And did you have a lovely I day? It. I had a lovely day. But was, did you have nice weather as well? Yes, we were fortunate. Our friend Poppy got married on Saturday, glorious oh. sunshine. And then Sunday, it was chucking it down with rain. Yes. I thought, and then, to, you know what I mean? I was thinking, how, how lucky, like, kind of luck of the draw. Well, really. the thing is, it, it stayed dry right the way through until probably, well, it was after first dance. Oh, OK. So, so there were a few people that were still outside because obviously late sunshine and things like yeah. that. But it kind of got everybody indoors probably about quarter to nine. Oh, was, nice. Yeah, yeah, so it was lovely. We were very fortunate. So going to insert the zip. So now I've made my zip and I've extended it. So you can see there, um, I've got, it's, it's a, a long piece of fabric, so it's tricky to show you. But now it's a little bit longer, or there or thereabouts, of the fabric. So just make sure that your zip is sitting in the centre. But now when I come to do my side seams, I don't have to worry about the bulkiness of the yeah. zip teeth. And then all I'm going to do is just take a few little quilt clips, pull those in there, and just pop them um, in there. Let's move that out of the way, and I can actually get to my quilt clips. Um, a few along the edge and then all I'm doing is lining up the edge of the zip and sti um, stitch that in place and then I will go back and do the top afterwards as well like so now with this particular machine you do get a little zipper foot so the zipper foot is this particular one that you've got here and you can use it either side you can use it for piping and all sorts of different techniques so useful little foot this one so you've won that one isn't it yeah and it also is why if you need to take if, sometimes if you've got a very narrow seam i have used this as um, to get closer as well yeah sometimes it, it just depends on the fabric that you're working with um with this foot, um, machine really easy for you to actually change your foot in and out you've got a little kind of clipping ankle so there's like a little jaw there and a bar on your foot so you literally Literally just pull it away oh. like so, um, clip it off and then pop that in place and I've just got to think which way I'm doing it, I need it on that side. So clip it in and then it's in place. And what I can do is use things like the quarter inch to move it closer if I want to. Um, just be mindful, you don't want to move it too close to um, the, the kind of the centre bar in case you hit, you hit it because that yeah, will break your needle. So yeah, less is more. Yes. Um, and then all I'm going to do is I'm going to start. I don't know what I've done with my glasses. I don't know what I've done with my oh, glasses. Where, where might they be? Well, they're usually kind of super glued to my head, so I don't know what I've well, done. All with morning them. you've had them on top of your head. I so. know. I don't know. Oh, well, I'll find them in a bit, but that's fine. Might they be in the green room? It's just they could be in the green room, or they could be in the presenters' lounge when I put my makeup on. Could be anywhere, to be fair. I'm well known for leaving them lying around. They're kind of, I think they've got a bit of a zebra print on them today. I can't remember. The dark rim. I was way, very, very, very asleep when I woke up this morning. Oh. <laughs> if that makes sense. Sometimes, you know, these shorter weeks can be harder ones, can't they? You think to yourself, oh, I've worked, I feel as if I've worked harder this week when um, 
I've only, it's been a short week, but there yeah. you go. Um, when you, ever you're doing your zip as well, do make sure you pull your zip out of the way, slide it down like so, and then obviously carry on. And the zipper foot here is just running down that kind of edge of the foot there. So just kind of keep it on track as you go. Don't let it kind of meander too much, but do obviously safety first, keep your fingers out of the way. And you could use your pins if you wanted to as well. So let me just pop the, the needle down and then raise the foot up to move that pulley out of the way and then off you go. So this is the same procedure, whichever of the machine, um, the designs you're going for, and you're not attaching your lining. Your lining is made up as a separate bag and then put in place afterwards. So just working my way along there. You can see I should have put my walking foot on because it's moving a little bit, but not to worry. But if you're at home, you'll take a bit more care and time to get it exactly as you want it to go. Now what you could do if you wanted to is then top stitch that flat. So I would give that a little press, pop that underneath and then press it so it doesn't go anywhere where you don't Ollie. want it to go. So there we go. Hang on. We just see that. Thank you. Brilliant. There you Thank go. You. So that would fold underneath and you do a little top stitch along there as well. Um, so the top goes in place in a similar sort of way. So I'm going to stitch that in place there and that will make the top part of the bag and then we've got the back panel to put in place. So I'll quickly scoot along and do exactly as I've just done. So if there's anything you need to do, John, by all means, you okay, can. Okay, I can do a roundup. Okie dokie. Which one? William Morris is in the lead at the moment. Strawberry Thief, you can't go wrong with the Strawberry Thief, William Morris, can you? That beautiful green. So to make this, you get the panel, the instructions are on the panel and half a metre of the green for your lining. Beautiful. All the fabrics have been printed, so the placement is already done for you. You don't need to worry about anything like that at all. All you have to do is cut the pieces out. So that's the most popular, William Morris there. Then we've got the Pinky Studio Vintage Studio one. Uh, lovely rose pink with this one. Plus your panel. $14.99. Yeah, they're cute, aren't they? It's old adverts. Lovely. Next, this one, Starry Starry Nights, with your blue lining and all your instructions on there as well. Uh, Hayley, do you have a, a, a social media if people get stuck where they can contact yeah, you? Yeah, you can like contact it. me. There's a, a I'm Made by Hayley Facebook page. You can uh, message me um, via my um, website. No? With well, the website, yeah, or um, my um, Hayley West TV presenter one as well. Oh, see, so you've got loads. There's loads. You'll find a way of getting in touch. Just message me. Yeah. Or just message me and I'll forward it to her. Oh, uh, bless you. Next one. Again. That's this one with the black lining here. Again, showing that you don't need it just for sewing. It could be for your, what was that thing called? Controller. <laughs> Xbox. <laughs> 14.99. No help coming from the gallery. <laughs> then we've got the uh, one that Haley's working on, the barber one, Beardy Boy. 14.99. Now I've not got that many of this one left. Please be careful with that one. And then we've got one more, which is Vintage America. Beautiful. Don't forget your Bosley in our form. Uh, Iron-on, one-sided, fusible. There you go. 13 99 for half a metre. Right, you ready for us? I am, yeah. Right, go perfect timing. So um, what I've done is I've put the zip in place. I've not top stitched it. But you'll take time to do that at home. And it does help if you do top stitch it when it comes to um, actually put your lining in place, which I'll, I'll very quickly tell you about in just a few moments. The back panel is the next piece to go in. And I've already stitched that in down one side. And then all you're going to do is roll it round right sides together and stitch down that as well. And your seam allowance is all mentioned within there as well. I think it's half centimetre that I quoted. 
in there and you're just going to scoot along there and press that in place. I'm just going to move the selvage edges out of the way, which would usually be sitting flat because you've top stitched it anyway. And then we'll take that through like so. See, look how easy it is. You think that you're not going to be able to get through the layers of bosal in our form, but you can do. And I've not zigzagged those pieces no. either, so yeah. Now that's going to make the main body of your bag. So when you turn it around, this is why I like the Inar form because it literally stands by itself, yeah. then, doesn't it? You can see there. So that's making the main body. The next thing that you're going to do is attach the handle to your top piece. So um, you would stitch that, um, fuse it together, stitch it, put, um, put an extra row of stitches there to give that bag the, the shape. And then the base, I'm going to put the base in rather than doing the handle because time wise it gives me a chance to kind of show you how to do that quickly. So what I tend to do is I will take that and have we got a pen handy? Let's use. Ooh. I don't know if there'll be a pen in there. Oh, no, a pen, oh Jane. hold on. No, I've got one. Got I've got one. I've got one. It doesn't have to be a heat erasable pen, but I just find this is helpful because it stops you actually twisting the, the base as you're putting it in. So you just put a little mark there. So by, fold it in half, find the halfway point, fold it that way, lining those up and get your quarter points there as well, like so. And then that is going to be inserted. And what I do is take the, the bag itself, working on the base, I'm going to fold it in half. So line up the back seam that you've created there and keep it flat. Put a mark there. And that's going to be your front and your back centre. Bring those together and it gives you your quarter points. And none of this, I'm sure, is going to be alien to you. It's, it's kind of standard when you, you put in something yeah. together that's three dimensional. And then I would just come along with my, my pins or my clips. Um, top tip, when you're putting the lid in place, turn it upside down. Obviously, you'd have your handle in place, but just make sure that the, the fabric is flowing. So you've got your, all your, your, your pattern face that way and make sure that when you're looking at the, the lid, that it's in the same direction as well. So that will keep it together. The base, you do, I suppose you don't have to be as precious with the base because you yeah. won't see the base. Um, and then all I do is I will clip it together at those four points. So you kind of north, south, east, west. So like so. And again, like so. Find that halfway point. And then your halfway point over here and over the far side as well. There you go. And then I would just take a little pair of sharp scissors. I've got a little pair of stalks. And then what I do is I cut into the main body of the bag within the seam allowance. So we're only talking little snips. So little tiny snips just around that rounded corner. So hopefully you can see where I'm kind of snipping yeah, yeah, that yeah. right so. Um, if you wanted to, you could go right the way around to the quarter points, but to be honest, it, it only needs to be, what, a couple of inches, I suppose, yeah, that you're looking at there? The That's it. And then all that means is that you can splay out that fabric then and get a nice kind of run around the corner. So I kind of work on the two sides and then do the corner afterwards, and that will splay out. When I take it to my machine, I will hold it that way up so as I kind of got that flow going round. And I would do that with all four of the, the sides. So that's how I would do, do that. Now I'm not going to sew that together just at this stage because I do want to spend a little bit about the, the, the lining because I know somebody did ask about that. So you complete your construction. There's not a lot of sewing to do, to be fair. Um, the base and the lid go in at the same kind of style. Open up your zip when you are putting the second of the two in so as you can actually turn it through. Uh -huh. um, and then you've basically got your outer bag now. Could I get you to pass me the vintage sewing um, bag vintage that you've sewing. got there? Thank you. So the vintage sewing, that has all been made up now. So you, basically you would continue. You've got your, your handle in place. You've got your bag for all intents and purposes made up, but it hasn't got a lining in there. So the lining is made up separately and the lining is inserted and then put together using the top stitch. So I don't know whether you'll be able to see with the, the barber one that I've got here. So I've made the lining separate and then what I've done is I've pinned um, the, the zip in place and then top stitched using that same line of top stitch that we had before as a guide and that will stitch the two together. Now you do go right the way around to the back panel and that should catch your lining in 
Sometimes you've got Don't little turn loose the edge. Bits. Do you make the lining and then turn, sorry, I must have missed it. Did you turn the top in? The, the top in, yeah, before yeah. you actually kind of construct it. So that was the bit that I was going to show you, actually. So, yeah, good prompt, John. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. I just, I just. No, no, I forgot. I thought I'd missed something. Of... No, no, that's fine. So, yeah, when you're actually making the lining, because you're not actually attaching it um, to um, the, the, the zip in the same way, what you would do is when you've got your two pieces so the base that you've got and the lid that you've got you need to accommodate for the seam that you would normally attach to your zip so you will take your iron and then you'll fold over probably just over a quarter of an inch or so and then press that down so you're making the bag lining up in exactly the same way as you would the outer body, it's just the insertion of the zip. You're not gonna do that and you're not gonna add the handling because obviously you don't need a handle in the lining. Uh -huh. So you'll make the side pieces, you'll attach them to the back panel in the same way. Um, and then uh, you, you kind of uh, add the, the lid and the base and then put one inside of the other and then stitch them together. So again, I would just do that like so. Just press it, no need to top stitch it like so there we go move that out of the way and then i'd come with the back panel i'm not going to bother changing the thread so please forgive me for using black thread so that is the back panel so this time again it's right sides together so i would place that down and clip it in place so exactly you clips more than pins i do tend to <laughs> yeah i do tend to because i'm that busy concentrating on my sewing sometimes I forget there's a pin there okay and then yeah obviously well the rest is history isn't it <laughs> <laughs> but it depends if it's a, a fabric that can be a little bit tricky then sometimes I, I, I will then pin the two together now you may end up with a little bit of a gap um, don't worry too much about that because that will kind of get caught in at later stage and then I would stitch those together with the same half centimeter seam allowance that we used on the top part so again just whizzing down the edge like so so let's stitch down the edge. And we need to use a little bit of imagination, imagining that the, the lid and the base are stitched on as well. There we go. So there is the back. Again, if you want to, you can press that and top stitch your seam allowance back um, when you, you've got the luxury of time. Uh -huh. But on this occasion, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to take the other side of the back, line up the base. It's important to line up the, lot, the bottom edge and the top edge more so than um, these pieces here, because you might be tempted to think, oh, I'm going to put those two together. But it's, these are the most important yeah. edges, really. And again, you would put a few more clips in than I'm potentially doing here. And I'm just going to stitch that again, and I'll show you how it attaches to the top bag then, or the outer bag, should I say. Oops. Just make sure that it catches that uh, fold. Move those out of the way for speed, and then just whiz over the edge. And again, I would give that a little bit of a press. So that's kind of the where we were up to with the main part. So turn it right size out give it a good press and then you've got it ready to actually use the lining i'd put the top um <laughs> element in so put that one in the top yeah put that one in the bottom in the same way as i've shown you before with the markings so you make the whole thing up the, the same whole thing up so, the zip in it. so you will end up with two you'll have one which is the outer fabric and the zip and then you'll have another one which is the lining fabric so then what you're going to do is take the outer one and turn it inside out and then right sides together you would put the line so you're kind of putting the outer one inside of the lining one um, oh that's i've got the back on the front let's turn oh, that around oh. there we go so yeah it's you, having to use your imagination because i haven't put the base and lid in place yeah. so that would be filled in with fabric and that top part would be filled in with fabric as well. So yeah. that would kind so you of you basically there. cover the whole of the outside with the exactly, whole. Exactly, yes, yeah. So then what you're, you're doing is um, basically taking the lining. Then once you've got it in place, 
you turn it through and then you are just making sure that you've got the that line in the right way around lining it from the edge sorry I'm wrestling it into place now and then that would basically clip. I would tend to use pins at this stage. Yeah. So what you need to do is make sure that that folded edge that you've got is not catching in with the teeth or where the runner is. And then you would basically, again, find your center points, the front, the middle, the back, and then go onto your machine and stitch from the back seam along and then follow that top stitch edge that you've stitched previously I hand and it catches it anything. If, I want to if you want to, you can, yeah. Um, a lot of people will, and there's a couple of different techniques and different methods on the, the YouTube channel of how to put it together. Because what you can do is put it together within the traditional way where you've got your lining attached to your zip as well as the outer. Um, and then you kind of take the, the lid and hand stitch that in place. Right. Um, or it could be that you're doing it in a similar way to the hobby bag where you kind of have external seams and then put binding on there. Right. So this is it. There's loads of different ways. You can decide which yeah, you exactly. like. I just don't like doing hand stitching. <laughs> 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 so there you go. Right. Yeah, that's how it comes together. Thank you, Hayley. Right, recap, recap, recap very quickly. We've got the William Morris one. Beautiful. Low, three quarters of the stock of those got. How many in baskets? Oh, way too many people, way too many people want that. About 20 of you are going to miss out on that one if you don't check out. Next one. Oh, I could do this, eh? Then we can pack away as we go along. <laughs> right. uh, the pink one, which you've already got. So this is the sewing room one. And that's it. Beautiful. So you get the panel. Uh, you don't need the separate instructions because they're on the panel there. And your half a metre of fabric. 14 99 That's the pink one. Next one. Blue one, starry, starry night. So there we go, blue one. So you've got the starry night panel and the half metre of your fabric. Instructions on the panel there for fourteen ninety nine. Lovely. Next. Oh, the hair one, yep. Yeah. Here we go. So we've got the, the... Beautiful. That doesn't look anything like Andy Love. <laughs> I all think it looks like Andy. I, I it looks like say, that um, famous chef. What's he called? I, I must admit, I didn't see Andy Love when I. No, I don't yeah. see Andy Love there. No. Anyway, so you get the fabric and the and the panel, fourteen ninety nine. Uh, then next one, game on. Next one. So this one here, you get the panel and the black lining fabric. I'm not going to throw that one because that's full of all your okay. Xbox stuff. How come you've got that? Your kids Oh, I, I took them off the kids. <laughs> I don't think they're current things because I don't think they thought I, they could trust me with their latest oh, stuff for some reason. Kind of thing, it changes. I you know, got, you buy it for I them and then six months later you've got to buy them a new one. Mm, I haven't got a clue. I think a lot of it's done online now. Yeah, he's, he's got one of, like a switchy thing now. Oh, what, what? A switchy thing. Anyway, Is that what it's called? and then we've got the Vintage America final. $14.99. $14.99. And then also, don't forget, you need your Boslin R forms uh, iron in, one sided fusible, half a metre. We'll talk about Haley's rulers again in the next hour. If you just want the pattern on its own, you can have the pattern on its own. Now, this is, um, just shows how I've got good value. This is really good value because you do get all your pattern pieces and you do get a pattern for a little bag and everything like that for 9 99 but it shows you what good value the panels are as well. So, now, do things come from us or do they come from you? Um, from here. Oh, from here. Yeah. Right, from yeah. here. Lovely. And then we'll talk about the rulers and all of that. Oh, yeah. the other thing is the walking foot. Uh, the universal walking foot we had in this hour. Fits any machine that's low, well, we, uh, we say any machine, as far as we know, any machine that's low shank and you can only go up to a seven millimeter stitch width. 1699. Uh, super demo, Haley. All of your tips are out of tanding. Thank you for sharing these. So important tips made everything much easier. Teresa, why'd you shout all of that, my lovely? <laughs> uh, anyway, thank you and thank you. We'll see Hayley back in an hour when you're doing bunting. We're talking bunting, yeah. Uh, and I'll be back straight after this break with more sewing room tools. Mm -hmm. 
We're proud to welcome the Debbie Shaw brand back to Sewing Street this Thursday. Joining us will be Debbie's ambassador, Sheena Benton, who will demonstrate new and exclusive designs by Debbie Shaw and her daughter, Kim Hine. We'll also be launching Debbie's Half Yard Sewing Club, an international subscription website full of sewing projects and more. So make sure you tune in this Thursday to Sewing Street. Hello, I'm Sheena and I'm so excited to be joining the Sewing Street family. Um, I've enjoyed lots of crafts throughout the year, but never more so than when I discovered sewing. Once I'd finished that very first project, that was it for me. I was hooked. And it just opened up a whole new world and now I just can't imagine sewing not being in it. I think what I especially love is there's just so many different facets to sewing. From dressmaking, quilting, free motion embroidery, bag making, toy making, homewares, etc. There really is something for everybody to enjoy. There's always something new to learn and to be inspired by and it brings everybody together. I think it's quite magical how a fabric and a sewing machine can just transport you to a new place for a few hours. You get to relax and at the end you produce something really unique and special to you that you can keep and enjoy or you can give to others. I'm really looking forward to sharing that passion with you all and hopefully have a few giggles along the way. I look forward to um, seeing you very soon on Sewing Street. Take care. Bye-bye. Shopping with Sewing Street couldn't be easier. You can shop via our website at www.sewingstreet.com where you can watch our live shows and see all the products from that day. We also have a huge amount of products on our website from your sewing room essentials to fabrics, sewing machines and much more. You can download and shop on the go with our Sewing Street app. Simply head over to your app store and search Sewing Street. Alternatively, you can contact our UK-based call centre 24 hours a day on 0800 001 4433. Shopping made easy at Sewing Street. Never miss a show by watching on the go with the Sewing Street app. Head over to your app store now and search Sewing Street and simply download to your smartphone or tablet. You can watch the shows live and see your favourite presenters and guests. Click on the Today button to shop all of the products that are featured in today's show. Want to know what's hot? Then click here to see today's bestsellers and highlights. Have you missed a show or want to watch one back? Then click the schedule button and you can go back seven days to watch and shop and you can also see what's coming up over the next seven days. Want to say hello or ask a question to our guests? Then send a message to the studio. You can also keep in touch with all the latest news, events, product launches and much more by clicking here for our social media pages. Never miss a show by watching on the go with Sewing Street. Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletter. Go to sewingstreet.com and scroll down to the bottom of the homepage. Type in your email address and click the envelope. That's it. You'll never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. Not only is Sewing Street live from 8am till 1pm on Sky 670, Freeview Channel 73, YouTube and the Sewing Street app. Now, Virgin subscribers can watch on Channel 754, which means there are more ways to watch your way with Sewing Street. And we'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. Bye. Did you know that you can continue shopping 24 hours a day, seven days a week, even after we finish broadcasting live? Just head over to www.sewingstreet.com for thousands of sewing supplies available from top brands. You still pay only one PMP with split pay available on certain items and an easy checkout service too. Plus, you can get expert advice and tips from our Sewing Street hub and UK customer support is available 24-7. So head over to sewingstreet.com and continue your sewing journey. Did you know that we can deliver to over 20 different countries worldwide, spanning four continents from the UK to Australia? 
check out our website for the list of countries and delivery costs. Sewing Street, stitching the world together. Every day, our experts will bring you a wealth of knowledge. They'll take you through the steps of making projects and we feature fabulous tips along the way. Whether you're new to sewing or a seasoned pro, you're sure to learn something new. We're live every day from 8am till 1pm and you can also watch back all of the demonstrations featured on the show on our YouTube channel. Did you know at Sewing Street that on various products we offer split pay? That means on certain items you can spread the cost over two, three, four or sometimes even five interest-free monthly payments. Just pay the first instalment when you purchase and you're away. So shop your way with Split Pay. Now, I've got a few things to say before I start the hour. First of all, I just need to um, reiterate, Debbie Shaw herself isn't coming on the channel. It's her brand that's coming on the channel. And that lovely lady, whose name I've forgotten for a moment. Sorry? Sheena. Sheena. She's going to be her ambassador on thing. Debbie Shaw is not coming on the channel. Obviously, she works somewhere else. So Sheena will be, set, uh, will be sewing Debbie Shaw designs. Just so you know. Right. There have been two competitions in the last week. So on uh, Sunday, uh, Debbie Moore was on. And uh, we said that one person, oh, we do, do we not know which is which? One person will win, win everything from the 10 o'clock hour and one person will win everything from the 12 o'clock hour. We've not been told, we've just been given two names. So here they are. So Ruth and Kimberly, one of you will be winning all of 10 o'clock and one of you will be winning all of 12 o'clock. I can't tell you which one each of you has won. So brilliant, well done, congratulations Ruth and Kimberly. That, they're worth over £150, those prizes. Over £150. Now, the other thing was on Sunday, Saturday and Friday, we didn't announce the winners of the shop till you drop. No, shop to win. So here, if you are Vanessa, Sue or Kim, oh, another Kim, Vanessa, Sue or Kim, you won the shop to win on either Thursday, no, Friday, Saturday or Sunday. Your prize will be winging its way to you very, very shortly. Right. Starting off with some uh, rotary cutting blades. Right, here we go. Uh, now, how many do we have in here? 10 blades for 19 99 Makes them £1.99 each. £1.99 each. You change the blade uh, with every project, really, you're supposed to change it. Yeah. Uh, but you know, you can, you can tell when your blades get. They come in a little case, look. They come in a little case. However, make sure you dispose of them sensibly. Take them to Waitrose or... Now, I was in another shop the other day where they had loads of different... Oh, I know, I know. Oh, you know the top You know the, the top one where the Marks and Spencers and the next is, Ben, in Stratford? What's the do-it-yourself shop in the corner next to the Sports Direct? Is it B&Q? Right, in B&Q, they've got, like, a battery one, a blade one. Uh, as you go through, like, the entrance hall, they've got loads and loads of all the different disposing places. $19.99. Okay, uh, uh, Ben's found this five pack online. Not the same make, not a direct comparison, not so whatsoever. $19.99. How much are theirs? $24.50 for five. $24.50 for five. Anyway, $19.99. Japanese steel, like a samurai warrior's. Beautiful. £19.99. Gorgeous. Right, moving on. Check out, check out, check out. Oh, uh, yeah, I need my screen, my love. Thank you. Uh, right, next. Macaron in the... Have I got it in the green as well? No. Okay, okay. Right, okay, here's the macaron in pink. Yeah, we've got a crash on this one. Well, we don't have to. We're not supposed to. Right, so I ha I'll tell you why I'm doing it, right? We had a £10, a, a tools under £10 hour the other day. Right, thank you very much indeed. We had a tool under £10, right? 
right? And, and we, we, Hannah put this in it. She says, oh, I've got to take 210 pounds then. So we're going to do the same again today. What, you, what it is, is oh, it's a magnet on the top here, right? And the way you sharpen your pins and your needles is you do this. I don't quite know what, like, sandy stuff in the middle. I don't quite know what it is. It just, it just says, place it into the macaron. Um, no, it doesn't say what it is. I suppose that's giving away the... Um, it's like a white... Oh, here you go, here you go. Rare earth magnet, that's on the top there. It's called abrasive grain. Abrasive grain is what's in there. Well, I wonder what that means. Anyway, it sharpens your needles and your pins. It's nice, actually. But just be careful, because if you look away, you could easily, you know, ow. Anyway, uh, 9 99 it's not meant to be 9 99 We'll go back to 12 99 at midnight tonight. Lovely. Is it not a needle cleaner, Fran says. Oh, hang on. I thought it was a sharpener. Can I just have the packet? Sorry. No, sharpener. It says sharpener, Fran. It says sharpener. I suppose it would clean it as well, because it will take anything that's on the edge, uh, break, you know. Yeah. Yeah. No, do not try and sharpen a sewing machine needle. Right. Bobbin clamps. Here we go. Uh, 9 99 20 of them. What you do is, you know, when you take your bobbin out of the machine and it always unravels in the... Oh, here you go, like that. Just pop your bobbins in, leave them in your drawer or your cupboard or whatever, and they won't ra unravel everywhere. Beautiful. Uh, ben uses these tied up type his green beans in the garden. 9 99 Yeah, they're nice to grow. They're horrible to eat, aren't they? Oh, it depends which green beans are. They're the thin French beans, or they're the ones my granddad used to do with the red flowers and the wide, like kind of rough one. Yeah, yeah, we would eat them raw as well. Yeah, I don't think you're supposed to, are you? Nine ninety nine. Beautiful. Moving on. Cause oh no, hang on. I thought you said courgettes next. I was that. Well. Oh, right, now I had this the other day with um, Hannah. Right, what you do with this is you see here, what you put it on a little ruler, you twist the handle, it creates a, a vacuum and it holds the ruler in place while you're using it. I don't know if I've got a small ruler. Here you go. Right, obviously you won't, have the card, won't keep the card on yours. You put it on your ruler, you twist it like that and look, And then you twist it back round like that. Oh. No, if you buy two, you can't scale a building. You'd need one for your feet as well, wouldn't you? Four pounds and 99 pence. Loads of those in baskets. Make sure you check out on those. Lovely. Nimble it is, nimble. Right, yeah, there it is. Ruler, crip, suction handle, it, complete with instructions. Oh, high-tack glue. There you go, original high-tack glue. This is like the UPV, uh, not UPV, what's it called? The, in school kids, you give it to school kids, the white one. PVA. Yeah, PVA. Original high-tech, all-purpose, very sticky glue, dries clear and flexible for crafts, cards, hobbies and trimmings. At two ninety-nine. So what would you use it for? Very sticky for fast hold, slow dry. Perfect for all fabric, silk, paper, wood, trimmings and household work. Designed also to stick variable surfaces such as china, metal, polystyrene, wood, glass. Perfect for collages and all craft work. Heat bond fabrics if used between two fabrics and ironed. Who knew? So it's like bonder web in a, in a bottle. 
unaffected by cold or heat, dries clear and flexible, can be thinned with waterfall, water, not waterfalls. Suitable views on items to be hand washed with care. To be sure, test first. Always. Two ninety nine. Beautiful. Beautiful. Now you might have bought the Crafter's Companion version of this recently. This is a really good price. Two ninety nine. Loads in baskets. Loads you there. Loads you there. Loads you there. Check out. Check out. Check out. I can see you checking out. Well done. Congratulations. Oh, I think somebody just, just, oh, seven just went like that in a split second then. There you go, another one. And there's uh, 10 in baskets. Keep pressing, keep going through, keep going through, keep going through. Yeah, I didn't know that. I'm, yeah, lots of different things you could do. And I had no idea that you could iron it and it become like a bond web. Just make sure you, one, one caveat with that, make sure you use your pressing cloth because when you press it, I'm sure the glue will squidge out the sides and you don't want it going on your ironing board or your iron. Oh, do you know what? This is absolutely flying out. Absolutely flying out. Well, no, you'd have to be very, you'd have to, well, it dries clear so you wouldn't, it wouldn't matter. So it might go through the material, it might stain the material, uh, not stain it, um, make it look damp, but it dries clear, so you'll be fine. But just just be, um, when you're putting on your two bits of fabric, just be, um, yes, don't be, go, don't do a John Scott and go, <laughs> like that, don't do that. Just do little gentle. <laughs> just do little gentle. Well done, well done. How many are in baskets? Okay, so there are only 18 of those left. Once you've all checked out, 18 left. Right, yeah. I have, I'm having this. I'm having this. Here we go. William Morris, notebook. And you're just thinking it's a notebook, don't you? Are you ready for this? Are you ready, Ollie? Look! So you get your notepad, you get your pen, you get your like post-it notes, and you get a little envelope there with Velcro or one touch fastening on it. Now are they, are they? Sage, this is sage green, this one, soft, soft sage. Now at the pad, are not sticky. Those are sticky. Those are just your straightforward pad. Nine ninety nine. Right. Hang on a second. Now, if they get used, oh no. Right. I'll have to have this one now. Can't can't, can't sell this one now, can we? Hang on. Oh. I have to take it home now. How br I want this. Nine ninety nine. Pardon. So you get, oh, no, right, I'm talking Christmas presents now. Um, because, 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 uh, the wonderful things he does. Um, no, 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 uh, they're starting, wh what date are we today? 28th, 29th, uh, in two days, three days time, they're starting. How's that going to, uh, actually, uh, they've not thought this through, right? They start Christmas in June in two days' time on Hobby Maker. Does that mean when we come in the morning, we're going to be in a Christmasly decorated set? Nobody's thought this one through, have they? Anyway, 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 six ninety nine. These are flying out. These are absolutely flying out. So shall I tell you there's um, I could I'll tell you there's one hundred and sixteen left in stock. Oh no, there's one hundred and fourteen left in stock now. Oh no, there's one hundred and seven left in stock now. Quick as you can, quick as you can, quick as you can. These are going to go at six ninety nine. These are going to totally sell out, right? These are totally going to sell out at this point, right? Okay, so look, 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 look. Oh no, 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 no! Be careful because right, there's 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 over sixty people got in baskets now. You need to check out. You need to check out on these. Look, sorry, eighty seven now. 
I know, I know, I know. I shouldn't do this, really, but I don't care. It's, it's pretty good fun, isn't it? Oh, look, 77. Now, there's too many people in baskets now. Too many people in baskets now. Oh. And there's lots of people on the phone lines at the moment. And they're going to go. They're going to go. They're going to go. Please, please, please be careful if you want this one. I know, I know we're not supposed to do this, but look. Uh, oh, you're going quicker than I can go. Right, there's over 70 people in baskets. You can see how many I've got left. 80 in baskets now, and look how many I've got left. That's it. There's too many people, too many people there. Oh, we've come to a standstill. Oh, 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 oh. How many in baskets? I've got 28 left. Oh, 24 left. 24 left now. Oh, 19 left now. 19. This is exciting, isn't it? Isn't it fun? Oh, 11. 11 left now. 11 left. Please be careful. Please be careful. Oh, I've got to go over here. There's two left. There's two left. They're gone. Sold out. Sold out. Sold out. Sold out. Sold out. Congratulations. Oh, dear me. Oh, now. Oh, no, I can't sit on it. This one's damaged. No, we can't send that one back. Right, no, but we, we did, we used to sell, when we were at sewing quarter, we used to sell, and everyone I liked, I'd write in it, go, this one can't go back. Then somebody messaged going, I think I've got John's pad. They'd sent it back and sent it out to somebody. That one won't go out to, that one won't go out. Congratulations if you got that. Sold out, sold out, sold out. Bit of calico now for your twalls. This is calico, 60 inches wide. Beautiful. Oh, yeah, I'm keeping it. Yeah. Two ninety nine, pounds and 99 pence for half a metre, buying it off the bolt. Now, this one won't sell out today. <laughs> this one won't sell out today because we've just had a new delivery of this one. So we've got, we've got loads of these. No, we haven't. You've got that wrong. Yeah. No, the other way around. Yeah. What's the matter, Ben? We're not, we're not angry, we're just disappointed. Make sure you go through now, this is 2 .99. Now, what's it used for? You can use it to make twirls, you can do the back of cushions with it, you can do back of quilts that are going on a wall. I wouldn't do it on the back of a quilt that you can have on your bed because you don't want calico, even though I love the smell of calico. Uh, if you do red work on it, you can do cross stitch on it, you can do whatever, you can use it for anything. You can dye it really beautiful. You can make clothes out of it. What we, uh, what we used to do is make, make twirls out of it, and then we would uh, make, use the twirls as actual dresses and things like that. You can paint on it easily. You can do paint, uh, fabric painting on it if you want to. At two ninety nine, beautiful. I, I had some lovely curtains in my fitting room at Colchester Mercury Theatre. Dyed them pink. We block printed all costume words all over it, sewing words. I don't know what happened to those actually. Oh, well, well, it would have been. It could have been a tulip pink fabric. It was before tulip pink was born, I think. No, I don't think she was born then. We're going back to ninety. Oh, actually, you know the picture I posted yesterday. No, that wasn't. No, that was when I was at Wimbledon School of Art. So, yeah, yeah, I was, up, I was in theatre in the 80s. I remember I started my, I, I went to college in 78 to 81. That was the first one. Then 81 to 83 was Wimbledon. So this will have been, Colchester will have been 84, that 84. I know, 84, 85. Anyway, loads of these are going. Loads of these have gone. Gorgeous. Leave that one there for you. You're still checking out on that one though, so keep going through. Keep going through. Right, now sewing machine needles. Now, which is, uh, tell me which. Right, okay, Microtech needles. Now, you're gonna think, oh, I'm not spending 49.99 on the back of needles. There's 100 needles in there. Oh, is it 100? Was it 70? Yeah, 100 needles. Size 70, 100 needles, Microtechs. 
Microtechs are the ones that all everybody goes to as their as their um go-to needle sort of thing. Look, there they all are. Now they've all got the little marking on, so it's got purple and green on, so you know it's Microtech, so you know it's a size 70. $49.99. Now, there's a hundred in there. There's a hundred. Right? At Microtech's needle, size 70. How brilliant are those? Yes, I know $49.99 seems a lot of money, but how long are they going to last you? You're supposed to change the needle after every eight hours of sewing, remember? Beautiful. $49.99. Question. Morning, John. Is Calico good for dyeing indigo and using for Sashko? Gina in Kent. Oh, I hadn't thought of that. What it might, yes, it's really good for dyeing, but you know what would be lovely to do is if you did it a bit like shaburi and kind of tied elastic, like tie dye, a little bit tie dye, and put it into the indigo with elastic bands around it. Then it comes through, and then you could do sashko over the top of it or borrow. We love, but yes, it would be really, really lovely. Be useful, yeah, use a lovely deep indigo. Oh, and oh, that'd be lovely. Like a Chang's fabric, like Chang's fabrics. There was Shiburu. Yeah, you won't do the other one because the other one involved paste, didn't it? But Shiburu is the one where you tie it up and stitch it and things. $49.99. Anyway, moving on. You don't want your microtexes today. Got universals as well. Got universals as well. $39.99 these are for 100 for 100 now. I've not got half as many of these as I had of the last one. These again are your size 70. Hi, John. Been using my my text for about a month. So much better than Universal Shop. Oh, Barbara, how much sewing do you do each day? That's fine. That's fine. If you're only doing a few hours sewing each day, it's fine. Uh, now, look, these have just got the green on them because they're size 70. They haven't got the purple on them because they're not the Microtex. So you know that if you, if you bought both, if you bought both, then you'll know which is which, won't you? These are universal. Oh, hang on. He's on. Yeah, now Schmetz needles for your machine. Oh, that's John James. Oh, there you go. There. Here's your Smetch needles. Oh, okay, we have to take £2.52 off because they haven't done it upstairs yet. Right, okay, so we've got Nacht Stick, with Nacht Stick Nardle, which is top stitch. We've got Step Nardle, which is quilting. We've got Jersey Nardle, which is Jersey. Microtex Nardles. G oh, that one hasn't got a Nardle on it. Jeans. Uh, we've got embroidery, universal, leather, and stretch. All of those for twenty nine ninety nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine packets. Beautiful. Now it's always good to have lots of different ne needles. Buy your machine just in case. Beautiful. Keep going through, though, for these. Keep going through. Loads in baskets. Micro, I could basically tell you, Microtex, here, let's see what, what Schmidt, Schmidt, say what Nitex are. Oh, hang on. Uh, well, they're saying for silk, microfiber fabrics, coated fabrics and foils, Microtex needles just seem to be that little bit more reliable. That's all. Beautiful. Keep going through for those. Keep going through. Lots of you there. Lots of you there. Now, if you're doing hand stitching, we've got John James needles. Right, yeah. Oh! They're very durable as well, look, Schmetz needles. Oh, well, this is brilliant, this one, look. So you've got big eye quilting, you've got cross stitch, gold, plated. Oh, don't let Jane Greenoff see those. 
uh, you've got beading, you've got quilting, you've got long darners, you've got your quilting, you've got your leather, you've got your chenille, you've got your milliners, you've got your embroidery, you've got your craft needles, You've got your pebble embroidery needles. You've got your curved quilting needles, and they can be used for upholstery as well. You've got your sharps, and you've got your 50, all of those. Oh, 29 pounds and 35 pence. Oh, it's not the price. What was, what was it? 10, 10 pounds off. You're just taking 10 pounds off. I'm not quite sure why that is. So hang on, so there's 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So these are just over a pound each. That's not right. That's a brilliant price, that is. Make sure you go through, make sure you go through, make sure you go through. How brilliant is that? Loads of you there. Well done. Now I've got fewer than 20 now. Loads of you there. Keep going through now. These are going to go. These are going to go. How many are in baskets? Okay, so I've got six left. Six left, but five people on the phone lines. Oh, here we go, four left. Four left. They're all gonna go, they're gonna go, they're gonna go, they're gonna go. Oh, he's being a sports sport. He's taking them away from me before I could see naught on my thingy. Oh, I'm gonna see naught. If I put these in the bag slowly. No, no, I can see it, it's still on my screen. Keep going. There's way too many people, way too many people on these. Please be careful, please be careful. They're gonna sell out, they're about to sell out. They shouldn't have given me that screen, should they? At least they don't give me the names, you know. Right, next. Oh, lovely Nicholas Ball. Here's his book, look, 29.99. Now I know what you're thinking. Oh, it's a bit expensive for a sewing book. It's not at all. I love, love, love this book, right? First of all, the texture. Oh, oh, have I not got an open one? No, this is sealed, this one. Uh, I don't know, but I'll need um, something to just sc score it with to get it open. Hang on, I could use this pen. I could use my pen. I'll just put the something in. Bear with me, caller. There we go. There we go. Oh, how beautiful. This is such a beautiful book. Uh, in launch, it was in what day was it we launched it? 22nd, right? Please go back and watch. It was 8 o'clock in the morning. He's the improv quilter, also known quilts from the attic. First of all, the, the um, cover is tactile, like the quilt is, because this is all, um, um, what's it called? Um, Traponto. So they've done the cover of the book like Traponto as well. And then, look at this, what I love. Look, look, at, how, look at the pink sheeny shiny here, right? But when you start flicking the pages, look, pink sheeny shiny, Start flicking the pages, it disappears. It's like magic. So what the book is about, his nan used to say, you're neither use nor ornament, you. But he was saying, this is a book about being useful and ornamental. So it starts off here with, look, you see, then, now, next, and the projects. So there he is, very old picture, that one. Uh, of, um, so this is all about him and everything about his improv quilting. Because people think improv quilting is a modern contemporary thing, right? But it's not. 
because there's his grandma. Uh, so let's just do this. So it's all about the history of improv quilting. Look, that's 19th century. Oh, I love opening a new book. The pages are really gorgeous. Uh, that one's 1850. Would you believe that's 1850? Yeah, no. Oh, and that, that I thought I said this is his. That, that they were a married couple. That is Nicholas's partner's great 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 granddad. Anyway, so it's all about then about the history. Then these are the people who are known now for doing it. So you know Joe Avery and everybody. So these are all people now. And Chris is in here as well. Chris English is in here as well. Uh, beautiful, beautiful Chris. There he is, Chris English. You'll see him at Festival of Quilts, friend of Jenny Jackson's. Then we, he then goes, oh, this is still all the quilts and everything. Then he goes on to, um, oh no, hang on, project. I'll go to the back. Projects, right? So it's not actual um, quilt patterns, because obviously they're improv. It's all different techniques that you can use to create the beautiful ideas that he's got. So it's your creativity, but you're being given a guided hand, look. A bit of Tula there, that's um, Alice in Wonderland, isn't it? How brilliant is this, look. So uh, you've got all of your different, and then here are tools that you might need. It's such a gorgeous book, I can't tell you. And they're all signed, they're all signed. So it's still exclusive to us till tomorrow. Till tomorrow, it's still exclusive to us at $29.99. It's the most beautiful book. Oh, look, Sharon. Sharon says, my book has literally just arrived. Guess what I'm going to be doing this afternoon? Sharon, you're going to love it. It's such a lovely book, I can't tell you. Oh, yeah, yeah, and there's an H, because this, this is a quilt, like, one a day. He did one a day. And on his dad's birthday, there, he did an H for his dad there. Beautiful. Gorgeous. Keep going through for that. It's a really, really, really lovely book, that one. Yeah, well done. What? Friction fine liner pens. Here we go. Right, Joe, so now what are these then? So this is how it comes, right? This is how it comes, this one open here. So now you get a red, a blue, a black, and a, a green. No, I've not seen these before. Right, hang on, where's that calico got? I'm gonna be a bit naughty now. Yeah, Jay, could you get me an iron, please? A switched on iron. Right, so I've not seen these before. Eras erasable, we knew that, writing felt pens. Um, they're felt pens, these. So hang on, let's just have a look then. Oh, they're really nice to use as well. Now. Thanks, Jay. I'm not going to do a sand tangle now. I haven't got a template, I'm going to do a sand tangle. No. What are you laughing about? <laughs> Just to Jay laughing. Right, okay, so I've done that, I've done that, and then I've gone, right, I'm not in love anymore. So, you get your hot iron, yeah, let me just turn the steam off there. Right, the iron hasn't been on very long, but let's see, let's just make sure. Uh, excuse me, excuse me, right? Now, also, right, hang on, hang on. Let's do it on paper then. Oh, do you know what? The black one's a really lovely grey colour. So where's the rubber on this one then? Look, excuse me, friction. Gone. 
Gone. So what happens is it's the heat from the friction. Either for, you can use a hairdryer and things like that. Always test your fabric first, though. Always test your fabric first. On a, I've not seen these felt tips before. So the rubber is on that, or the eraser, I should say, is on that end, isn't it? Look. They've just brought out a new single, haven't they? I met him in a, uh, uh, when I was working on Life and Times of Henry, I'm talking about erasure now. I met him in a really, really designery shop uh, in Manchester when I was doing the Life and Times of Henry Pratt. And um, he was very sweet, except he was buying the same shirt as me. And I was like, oh, no, I don't think I want it. And he wants to put it back. It was a Versace one. This, these are the days when I had money. It was a Versace shirt. It was beautiful. <gasps> oh, no, when I, I used to have proper money. Not work, the work, that's the worst wages I've ever had working here. Anyway, that's by the by. I do it for love, though, don't I? Oh, actually, look, 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 look. Yeah, but you're all young. You've still got your careers ahead of you. I'm on the downwards. Well, no, you would. You could have, though. They're saying they've got nothing ahead of you. You could have. That's not the attitude, Ben. Right. It's not working because the cardboard's still on, or the cardstock's still on there. Right. That's not, that's the wrong attitude. Keep coming through, keep coming through for those. Very popular. Try to discover. You can't use it as a sleeve board, just to warn you. A lot of people bought this as a sleeve board. You can't use it as a sleeve board. But if you're just pressing your like half, you know, your half square triangles and things like that, I've lost it. Uh, hang on. I'll just check in my filing cabinet. Oh, here it is. There you go. Oh, 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 now, please be careful. You've locked it as well. That's a point. Oh, see, it's just while I do these things for you, isn't it? So I can make the mistakes. There you go. So if you're just doing your half square triangles or your little bits of binding. I don't think you can say that, Ben. Right, there you go. Gets hot, be careful. Seven pounds and 49 pence. It comes in a box. It comes in a box. Foldable, easy storage, anti-skid. Uh, perfect for quilting, a great alternative to bulky conventional board. The cover is non-removable. Well, it, it is. No, <gasps> excuse me. There's most probably. Oh no, I no, don't remove it because it's look. You can make it, you can make your own cotton version though if you wanted to. Use it as your as your pattern. But it definitely can be taken off. Lovely, moving on. Oh no, I saw that fall off the table earlier. Hang on. Here you go. Now, this is double-sided adhesive transparent tape that can be stitched through. Disappears after washing. Oh, perfect for putting zips in and things like that. £6.49. Wonder tape or ruben adhesive. Adhesive ribbon, I think that means. From Prim. I'm not sure what that sign means. Well, it's coins with a U after it. Oh, it's on the, the cardboard's recyclable. Nastro Magica or Sinta Magica. Anyway, £6.49. £6.49. Lovely. What time is it? Oh, got ages yet. Freezer paper. Now... Uh, freezer paper is, uh, oh, I don't know. Um, it's a paper that's waxy on one side and not on the other. You mainly use it to wrap meat to put in the freezer, but you can use it for applique, you can use it for lining drawers, you can use it for, and the waxy side, you can iron it onto, uh, you can iron, Jay, have you got one of these open, please? Uh, you, can, uh, you can iron it onto fabric and peel it off, used as a template, and it doesn't mark the fabric at all. Now, 
You need to go to your local, oh, hang on, which, which shop's that one? Oh, no, that's a different shop than I thought of, right? Look, in Dunelm, which you usually go to to find much, much cheaper prices, 10 pounds, 10 pounds. In Hobbycraft, 10 pound 80. 10 pounds 80 in Hobbycraft. Right, so let me just show you. So what you can do, right, what you can do is I've just torn a bit off here. You can take it to your fabric like this and you can press it on, waxy side down, right? So it's stuck on the side like that, right? Yeah, look, 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 it's, it's, on, it's, it's ironed onto fabric. You can take it off, right? And it doesn't leave any residue on your fabric, but then you can do it again over here. Right, so what Mandy Shaw does and what Tilda do, oh, that's hot now, I might not be able to use the friction pen to show you, but what they do is they draw on their pattern on here of their gingerbread man. This isn't going to work because it's still warm. Oh, it's coming off now. You, uh, basically, you can stitch through and then you just tear this, take that off and it hasn't left any residue on your fabric at all. I'm sure I could do it again now if I wanted to. Do it again, you see? And it doesn't leave any, so applique shapes, anything like that, you can, now, Sally Ann Harrison uses this for uh, foundation paper piecing. Can't remember how, can't remember how she uses it now. All right, now, okay, oh no, that's still going down. Yeah, I know I haven't got a pressing mat, everyone. Don't start messaging in. So that's fourth time it's stuck on there. I think that might be it. I don't think it would stick again. I'll try for fifth, but I don't think it will. Oh, he lied. So there, that's stuck on five different types. Oh yeah, well and truly. And no tackiness, no, it doesn't mark your fabric or anything like that at all. Hayley wanted demos, she's getting demos. Seven pound 49. How much was it in the other shop? 10 pounds or 10 pounds 80? Yeah. Beautiful. Oh, now I'm not doing a demo on eau de coat. Now, did you know that this was developed along with Leanne from Crafter's Companion, right? So eau de coat work in conjunction with Crafter's Companion, right? So this eau de coat, this comes with a little um, credit card, he thinks. Not a real credit card, you can't spend on it. Um, it makes normal fabric become oilcloth. Because you know sometimes you go to John Lewis or somewhere like that and you want to get a nice outside tablecloth and they've only got it in beige spotty. And you know, I didn't want beige spotty, I wanted strawberry thief. You can buy your strawberry thief cotton fabric and then you can spread it with eau de coat. You can also sew through eau de coat if you're making wash bags or things like that, makeup bags and things. No, just the top side, just the top side. So what you do is... No, no, only one side becomes oilcloth, because oilcloth's only on one side as well. So, but it's waterproof, so if you do the lining of your... Right, so it's... A, oh, oh, there's, there's your little... Um, that's new. That's new, because they don't normally... It doesn't normally have this on, and it definitely doesn't have this inside. In fact, the one we showed the other day, the one that came from our warehouse the other day, had a, had a square um, one. Anyway, what you do is you put it onto the fabric and you scrape it on like that. And then, you, like my nan used to make sandwiches, you just put it on like the butter and then you scrape it off again like that. Um, but basically, it turns your fabric into oilcloth. Now, it can, the more you put on, the more oilcloth it comes. You only need, the most you need to do is three times, right? Um, Stoff wird zu wachstuck. I don't know what that means. Anyway, 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 you put it on once, you leave it for two hours, you put it on again, you leave it for two hours, and you put it on the third time, you leave it for 24 hours. You can just put one layer on if you want, but it's not as, uh, it doesn't make your fabric go crinkly and it doesn't change the colour of your fabric. So if, say if you've got your favourite Tula Pink fabric, you can make it into oilcloth and it looks like it did when it was, um, you know, the, the same, it doesn't change the colours or anything like that. So Leanne from Crafter's Companion worked with Odecote to create this. They called it um, Odecote, uh, and the company's called Odif, they're French. They also do all of the sprays for Crafter's Companion as well, the, you know, the 101, the 202, all that sort of thing. Anyway, it's 14 99 This calico's... Loads in baskets, make sure you check out. Best presses now. Right. Loads of these. Right, these are all your refills here. 
And these are your ones with your squirty things. Green squirty first. Are you doing it from upstairs or from the front? It's up to you. Okay, there you go. Citrus Grove. Now, just because you've got green, pink and lavender colours here, and blue, they don't stain your fabrics. Don't worry about that. You won't get stain on your fabric. £11.99, pence. it's really good for uh, stabilising your fabric, good for getting rid of the creases. I've got the Caribbean What's It one uh, next to my board that Kate bought for me. We don't sell it here. Uh, £11.99, £11.99. Pence. Beautiful. So that's your Citrus Grove. In fact, didn't we have a vote one day? And Michael Grove's timid Mike liked that one best. That was his favourite. Or oh, was that one the one you liked and he liked the Blossom one? I can't remember now. And we just thought it was funny that he was called Mike Groves and that's called Citrus Grove. Next, Cherry Blossoms is Stuart's favourite. 11 99 What's singing on it? Oh, Michael Groves was at the Radio 1. What was it called? Big Weekend? That's where Oleg Alexander said he wasn't going to be called Years and Years anymore, wasn't it? Yeah, he's just going to be known as Ollie Alexander now. Eleven ninety nine, eleven ninety nine. That's your cherry blossom, Stuart's favourite. Lavender fields, this one. Beautiful. Eleven pounds and ninety nine pence. Then we've got the linen fresh. This is the one that smells like, if you go to a posh um, hotel and you walk past the linen cupboard and it's that lovely, freshly laundered smell. 11 99 Yeah, but you soon get kicked out of them again, don't you? Brilliant. Right, so they're all your um, smaller bottles. Now we'll do the refills. Yep. Uh, don't forget, we need to bring back the early bird as well. We'll just check it hasn't sold out. But 21, I haven't got it. That's all I'm saying. So I'm pre-warning. 21.99. Is that, that one been in and gone? Oh, sorry. Right. Okay. Sent free. Ailey's meandering. What are you looking for? Oh, no, it's the, uh, that, that, it wasn't that one, sorry. That was my bird. No, 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 but thank you. That was my post early bird. Graphics coming in. Oh, there's no point, there's only two left. And how many, oh, we can't sell how many peanut baskets, can we? Oh, it's empty free, sorry, we haven't done that yet. There you go. Okay, and then we've got the lavender fields refill. I love that, look at this, how much you get this, 999.59 millilitres. No one would have been upset if they'd said a litre, would they? Beautiful, 21.99. Well, no, you'd have to do that and that then. If you wanted 1.25 litres, you could buy that and that, couldn't you? Beautiful. Love, Prim Love Turning Tools. Now you've seen the turning tools that we do anyway. This is the new, this is the one from the Love collection at Prim. You got a medium and a large in here. This is to turn out your uh, straps or your animal's legs or anything like that. You slide the tube in, you push the stick up and it comes out like that really, really quickly. Same ones. Yours will come in a packet. So this is instead of a, a seam press. Susie Duncan loves this. So you press your seams open like this. Now what you can do is if you've got one of these, right? You could just rest that underneath your... Oh, hang on, rest that just on... Hang on. Uh, rest it underneath your iron like that so the end is warm. It's not touching 
and that means you've got a lovely warm one to then press your seams open. So if you're doing as quilt as you go, or you're doing lots of little uh, half square triangles, you can't bother to walk to the iron or anything, just use this, 13 pounds and 99 pence. Beautiful, beech wood, I think that is. Will it? 13 99 and what they do is they normally use beech because it's got a close grain. If it gets steam in it, it doesn't crack. It stays close by. $13.99. I like, was it one of those shopping boards that said, do not use this for chopping? Yeah, yeah, fancy dancy one. He used it for a week and it cracked. What, did you put it in water and it split? Yeah. Next. Millwood Taylor's chalk. Here you go. You have seen it, you've just seen it in a box rather than a thingy. $3.99, you get the red one, the white one, and the blue one. Beautiful. The, the traditional way of, I can't open it, it's got sellotape on it, I think. No, it's the same as one you normally see. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm not going to open it, look, because it's sealed there. $3.99. It'll last you for years. That I've got pieces of Taylor's short that I've had for donkey's years. They never wear out. Yeah, Book of Embroidery, Rural School of Needlework. Now, Helen McCook, who's on this, has done two of the chapters. Uh, now, I'm sure it shouldn't be 18 99 No, it's supposed to be £25. Beautiful, isn't it? Absolutely gorgeous. It's all, it's all different sections. I'll show you, right? So what they've done is they've got a, a different expert of each... Um, of eat like cruel work, canvas work, black work, silk shading, gold work, stump work, white work. And then it tells you, gives you ideas, shows you history of, uh, that's the tools that you need. Right, so let, framing up. Right, let's go to our first one, hang on. So, cruel work, right? So the author, Jackie MacDonald, no relation to Jane, she did the, uh, wrote it, and then she did uh, the history of cruel work and then it shows you what needles to use for cruel work, what fabric you use for cruel work, and then design styles, all the different styles. You could draw around those and use those as templates. You see what I mean? And then how, before you stitch, how you stitch it. Cruel work stitch finder. Now, if you go to the Royal School of Needlework, they were 150 years old last year, and what they did was on their website, completely for free, they have got little videos of how to do 150 stitches completely for free. Embroidery stitches completely and utterly for free. I know. So look, oh, look at this. I mean, there's so much in here. It's gorgeous. How? Look, at look, look, look. Well, there's no official project because there's no designs, but you could look at this and use that as your, there's no patterns as it were, there's just inspiration and things like that and how you do the different techniques. Look, I mean, it's just incredible. The work that's gone into here, a beautiful coffee table book for 18 99. Beautiful, well done, well done, well done, well done. That is lovely. Look at that one, look at that one, look at that one. I oh, know. Anyway, we're going for a break now because Hayley West's up next with her bunting. And uh, oh, she can see other things on her desk as well. Oh, and the shack. Oh, now, now. You know she brought a shacket pattern, supposed to be called the Bradford. I don't know why she changed it to Tallulah. And Dave's mortified because he wanted a jacket named after him and he wanted to wear one. Oh, it's, it's a never-ending story. Anyway, she brought her pattern in, loads of them, sold out. Came back again the next week, sold out. Brought another lot in, we've got a few left of that, other, of, of that batch. And we've got those beautiful stripy fabrics that she used to, and I think, aren't they recycled fabrics? Yeah. Recycled fabrics. And we've got, oh, has the denim arrived? Then did the denim arrive? Yeah, no, but did, did it come up? I'll see you in four minutes from now.
we're proud to welcome the Debbie Shaw brand back to Sewing Street this Thursday. Joining us will be Debbie's ambassador, Sheena Benton, who will demonstrate new and exclusive designs by Debbie Shaw and her daughter, Kim Hine. We'll also be launching Debbie's Half Yard Sewing Club, an international subscription website full of sewing projects and more. So make sure you tune in this Thursday to Sewing Street. Hello, I'm Sheena and I'm so excited to be joining the Sewing Street family. Um, I've enjoyed lots of crafts throughout the year, but never more so than when I discovered sewing. Once I'd finished that very first project, that was it for me. I was hooked and it just opened up a whole new world and now I just can't imagine sewing not being in it. I think what I especially love is there's just so many different facets to sewing, from dressmaking, quilting, free motion embroidery, bag making, toy making, homewares, etc. There really is something for everybody to enjoy. There's always something new to learn and to be inspired by, and it brings everybody together. I think it's quite magical how a fabric and a sewing machine can just transport you to a new place for a few hours and get to relax. And at the end, you produce something really unique and special to you that you can keep and enjoy or you can give to others. I'm really looking forward to sharing that passion with you all and hopefully have a few giggles along the way. I look forward to um, seeing you very soon on Sewing Street. Take care. Bye-bye. Shopping with Sewing Street couldn't be easier. You can shop via our website at www.sewingstreet.com where you can watch our live shows and see all the products from that day. We also have a huge amount of products on our website from your sewing room essentials to fabrics, sewing machines and much more. You can download and shop on the go with our Sewing Street app. Simply head over to your app store and search Sewing Street. Alternatively, you can contact our UK-based call centre 24 hours a day on 0800 001 4433. Shopping made easy at Sewing Street. Never miss a show by watching on the go with the Sewing Street app. Head over to your app store now and search Sewing Street and simply download to your smartphone or tablet. You can watch the shows live and see your favourite presenters and guests. Click on the Today button to shop all of the products that are featured in today's show. Want to know what's hot? Then click here to see today's bestsellers and highlights. Have you missed a show or want to watch one back? Then click the schedule button and you can go back seven days to watch and shop and you can also see what's coming up over the next seven days. Want to say hello or ask a question to our guests? Then send a message to the studio. You can also keep in touch with all the latest news, events, product launches and much more by clicking here for our social media pages. Never miss a show by watching on the go with Sewing Street. Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletter. Go to sewingstreet.com and scroll down to the bottom of the homepage. Type in your email address and click the envelope. That's it. You'll never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. Not only is Sewing Street live from 8am till 1pm on Sky 670, Freeview Channel 73, YouTube and the Sewing Street app. Now, Virgin subscribers can watch on Channel 754, which means there are more ways to watch your way with Sewing Street. Did you know at Sewing Street that on various products we offer split pay? That means on certain items, you can spread the cost over two, three, four, or sometimes even five interest-free monthly payments. Just pay the first instalment when you purchase and you're away. So shop your way with Split Pay. Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletter. Go to sewingstreet.com and scroll down to the bottom of the homepage. Type in your email address and click the envelope. That's it you'll never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again.
And we'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. Bye. Did you know that you can continue shopping 24 hours a day, seven days a week, even after we finish broadcasting live? Just head over to www.sewingstreet.com for thousands of sewing supplies available from top brands. You still pay only one PMP with split pay available on certain items and an easy checkout service too. Plus, you can get expert advice and tips from our Sewing Street hub and UK customer support is available 24-7. So head over to sewingstreet.com and continue your sewing journey. Did you know that we can deliver to over 20 different countries worldwide, spanning four continents from the UK to Australia? Check out our website for the list of countries and delivery costs. Sewing Street, stitching the world together. Every day, our experts will bring you a wealth of knowledge. They'll take you through the steps of making projects and we feature fabulous tips along the way. Whether you're new to sewing or a seasoned pro, you're sure to learn something new. We're live every day from 8 a.m. till 1 p.m. And you can also watch back all of the demonstrations featured on the show on our YouTube channel. One word, bunting. <laughs> Can't go wrong with it, can you? Hayley West's here. Hiya. You do look, you do look... Um, What's the Wait for I'm it. For? No. You're pausing a bit too long there, John. No, 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 no. It's, I'm trying to think of the right word because it could come out wrong. <laughs> Not you from you, very Shirley. seductive. Oh, I say. That you look very like, kind of like... I'll take that. ...loved up, kind of seductive. It's because you've been to a wedding, isn't it? Been to a wedding. wedding. We've had a lovely weekend. Gorgeous food, fabulous weather. Oh. What's not to love about life? Exactly. You'd, I'd be on my knees, tiredness. <laughs> anyway, 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 let's do some bunting panels. So what I'm going to do is I'm doing the same as I did last hour. I'm going to, last Hayley's I'm going to show you everything that's for sale, right? And then we'll just have a pure sewing demonstration after that. So, first of all, with bunting, we have got this... Go now, I, th I know some of you will be confused about this, because I was when I first saw these. I was like, she's done the wrong shape. She's got the letters going the wrong way and everything like that. Look, who, who does square bunting? I mean, who does square bunting? Hayley West does square bunting. <laughs> so what you've got in here is you've got all your squares, plus you've got a piece of fabric for your ribbon, and you've got instructions on there, and you've got a QR code. What is not to love for $14.99? And you, you know what this one would be good for, is if you do sewing retreats mm, and things like that, just yeah. to decorate the room and everything, these would be lovely, wouldn't they? Do what, what? Don't open the bags. Don't open the bags, Joe. Don't open the bags, Joe. Right, Joe. Carnival. What, a sewing carnival? No, we have a, a summer fete. No, because I host our summer fete. Right, Joe, so that's 14 99 We'll show you how to make it in a minute. That's the hexes. Then we've also got the... Now, this is Ollie's favourite. This is like the vintage uh, Union Jack or Union flag. Lovely. I love the way we've got dots and ginghams and flowers and haven't just stayed with your normal traditional red, white, and blue or anything. It's lovely, isn't it? Gorgeous. Then we've got the, uh, oh, now, we had a bag, a, a grab-and-go bag, didn't we, made of this? We earlier? did. Oh, I've got it somewhere. Well, it's partly, partly made. Partly <laughs> made. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Oh, yes, yeah, so look, so we didn't have this on today, but you've done that one in the past. Yeah, people will have that one there in the past. There might be some of those on, on the website. Here's the bag we made in the hour earlier. We, Hayley, made in the hour earlier. They're all we. But now you can have bunting to match. Yeah, there you go. Gorgeous. How lovely. And don't panic that she think, oh, she's put the fabric on the wrong way. She's got the fabric going <laughs> in the wrong way. It'll all come true. It'll all sh we'll show you how it works in a minute. <clears throat> and then last but not least, my favourite one. This, for some reason, this one takes me back to my childhood. Aww. These kind of beautiful balloons overlapping. Balloon. And look. I love the colours on there. And then you've got the pale blue to make the ribbon out of and your instructions on there, 14 99 14 99 
They're lovely. I don't know what it is about those balloons that's making me, you know, you see something sometimes, you automatically yeah, back it takes them. like a four-year-old and ter terribly excited. My mum sent me to a party as Noddy once when I was little. What were you like as a four-year-old? Well, I don't really know, but all I know is I couldn't tie my laces and the shoes oh. had great big long ribbons in them. And I, I just remember tucking them into my socks to stop them falling it's over. It's very trendy now to do well, that. No, no, it? right up long socks. Right oh, up I think. The, right maybe maybe top, not. You know? <laughs> um, I think... Thinking back, I think I was a bit at home. I was very, I, I was very Gemini, middle yeah. child. At home, I was monosyllabic, didn't speak, and then at school, I was like this sort of thing. Oh, so very, very, very different. <laughs> right. So they're the buntings. They're the buntings. We've also got this back now. You didn't know we were doing this, Dave, did you? I, di I didn't realise there, there was probably a conversation, and you know what I'm like. Popped Lay me in. Head. Lay me in. I think Lay we've got... in. everyone else does. <laughs> We're right, now we had the last time I was on with you, we yeah, had Yeah, somebody right? sent a picture in, so we'll show you that. Yeah, is it Julie Vaughan sent it in? Oh, wasn't Julie Vaughan? Carol sent it in. Instead. So Julie Vaughan was watching earlier, and I, I went up, you said, we, I said, I knew she'd put a picture of hers oh, on I Facebook. See. I said, send the picture in, send the picture in. Someone else sent it in. Because you might not think, what on earth's that for? Is the picture ready? Here you go. There it is. So what it is, is you make like a pin cushion, mm -hmm. but it's got all the different sizes of needles in. Three needles, three machine needles, right? Oh, you said hand sewing. Are they all hand sewing or just machine needles? Just machine needles. Just machine needles. One, yeah. The size of the needle, what you use them for, whether they're universal, but, uh, uh, jersey, stretch, denim or leather. And then round the other side, round the outside, there's all uh, little tips, little tips and tricks. And it's the simplest thing to make, isn't really it? Quick, really, really quick. Really, really simple. Thank you, Carol, for sending that in. Okay, and that's only nine ninety nine. Now, what date did we do that on, please? The first time, twentieth of February. Tw yeah, twenty February. Yeah, twenty February. We'll be able to go back week. and watch that. Yeah. yeah. Do you see it back? Because we actually made it on that day, didn't we? Because yeah. you follow the numbers, don't it's, you? Yeah, it's literally stitch, stitch, dot to dot stitching. Yep. Right. The Dave Bradford jacket, <laughs> aka. <laughs> right now, it is a go to size. I haven't seen it as a pattern. This is brilliant. Does it come in this? Yeah. Oh, I say, that's a bit posh. Uh, $19.99. So inside here, oh my word, you get so much. Oh, I can open this, can I? So there's the Tulula jacket. Uh, features three variations of style advanced beginner, sizes 6 to 24 UK sizes. And there it is drawn up there and everything. Uh, all about your body measurement, everything you'd expect. For, but then look at all these pattern pieces. All written, all drawn on, uh, not drawn, printed on really good quality mm -hmm. paper. Yeah. 1999. Now, I need to warn you, hundreds and hundreds of these have sold. Some have even gone this morning just on pre-order without us even talking about. It. Oh, another one's just gone now. Right? 1999. Haley's wearing it, modelling beautifully. Gorgeous, right? So it's the Tallulah jacket. I'm um, literally uh, another one's just gone, right? <laughs> They've gone in there, haven't they, Haley? They've they gone. have. Um, it's it's fabulous how well it received. Yeah. It's been. People have been loving them too. Because yeah. I know we chatted about it here mm -hmm. bef before. Yes. And then when I came to your house, we went into we your did, shed, yeah. <laughs> and you had rolls of this fabric. <laughs> and going, oh, John, this is my Tallulah, and it was all not pie in the sky, but it was like I'm it's, just working uh, on it's it. It's taken quite a while to get there, and and now it's just rocketed. Oh no, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And you get all of that in there. It's fantastic. So all the pattern pieces for all the different sizes are all in there. That's it. All no the tracing. It's none of these where it's on one side and you've got to trace it before you cut it out. It's yeah. all literally there. And there's several pieces for a different, various different reasons, which I'll tell you about later. Okay, lovely. So there you go. We're not doing a demo on that. What day was the first day that one was demoed, please? Another one's just gone. Uh, 20th of March, that one. 20th of March. Now, if you're thinking about the fabrics you might quite like for this, we have got, now, have I got the one you're wearing? I don't think no, I the blue that. sold out. And we haven't been able to get any more of that blue. Yeah. Okay, so let's just do... The other fabrics, first of all. So let me do this one first, which is your ECL 56. I've not seen all the variations of these, but I'm liking them. Oh, because some of it was in your garage. Well, oh, that's not your garage, it. in your storeroom. <laughs> it's gone from a shed to a... It's a cabin, darling. Oh, is it a cabin? <laughs> just a mess, I just remember. <laughs> it was, it's even worse now. So, yeah. 
And it was a horrible day, wasn't it? There it was wasn't a bit nice. Came on, it was no. raining outside. Yeah. Was, oh, I've got to go outside. <laughs> uh, anyway, this is yeah. Just the thing is, you have to use this just for the shacket. No. This is just beautiful, beautiful fabric, isn't it? Well, so festival it's holly season. cotton. Festival season. You yeah, can be exactly. Making trousers or anything. Recycled ethnic jacquard multi prints. Lovely. So I'm thinking. Harem pants, yeah. Uh, wide leg pants, waistcoats, tote what? bags. Beautiful, isn't it? So this one here is just called your multi pink. And if I remember rightly, it's sixty wide. Oh, I was about to say how wide. It's is extra it? wide. It is well, not extra wide, but it's yeah, wide yeah, fabric. But, well, yeah, it's definitely sixty wide. Look, and it's only six fifty. Only six pound fifty. That's lovely, isn't it? Gorgeous, right? So that's that one. Let me not take too much of your time up. Then I've got it in the navy blue. Beautiful. Uh, can what's the Shackleton? Do you mean the shacket? Do you mean the shacket? Uh, can I still make the shacket if I haven't got the green machine? Yes, yeah, you can put buttonholes in. Yeah. I, I, I'm just a bit of a lazy sewer. I don't do buttonholes. I, I like poppers, so, yeah, I use the green machine. Variation. But also, you don't always have to have the green machine. You can, you can buy just a packet of oh, yeah, studs and yeah. just do it with a hammer. Mm -hmm. We have got the green machine on today, though, on the website, if you want to. We haven't got a demo of it, but we had the demo with Dave the other day. Um, the white one? I think Stuart went for this one, if I remember right. Yeah. Uh, multi ecru, that one's called. Multi ecru. Then I've got this lovely one here. Ooh. Have you not seen this one? No. Well, I like that. That's nice, isn't it? Very Mexican feel. Yeah, isn't mm. it? Uh, multi dark, that one's called. Now, the pink one. We've, we've got the pink one in twice. Which, which uh, code should we use? Right, okay, here we go. I'm only going to show you one of them because it's the same fabric twice. And when they, if this sells out, I'll move to the other one. Here's the pink one. Now, did you make a shack attack of that? I did. There's actually a YouTube um, tutorial with the, the QR code on the pattern where I've actually used that one. Kind of done like a, a, a kind of, oh, like a designer version, yeah. utilising that. Lovely. But, uh, yeah, with some kind of like apertures where it pokes, you can see it through the denim. This bit here is lovely because it looks like it's um, like got hand embroidery down it's a panel. It's that woven lovely. thing yeah. though, isn't it? It's beautiful. Beautiful. beautiful now, uh, the denim's definitely didn't arrive then from the warehouse. Okay, we've also got the denim. I'm not going to go through it now. You've got different denims on, on the website. This one's the medium, if that's any help. So, Medi yeah. so they're all eight ounce. They're all eight ounce. That's a med so that's the medium colour. Oh, we've only got dark and light today. The medium sold out because okay. of your blooming jacket. <laughs> Sorry. Right. Okay, right. Now, very quickly, we've got mocker block, which we can talk about later. I just want to get everything through the graphics. There you go, 19.99. I'll, we'll, we'll get Hayley to explain that. Yeah, there's something. a little kind of 10-second VT, which Ollie might be able to find, that basically sums it up in, oh, in Ollie. 10 seconds. Oh, Ollie. That's so, yeah. job for today. Then we've got dies. Now, these will fit most... What's it called? Well, I can't remember. Well, is it the electronic or me mechanical die? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so like yeah. a Gemini, like the Sizzix, like that's all those it, yeah, things. yeah, yeah. So, okay, yeah. so I've got uh, three by one and a half inch rectangles first. Uh, it's 463. These correspond with the mocker block, but you don't have to have these in order to use the mocker yeah. block. Yeah. I'll just get these through, then we can talk about them all afterwards. I don't have to take up Haley's sewing time later. Then we've got uh, 462, which are three inch quarter triangles. Lovely. Then we've got three inch squares, which is 431. Then we've got 405, which is your three quarter, no, three inch quarter squares. Why are they curved at the edge? Um, because of lining up the pieces. I found it easier to line up the curve rather than a point. Ah. Um, and when they were trialed, everybody else said that. Brilliant. <laughs> so, yeah. 
Uh, right, this one is your half triangles, three inch half triangles at four, six, five. And last but not least, I've got three by one inch rectangles, four, nine, seven. I just remembered at one point there was a bundle of them. I think Hayley Marshall said put a, bu a bundle together. I don't know whether it's still Was it on her show? Bundle. Yeah. Yeah, you see, she does that when she comes into the Yeah, you see. Uh, very quickly, I've got pokey tools. Now, we're always talking about pokey tools, aren't we? And we never bring them in. Like Sandra Santangela is a pokey tool, but we never have yeah. them here. Yeah. So, Useful. pokey tool, three ninety nine. you get two of them there. Are they definitely pink? Yes. Yeah, yeah. definitely pink. Three nine ten, And then we've also got your um, thread clips here. What are these? So, these are for you to keep your bobbin and your reel together. So um, you literally just put the, the two little legs, if you were, through the, the centrepiece of your bobbin and also the centrepiece of your spool of thread and just keeps keep them, together. them together. Brilliant. Three nine nine. Uh, nice little... Now, now I know we shouldn't keep talking about Christmas because we haven't had our summer holidays yet, but things like this are brilliant for secret Santas or little mm -hmm. gift stocking ideas, um, you know, kind of little ideas for presents, stocking presents, aren't they, for people at Christmas and things. And just start stack, stacking away now, then it doesn't make Christmas so financially frightening does it very true right shall we make some bunting please we will do that certainly now we've got the happy birthday bunting because i mean that's a perfect occasion isn't it to get the bunting out so um this one um is one that and i like the idea it came about because i love bunting but i don't like buying cheap and nasty bunting that you can only use once um often made out of plastic i wanted something that i could literally bring out for everybody's birthday all year round so you have got your squares which we'll be making our bunting flags into but as you saw from the images they do become your traditional kind of pennant um, pennant shape Yep. So the panel that you've got, you've got everything that you need. I'm just going to hold it up so as you can see, because it's probably easier if I hold it up. Yep. So you've got the full lettering and you've also got some of the squares that are going to be the kind of the blank spaces. And you've also got a big blue rectangle, which will help you create your binding to make your ribbon to put everything together. Also down in the bottom corner, you've got the full instructions and a QR code. So if you do want to go and watch a tutorial, you can do. But honestly, this is the simplest way of making buns and I've never gone back to any of the other um, ways once I learned about this method. Um, and as a novice sewer, I know lots of novice sewers that have watched the channel, because we do, don't we, as crafters, we watch yeah. all sorts. Um, and they've given it a go and been absolutely enthralled. We first bought it at Christmas last year for Christmas bunting, and we will be bringing more. So everything is laid out that if you wanted to, you could cut it with a rotary cutter um, and a cut in straight lines. But I just need the, the H, because I've got everything else cut out at the moment. A pair of scissors you can do it with as well don't be too worried about if you kind of meander from the main line it doesn't matter we're not talking about quilting where you've got to have perfection um, all we're doing is creating these little um, squares that we will use for our right flags. quick question are the bunting photos in your house they're not. Oh, I wish it was my house. No, because Fiona goodness. said, oh, your home looks very glamorous. Oh, no, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, because of the, the kind of expanse, you're looking at about two metres worth of bunting with these. Um, I hadn't really got anywhere at home where I could hang it and, and give it justice. So we were away at the wedding. I know I keep mentioning it, sorry. Uh -huh. uh, and we were in a very grand house that we were all staying at. So I took advantage of the grand. Did took it, it with you. A, a mini photo shoot before we got into the realms of the party. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Angela says, my mum saw the Mocker Block demo last year and bought it me ready for my Christmas present. She was very organised. Um, oh, and a smiley face. Oh, bless. Love it. Right, I'm just going to move that out of the way because we're not going to use any more of that in um, the demo. So I've got my letter H. Yeah. So all I'm going to do with this is literally start putting my flags together. I've got all the other letters put together as well. So all you need to do is have your letter. So it's up to you, whatever feels most comfortable. But basically, this bottom line here is going to join up with that line there. So it's going to go like so. Um, so if you imagine the letter is going to be the right way up when we're stitching down here. So all you do is you take your flags and you will put them in that same formation. Um, so I've already done the letter A. So I've got um, a blank one there that could go at the beginning, but we can't worry about that. Then my P, because I've got H-A-P-P-Y, as the song goes, if anybody remembers that song. Uh -huh. <laughs> People of a certain age will. Um, so I'm not going to do it with all of the letters, but we'll put half a dozen or so together. So we've got the word happy there. 
and then I'll take one of the, the blank ones as well. And again, when you're working with the blank ones, just make sure that you have got the balloons the right way up when you're doing that fold. So it's almost like you're doing little kind of sandwich triangles. Mm -hmm. Then you're going to take them to your machine. Now, I'm using the Onyx 15. You only need a straight stitch. That's all that you need with your machine in order to actually create with these. And we're going to do a little seam, um, about half a, a centimetre in from the raw edge. I'm just going to stitch down with a straight stitch. And we're going to do a little bit of chain piecing. So you cut all your flags, you'd fold them into your triangles, and then basically just stitch down that edge. Go from the flat edge down to the point, because that's often the best way to feed it into your machine, and just let it run. So there's a few stitches in between. Then come in with the flat edge that you've got of your next piece, offer it up to the machine, and then just keep sewing. So you do that for whichever bunting set you've gone for. I tend to try and do anything that's got letters, I try to do it in order. But to be honest, it, it doesn't really matter. You, you put them into order when you're getting ready to put them onto your binding tape anyway. So we'll just carry on with happy. I've just got a couple more letters to do. Offering it up and off we go again. And then the last one being here. There you go. And when you're done, you just separate them up, snip them so you've got them into separate pieces. This is often when they kind of go out of sync. Yeah. Um, but it doesn't really matter because we're going to check before we put them onto the tape anyway. So then you need a pressing mat. Put my glasses on and out of the way. Oh, They're, on found my head. Them. They're on my head. <laughs> so if I lose them again, <laughs> tell me where they are. So. We've got the, the flags. Now what I do is I ch just trim off the kind of the peak, that little tiny bit that you've got at the bottom there. Um, so I think just, you need the iron, which, do you just, use the iron? I've got the iron down. Oh, oh no, no, you haven't, it's, it's over here. I'll bring it round. Okay, thank you, darling. Um, so you're just trimming off those little bits there and it just means there's less bulk, less bulk when it comes to the pointy bits of your flag. So make sure, as we always say, don't cut through your threads. Thank you. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah then they're pretty good to go. So there we go. So then what you're going to do is you're going to turn them inside out. Now what I tend to do is use my um, quilting ruler because you've got the right kind of shape on there. So turn them inside out. If you've got a pokey tool, then you can put that, not a pokey tool, knitting pin or something like that, you can put that in there. But what I tend to do is I do use my um, quilting ruler because you've got that kind of bias cut it does get right into the nitty gritty and it also helps when it comes to pressing them because being made of acrylic you can actually put the iron on them um, when you've got fabric on top of them just for a, a short moment yeah it, it doesn't hurt so basically i'll put the flag on like so then i twist it round so i've got um, my nice flag shape yeah and then hopefully the iron's warm enough that ruler is part of the ruler set from the uh, nine o'clock i haven't got it here Oh, you're not going to set. Have well, you got yours there? There you go. Oops. Basically three rulers in one. I have got a spare ruler somewhere um, as well. I bought two of those. Got it down here. I might be lying. No, I've got the ruler. No, no, don't yeah. worry. We, we can see when well, you get the ruler that you're using. Yeah, that's it. pointy yeah. ruler. And you get this one here, which is a patchmaker square. And you get the binding square as well. All for 19 99 There you, you go. We'll be using the binding one in a little while to the okay, binding brilliant. for the ribbon. So you just work your way through. So just poke those those through to get your tip on each one of those. And then, as I say, swizzle it round, give it a press, and then you've got your, your triangles as you work your way through. So a little press like so, then pull it out the way. Press them flat. And then what you're going to do with each one of them, once you've created them, is take the triangle. Now, if you want to, you can cut the triangle off. I don't tend to. What I do is I just pop it inside, make a little po um, almost pocket. So I've got a nice straight edge there, like so. And then just give it another little press. So. There you go. And that becomes your little pennant flag. So that that's easy. why... They're on the wonk. Yes. <laughs> if you were. Yeah, but not anymore. <laughs> not anymore. Not anymore. So it's just carry on and do those. And uh, as I, said, I know loads of people have, have gone for them in the past. And I just love bunting. 
Do you think it makes an occasion, doesn't it? And mm. whichever you go for, um, you, you're setting the scene straight away. And you've automatically got to back to them as well, because if yes. you make normal bunting, you've got to think, am I just going to do them singly? So you see yeah. the back of the fabric, or have I got to bag it out? You haven't got to bag anything out on this. And really. what I tended to find as well, when they were just the single um, layers, it, it was literally a case of that the wind would take hold of them. These are a little bit more weighted, yeah. so they kind of sit better um, when you hang them out. So, uh, yeah. And you just get into a little production line, really. I think I've only got a couple more to do. So there we go. Okay, turn them through. Oops. Always seems longer when you're doing it on telly. Yeah. You? <laughs> there we go. Give it a little press. That's all. Ignore him. <laughs> He's got a mouthful of uh, <laughs> So there we go. Now, that's the blank one, because some of the blank ones, obviously, if you've got um, two words like happy and birthday, you need a space in the middle. I think on this set, you've got three spaces. So um, I tend to put, I think I put one at each end and then one between the two words. So we always give you the same quantity of flags. Obviously, if you wanted to, you could do a bit of applique. So if you've got somebody's special birthday, you could applique their numbers on there. But I haven't included numbers on them as like 18th, 21st or whatever, um, because you could only use it for one year then. Oh, yeah, exactly. And also, you'd have to add an awful lot to the panel if you've got to do all the numbers. Well, so. yeah, exactly. Yeah. And half of them you wouldn't use. No. I have got something in the pipeline for you to create your own applique bunting, but it oh. wasn't quite ready for this show. Okay. So we might see that in the future if you want to see that. So there we go. <laughs> that no, oh, here she goes again. She goes again. <laughs> right, so now I've got my H A P P Y. I've lost my A somewhere. There we go. H A P P Y, and I've got my space as well. So the next thing that we need to do is concentrate on the bunting. So that's what we're going to do. And on your panel, you've got a piece of fabric. It's about eight inches wide. So cut it into two-inch strips like so and this is going to become our bunting so the first thing sorry our bunting tape first thing that we need to do is to join it together so the way that we do that let me just move this out of the way oh ollie viv's just had the same idea as you could you put a little weight in the bottom to hold them down if it's windy you could do yeah it's a good idea yeah Fill them i don't with know sand. what would you use <laughs> with this hand <laughs> I suppose you could put like a, I don't know, a button or a curtain weight or yeah, something it needs like to that. Be something yeah. tiny. Had to be a lot. <coughs> something tiny like that. That's a good tip. I like that idea. I might steal that idea. Oh. So Get now. Fifty percent, Viv. <laughs> so all I'm going to do now is I'm going to work um, on the the mitre edge. Now the mitre is when you actually cross over your binding tape. We're going to go diagonally, 45 degrees. You could, if you wanted to, remember you've got your 45 degree on your ruler. If you wanted to, you could lay that on very versatile. And draw a line, isn't it? Um, but as time goes on, you won't bother with that. Yeah. Um, but all I'm going to do is just take that across like so. Again, the bunting is very forgiving, so. If it's not all lined up perfectly, you're going to fold in the edges afterwards. So, and you might want to just use your own bunting tape. You might yeah, have or do, yeah, exactly. You might have something else that you're wanting to use already um, prepared. You can save this for something else. It's a reasonable um, amount of fabric. So again, I'm just going to run that under there like so. Just make sure that when you're doing this, you've got your um, mitre all going in the same direction. Yeah. Well, actually, it didn't really matter when I think about it. It didn't matter as long no. as it's joined up. But I, I try to get in the habit of doing my mitres exactly the same. Yes. Because then you don't have them going wrong. Because, yeah, if you do it wrong, it suddenly goes off in that direction, yes, exactly. doesn't it? So, yeah. Rather than straight across. Yeah. So, again, last piece, and then we'll start making our bunting using our bunting... Oops, square. Oh. So there we go. Off we go again. Just on the diagonal, like so. Quick question: Could Ooh. I use my William Morris, William Morris fabrics for the shacket pattern with plain fabrics? 
Um, you, yeah, you can just use completely the same fabric throughout if you wanted to. I've got um, one in progress, which I still haven't finished. So yeah, all you do is rather than doing the panels um, in your contrast like your denim, just do all of the pieces. It works out about two and a half metres worth of fabric. Would it be heavy enough though, just made in straightforward quilt? Because it's not lined, is it, is it lined? It's not, li it's not lined. It so, would, it'd be like a shirt. It would be a shirt more yeah. than more than a sh Wait, yeah. jacket, jacket. Uh, so you could use it, but it would be more like a shirt. Yeah. Can I ask if half a metre of the pattern fabric is enough to go with the denim to make Haley style of the jacket? Hope that makes sense. It does, Alicia. So the jacket you're wearing, how much denim and how uh, much it needs, um, if you On the pattern pieces, it refers to, and I think it's a metre and a half that you need. Um, it depends on your fabric, to be, to be honest. The reason I've said a metre and a half is because this fabric has got a vertical stripe, so I wanted it to go from the top down to the bottom. And some of the panel pieces are shorter, um, sorry, are longer than a half metre. So uh, you've right. got to be able to, like on the back there, you've got to accommodate for the, yeah. the kind of the, the drop. Um, so that's why you do need more. But if you don't mind it going almost like a patchwork effect, mm. then you could use less fabric. It's, it's purely because of the direction of the fabric, really. So, sorry, in theory, you need one and a half of each fabric. That's it, yeah. yeah. But if you're doing it all in one fabric, you can save a little bit of fabric because of the kind of positioning of the yeah. pieces. Because so. you're only using the one, one. So you made it all out of denim. Yes. You don't need probably just the, the two and a half yeah meters, yeah but because yeah. there's the contrast one and a do you say one and a half of each one and a half of each yeah. that's taking you up to the largest size i think the the smaller sizes don't take the full one and a half but when you're looking at the the cuts that we do here at sewing street yeah yeah, yeah, yeah of course you're yeah. rounding it up anyway it's something like um two and a quarter or something i can't remember exactly but yeah Two and a half is the... Uh, but then if you've got a bit left over, you could maybe do your pocket flaps out of the contrast. Exactly. Or collar out of yeah. the contrast. You could mix and match it. And it's entirely up to you. Some people who've been sending me pictures of them um, haven't actually put pockets on at all. Oh, just Fantastic. got the yoke and that's yeah, it? Yeah, that's it, yeah. So if the idea is that you design it in the way that you want. Um, and there are several pattern pieces in there that have got a grid-like formation on them. And that's because um, if you're wanting to turn it into almost like a quilted style, where you, when I say quilted, more of a pieced um, style yeah. rather than quilted. Okay, how um, many of those are in, are in baskets? Okay, there are seven left now once you've all checked out. And that's it for now. I know, I told you. Seven left. Once you've all checked out, there are seven left. Wow. Right? Uh, I, was gonna, I was gonna ask a quick question. The seams inside, I'm going on to the shacket, sorry, but yeah, the seams inside the shacket, are they just overlocked? Um, no, no, because it's made inside out. Let me go have a look. Oh, wow. See, I've not done, it. I've not done one of these shows. So you- Oh, so you've got, oh, wow. I see. Beautiful. I was just thinking, you've got some overlock seams in there. You could actually, I was thinking about you because you've got an overlock with you today. Oh, yeah, sure, yeah. The, the certain parts of it, like the inside of the sleeve. Oh, yeah. You would overlock this is the all sleeve. Sorry, so I do you do this burrito? Um, yes. Yeah. yeah. So you've got your yoke, is all enclosed there. But your side seam down here, I just overlock it together. Well, oh, you've got lovely perfume on today. Oh, thank um, you. <laughs> I'm not, we had a snog already this morning. I didn't smell it first. It's a, it's a spritz since we've been back in. Um, but you've got, we've got the overlock, haven't we? The, um... We have, Husqvarna yeah. Overlocker. Oh, I love that today. machine. So you could just run the graphics with that, then you can get your Husqvarna Overlocker as well while you're at it. Are you all right leaving this off for a minute? Or yeah, yeah not a problem. I just was a bit cold when I came in, actually, but I'm warmed up a bit now. I'm all right. The aircon in here makes its own mind. Yeah. Like... And of course, I'm that certain time in life where I have my own central heating system. Oh. Mm -hmm. Which suddenly goes to a boost. Yeah. <laughs> the owner said you can make a contrasting bag out of the surplus fabric. You could indeed. Yeah. Coordinating, not contrast. Yeah. There's the overlocker, £399, three way split pay. You set, oh, and you get free Madeira Aerolock overthread, 14 and a half thousand metres of it, worth £49. That's a brilliant deal. Brilliant deal. There it is. It's the picture in there. Look, the black and white ones there. And also, as well, the front opens up completely, like 180 open. Yeah. So you've got access all areas when it comes to threading your loopers as well, which is what I love about this machine. There you go. Just thought we'd throw that in for you there. Oh, I need to tell you, there's only two of those in stock. Yeah. There's only two of them in stock at the moment. So if you want that, 
Check out, check out, check out. There's only two of those left now. I mean, we're not. I'm not saying we'll never get any more because well, we know a man who does Husqvarna. Don't oh, we? I do know a man who sells Husqvarna <laughs> machines. Yeah, and it was literally one of those. I said, oh, if you want me to demonstrate it, we can. And it's one of those like, well, by the time you demonstrate it, yeah. it'll have gone. Because as soon, whenever we bring it on air and we just open the front up, people yeah. buy it because it's got access to exactly. all areas. It's exactly. so easy to thread. So there are only two of those left if you did want that today. Lovely. So, bunting. We've got to the binding stage now. So, I've stitched all of my pieces together. I've trimmed the seams and I've um, pressed them open so they're nice and flat. And that's where I start using the binding square. So, the binding square um, has got all of the kind of instructions on it, which makes it nice and easy. Um, so, uh, yeah, you don't have to think like how, how much do I need to cut it and finding an instruction sheet because I'm rubbish at keeping instructions. So, it's literally one of those that uh, it's already on there. Okay, done. So now I'm going to take my um, binding and all I'm going to do is fold, just to get it started, fold the two raw edges together and give it a little bit of a press. Now, quite often I will use fork pins um, to make my, bi uh, my binding. I've forgotten to bring them with me and also it's one of those situations that I forgot to mention it might be an idea to put them on the show but if you have got fork pins, brilliant. I know we do so. I think it's the oh no, we had one. them We had them yeah. uh, the day before yesterday. They were on our yeah. day before yesterday, the fork pins, yeah. But if you haven't got them, it's not the end of the world but it does make life a little bit easier because it secures your fabric easier on your, your mat. So I've cut my um, strip to two inches wide so I'm actually going to make the one inch finished width. So I'm going to feed the, that first First part that I've pressed up and then back down again. I remember that that little uh, what's it called binding square is included in the set of three rulers That's that it. we showed earlier. Uh, we're just leaving this here for a minute because five people have got it in their baskets. Oh gosh. Long. Wow, okay. Um, we might need to do another show with that then yeah, <laughs> at some <yeah>. point. <laughs> so um, I'm just going to pin and I'm just going to, I don't know if you can see, sorry, the iron's just on the edge there. Yeah, I'm just going to use two straight pins. So it might wibble, wobble a little bit, um, but it won't be the end of the world. So you can see now it's threaded up onto the binding thread. Now what I tend to do is I take my index finger and I make a little pocket like so. And then you can actually get it started just with that kind of kinetic heat when you move um, square along. Kinetic heat. Can you make that up? No! <gasps> I'm offended! <laughs> <laughs> it's Kinetic movement! Heat. Kinetic's movement, isn't it? I have to use the right word. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, there you go. So, a bit like finger pressing, I suppose. Yeah, right. Let you go. Um, so, uh, now, now I'm going to put my iron on there. Now, this is made of acrylic. So, what that means is I can then just slide it along. Slide it along like so. Now, as I'm sliding it, I'm lining up that centre line that you've got as a marker and I'm keeping that where the raw fabrics join together. And then all I'm doing is I'm running that along and I'm just kind of getting the fabric ready with my left hand because I am right-handed. So your most dominant hand um, you would use to push the iron along and your less dominant hand is the one that you make your little finger pocket with. So there we go. Move that over like so. Put the pins in um, again and then just get them positioned. Sorry, I'm wiggling the, uh, the mat around. Again, just doing that, getting it started, and then off we go again. So you literally will just continue doing that. When you get, come to the seam where you've joined your mitered edges together, then you might have a little bit of a, a lumpy, bumpy bit, but it should slide over that. Whoops. Yep. See, that's why the fork pins are good, because these ones, they kind of wiggle a little bit. Yeah. So get that in there, and then just literally run that across and keep those raw edges together as you go. So I'm going to continue with that. I might not do the full length of it because we've only got a few of the letters, haven't we? So um, I haven't got them all stitched together. So we should have enough bunting there to, to keep us going. So once you've finished your bunting, you remove your binding square, which usually it would come off the other end because you've done the full run, um, run of it. And then what you do is you press it. Now you can just press it by hand if you want to. It's got a sturdiness to it now, so you don't need to get your fingers anywhere near it. Just like so. And you press that like so. And then just move it along. And this is just getting it ready for you to insert your bunting flags. Who asked for that, Ben? Wendy, here it is. LZUU87. That's the birthday bunting there. There it is. What did I say? Oh, LZUU87. 
And you end up with, a, it's about two metres worth of, fat, of bunting. So if you want a longer run, then obviously you can get a couple of sets and stitch them together yeah. and make it longer. But, but yeah, two, two metres is kind of big enough for the average home, I would imagine, or the average garden. Right, I'm just going to cut that, um, that bunting off there just to make it a little bit more manageable when we get to the next stage. Right. So you would continue with that until you've done all of your bunting tape and you're ready then to actually insert your flags. So once you've got your flags, you need to find the center point. So I layer them up. So if I'm going to put like a, um, a blank one at the beginning, I would put that on top. And then I've got the spelling. So just make sure that you spelt your word out correctly right the way through to the end. And then I'd have the word birthday. And then what I tend to do is I put them in two different piles. So I'll go one side, then the other, one side, then the other, one side then the other so i know this is my center point now if you've got an odd number of flags that center point might be a flag itself so you find the center of your binding to make sure that everything is balanced and equal and then that would be your center point of where your flags are going to go um. so what i sometimes do is either use a heat erasable pen or i'll just pop a little pin there as a marker just so as i, I know where i'm working to so just just something to eyeball it really and then you decide how much of a gap you want between your letters. So I tend to, to leave maybe something between half an inch and an inch between them. And all I'm doing is I'm popping the flags in where that raw edge is, take it right up to the top, and then use something like a quilt clip or a pin, whatever you have to hand, and then just position them in place. Now, what I tend to do is I will work one side of the bunting rather than going left and right. Because if you do that and suddenly find that the spaces are too big and you've run out of tape, you've got to take everything off. So by doing just one part of it, then I would just oh, so you can get see, to the yeah. end and you know if you've got enough tape there. Because halfway, halfway you've gone from half, yeah, yeah. halfway to the end. So I'm just going to put that little piece there like so. Pop a clip in place and another one there. And then the last one. And again, depending on how big this gap is, is it depends on how much of the tape that you've got left over yeah. um, as well. And some of them, because you, you've kind of less, got less squares than others, you might, have a re, you might have kind of four inches of tape left, which is just enough to make a little loop. Or it might be that you've got more like six inches on the end. So it, it, just, it just varies. So I've done that. I'm quite happy that I've got enough there hanging over at the end so I could make a little loop if I wanted to when I come to stitch that together. And I'm just going to do the ones in the opposite direction. Again, I've got my centre point there. And it also, as well, this gives you the opportunity to check that you've got them in the right order because the last thing that you want to stitch do is stitch them and then suddenly find that you've got some of the letters yeah. out of order when you've got part way through. There we go. So if the people at home knew what we had to put up with in our it's ears. A, it's a miracle that we're able to focus, exactly. isn't it? <laughs> Just as well we're Support. professionals. Uh, Ronnie says, we don't see enough of Hayley sewing. She's very talented. Oh, bless you. Thank you. Oh, oh I do love coming. But there's lots of other people that need to come to the channel as well. So yeah, <laughs> I, I take my turn. <laughs> there we go. Pop that in there. So there we go. So now, obviously, this is very short bunting <laughs> because I've only done half of it. So you go. So you've got happy there. I'm just going to get rid of that pin because I am prone to get myself caught on pins. Mm -hmm. So the next thing to do is we're going to stitch our bunting. And again, just take it to your machine. If you've got a walking foot, you might want to use that. If you don't, just, just go for it. And then all you're going to stitch um, is just probably about a quarter of a, an inch away from the folded edge. It's almost just like top stitching, really. Um, so I'm just going to pop that underneath and then just stitch along that edge. And then pretty much you are there. What you can do sometimes on the bunting, I sometimes use like the triple stitch, you know, that kind of yes, like reinforces yeah, yeah. it. Because if it is going to be some bunting that you're going to be using for many, many years to go, come, you don't want it to start coming apart. But to and, be honest. Yeah, and also you know that as soon as you put bunting up outside, it's going to go. Yes. Wind true. and everything. Yes, yeah. It's sturdy. 
You could use decorative stitch if you wanted to as well. And it might be, I mean, we've included blue um, that you can use, but you might want to use more of a pink or um, we'll pick out any of the colours of yeah, blues, exactly. really. Oops, get that back on track. And it's very forgiving. It's not like it's a quilt where you've got to make sure everything is perfectly lined up. If you, your flags, sometimes the spacing is a little bit larger, then it, you're not going to notice that, to be fair. Which is why it's a nice little kind of beginner's People project. are over at a party and go, oh, Hayley's bunting's a bit wobbly. Then it's not the party we want to be at. Well, they won't be coming to a second party. No, exactly. <laughs> Don't judge me on my bunting. <laughs> <laughs> The whole idea is it's a nice fun project. It's a lovely little machine, this one, I have to say. Yeah. And then just your last little bit. Now, if you wanted to put a loop on, what I would suggest is you go right to the very end of your bunting and then kind of fold it back on itself because you might want to hook it over something. So just make a little loop, whatever size you want, and then just kind of do stitches forwards and back uh -huh. just to secure that in place. Or it could be just a case that you just, you're just tying it to something. It's entirely up to you. But if you want to put a loop in there, you can do. And then just pull your threads, trim them off. Obviously, get a little pair of scissors and do it a little bit neater than I've done. But there you go. Hooray, Squares into triangles. Happy. Told you it was easy. Yep, right, let me just recap the bunting bundles, uh, bunting uh, panels then. So, happy birthday is the first one, the balloons one. So that's this one here, you've just seen Hayley make. Happy birthday with the balloons, with the pale blue trim. You've got your instructions and you've got your QR code there with everything. Uh, $14.99. Isn't it funny how a QR code and go-to video is now the expected thing? Sort of thing. Well, it just makes mean? life easier, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, 14 99 for that panel. Beautiful. Then, next one. There are hexes. There you go. Hexes there. Beautiful. No writing on those. You, can, you could either. Now, remember, if you are going to put letters on them, you need to put the letters on the diagonal. Don't put Love Haley on it and then realise, because they'll all be wonky, you need to put the letters going on a diagonal. That's what I'm working on. Oh? <laughs> That's what I'm working oh, on. Oh, sorry. Oh, no, no, it's not a problem. Oh, OK. It's not a problem. It's just, yeah, you've just got to make sure you get the position. And you can do that yeah, yourself. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, yeah. you automatically think, oh, well, just applique these yes, on, not thinking yeah. you've got that, that technique. No, it's good back. advice, though. Next. This one, which is Ollie's favourite. I don't know why, it reminds me of Dad's army. <laughs> oh, no, don't that. say that. <laughs> but it's got that vintage feel. Well, it's yeah. Vintage, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Cream teas and yeah. stuff like that. Or something you'd see, where every, every episode of Poirot we did, there was always like a fate or a, a garden oh, really? party. <laughs> like, yeah. The set dressers would bring out all the old 1930s uh, bunting and everything. That's that one. And then last but not least, we've got the old sewing room. There we go. Beautiful. They're all of sort of even Stevens at the moment, aren't they? Right, Joe. Now, let's just revisit the shacket because I'm a little bit worried about that now. Dave Bradford. He's got a black one in the dressing room today. Not oh, he's wearing pink earlier. Oh, is he in? Is he in? Yeah. It's a special one. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, perhaps something's happening. I don't know. Uh, right. How many have I got in baskets now? Okay. Six left now. Six left when you've all checked out. Make sure you check out on that, though. Because remember, we sold hundreds, then we sold hundreds. This is another batch. I'm sure we can get more. But oh, at yes. the moment, this is all we've got. <clears throat> yeah, it'll be a little while before we bring them back in, I think. Yes, exactly. People are going to be getting fed up on me with it. <laughs> no, not at all. Uh, right, now let's go to... I didn't mention this earlier, because the box was hidden. The hobby bag. Now, the hobby bag, this is, this is um, an awful lot of pattern in here. This, yeah, there is a lot of pattern, but it is worth it. Now, right. um, I didn't realise this was on the show. I have got mine with me in the dressing room, but right. it's a bag that we've bought, again, 
time and time again people have loved it but we are going to do a dedicated show to this there's a, a full video if you do want to get ahead and have a go with it but yeah there's 13 pages of pattern with this and I did try to make it so we could condense it down a little bit but they, they have to be a specific size there's no getting no no exactly there. exactly yeah. why not get yours now and then when Hayley comes to do a specific mm -hmm. show you've got yours ready so when she said all oh, you does this bit you can check the pattern you can check as you go or start making it go, yeah. go along with her and everything so that was 14.99 that's a lot of pattern yes for 14.99 Right, now, let's talk about the mocker block. Did you find the little film, Ollie? Okay, so do you need to talk over it or is there, is there voice on it? Well, it's only 10, oh, it's it's only only 10, 10 seconds. Hours. So basically, you have a frame that you put together to mimic a block and the pieces you put together, almost like a jigsaw, to design your block. And that gives you everything that you need to know to create your block. Oh, and that's the 11 seconds. Do it again, do it again, do it again. <laughs> but it kind of just explains it. it. Um, so do I get the blue frame? You do get the blue frame. You get some extenders as well. So if you want to turn it into a 16 patch block, you can right. do as well. So I get basically I get in here a frame that I make the square. Then I have all different size squares and rectangles and half square triangles and other quarter square triangles. And I can create my own block you can using indeed. all of these squares. You can. You've also got a wipe clean um, board in there as well, which you can probably see it's called the patch calculator oh this one here so yeah that's the one that once you've designed your block you can use that to make your shopping list of all the pieces that you need how brilliant is that 19.99 make sure oh, look at the time check out check out check out then we've also got the um needle holder the pin cushion needle cushion needle keeper get the right words there's only seven of those left and 15 in baskets so check out check out check out and that um, kind of uses some of the, the um, education that Husqvarna Viking bring with regards to the fabrics. Um, you'll have little icons that will depict whether it's a heavy, a medium, a lightweight. Could be um, a PU leather, it could be leather itself. But it's suggesting the needle that you use and then always somewhere to put the needle after you've used it. Sometimes we only need use that needle, that leather needle for one project and we don't know whether it's been used or not. So this is the way of keeping it ready so you can use it again. Exactly. And finally, um, the um, ruler set which i've only got ended up with one of them you <laughs> get three them. rulers in the set right you get the patch maker square you get the binding frame you do, i've stolen them sorry <laughs> do you want them yes please oh there you go what are you getting fabric out for you just well, I, was gonna, away. I was gonna cut it but i just oh, no, you haven't the got time, time i'm yes. afraid you haven't got time you yeah. didn't go now so look you get all three of these rulers for night we've sold hundreds of these 19.99 so you get the, this one here with the angle on and the inches on. You get this one here, which shows you what size squares you need to cut for half square triangles or quarter square triangles. And you get this one here, as you've just seen, to show you how to make binding. All of those for 19.99. So now you're on Hobby Maker this afternoon. Yeah? I am, yes. Well, the, not the one o'clock shift. No, no, no. I'm starting at, um, at five o'clock this evening. You're going to go home and have a cup of tea. I'm going to go home, put my feet up, have a brew, and then turn Don't fall asleep on the sofa. I know. I set a time. And when are you back on here before? Uh, when before? When are you back on here? Um, not until middle of June, I think. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Right, brilliant. Lovely to see you and anyway. You uh, don't go anywhere. Sam Tobito's up next with a knitted, uh, no, not knitted. <gasps> oh, oh, crochet t shirt. And she's wearing the one that I voted for. Hooray! Uh, thank you, Hayley. We'll see you in four minutes' time. We're proud to welcome the Debbie Shaw brand back to Sewing Street this Thursday. Joining us will be Debbie's ambassador, Sheena Benton, who will demonstrate new and exclusive designs by Debbie Shaw and her daughter, Kim Hine. We'll also be launching Debbie's Half Yard Sewing Club, an international subscription website full of sewing projects and more. So make sure you tune in this Thursday to Sewing Street. Hello, I'm Sheena and I'm so excited to be joining the Sewing Street family. Um, I've enjoyed lots of crafts throughout the year, but never more so than when I discovered sewing. Once I'd finished that very first project, that was it for me. I was hooked and it just opened up a whole new world and now I just can't imagine sewing not being in it. I think what I especially love is there's just so many different facets to sewing, from dressmaking, quilting, free motion embroidery, bag making, toy making, homewares, etc. There really is something for everybody to enjoy. 
There's always something new to learn and to be inspired by, and it brings everybody together. I think it's quite magical how fabric and a sewing machine can just transport you to a new place for a few hours you get to relax and at the end you produce something really unique and special to you that you can keep and enjoy or you can give to others. I'm really looking forward to sharing that passion with you all and hopefully have a few giggles along the way. I look forward to um, seeing you very soon on Sewing Street. Take care. Bye-bye. Shopping with Sewing Street couldn't be easier. You can shop via our website at www.sewingstreet.com where you can watch our live shows and see all the products from that day. We also have a huge amount of products on our website from your sewing room essentials to fabrics, sewing machines and much more. You can download and shop on the go with our Sewing Street app. Simply head over to your app store and search Sewing Street. Alternatively, you can contact our UK-based call centre 24 hours a day on 0800 001 4433. Shopping made easy at Sewing Street. Never miss a show by watching on the go with the Sewing Street app. Head over to your app store now and search Sewing Street and simply download to your smartphone or tablet. You can watch the shows live and see your favourite presenters and guests. Click on the Today button to shop all of the products that are featured in today's show. Want to know what's hot? Then click here to see today's bestsellers and highlights. Have you missed a show or want to watch one back? Then click the Schedule button and you can go back seven days to watch and shop and you can also see what's coming up over the next seven days. Want to say hello or ask a question to our guests? Then send a message to the studio. You can also keep in touch with all the latest news, events, product launches and much more by clicking here for our social media pages. Never miss a show by watching on the go with Sewing Street. Not only is Sewing Street live from 8am till 1pm on Sky 670, Freeview Channel 73, YouTube and the Sewing Street app, now, Virgin subscribers can watch on Channel 754, which means there are more ways to watch your way with Sewing Street. Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street, as well as all the latest news and special offers, by signing up to our email newsletter. Go to sewingstreet.com and scroll down to the bottom of the homepage. Type in your email address and click the envelope. That's it you'll never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. And we'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. Bye. Did you know that you can continue shopping 24 hours a day, seven days a week, even after we've finished broadcasting live? Just head over to www.sewingstreet.com for thousands of sewing supplies available from top brands. You still pay only one PMP with split pay available on certain items and an easy checkout service too. Plus, you can get expert advice and tips from our Sewing Street Hub and UK customer support is available 24-7. So head over to sewingstreet.com and continue your sewing journey. Did you know that we can deliver to over 20 different countries worldwide, spanning four continents from the UK to Australia? Check out our website for the list of countries and delivery costs. Sewing Street, stitching the world together. Not only is Sewing Street live from 8am till 1pm on Sky 670, Freeview Channel 73, YouTube and the Sewing Street app, now, Virgin subscribers can watch on Channel 754, which means there are more ways to watch your way with Sewing Street. Did you know at Sewing Street that on various products we offer split pay? That means on certain items you can spread the cost over two, three, four or sometimes even five interest-free monthly payments. Just pay the first instalment when you purchase and you're away. So shop your way with Split Pay. Every day our experts will bring you a wealth of knowledge. They'll take you through the steps of making projects 
and we feature fabulous tips along the way. Whether you're new to sewing or a seasoned pro, you're sure to learn something new. We're live every day from 8am till 1pm and you can also watch back all of the demonstrations featured on the show on our YouTube channel. Now, I've not seen her for ages and ages, but look which one won. It was this one by a mile. Oh, was it? Yeah, yeah. so yeah, very Because I voted for that one. Yeah. So if you don't know what we're talking about, on Sam's Facebook, was it Facebook or Instagram? Everything, Facebook oh, and everything, Instagram. Right? Yeah. And she showed us the four different colorways. She said, which one should I wear on the show tomorrow? Yeah. Yeah. And I was torn between this one yeah. and this one, but I went for that one in the end, but that's the one that won. This one won, and then closely followed by the others. It was, a, yes. yeah. So they were all very close by. They were all very one. close, but this one was a, a, yeah, very summery, I think that's why. No, it's lovely, it's so, really yeah, lovely. and it's not. I wouldn't normally wear white as a main colour, but it, I really like it. It suits you, it suits yeah. you. So what, what is it exactly? What are we saying? It's so I've called it the Keep Me Cool T-shirt. Right. So it's made from granny squares, but a variation on a granny square. They're quite a lacy granny square, okay, which no, I've talked you through. And it's 100% cotton, and that's where the Keep Me Cool comes in. I was going to say, because you've called so it. So it's got a really nice feel oh, to it. Oh, lovely. So it's something that's really comfortable to wear in the summer. Yes, and exactly. keep you cool. So you could wear, I thought you could wear it over a swimming costume on the beach, with your shorts, with over a dress. Yeah. You know, so versatile. And what, what, size, what size range so is it? So we're starting with a small, which is, a, a, well, somewhere around about a 30-inch bust, up to an XL, which I've called a size 20, 22, a 46-inch bust. Okay. If I bought two kits, could I make a little dress out of it? Oh, yes, that'd be nice. Because I'm just thinking, this is gorgeous. Yeah. Yes, it stops at top it's, hips or yes, thing. Yes, yeah. But if you did another three row, yeah. three rows, yeah. could you be enough and another Such kit? Such a good idea. There? You could yeah. make it like a little you dress could. out of it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm surprised Rebecca Reed hasn't been on the phone to you asking for one of these. <laughs> Yeah, no, they're, they're Love very me. versatile. Right, shall we go through the colourways then to start with? So let's go through the winning one first. So yeah, what's this so this one is called? Tutti Frutti. I've gone for ice cream flavour. Tutti Frutti. Yeah. Hang on, so let's have so a look. With that, which is that, that one. one there. Yeah. Right, okay, so. Oh, 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 so lovely, oh, aren't oh, they? oh, oh, when you feel, we haven't got them out of the bag before now. When you get yeah. these out of the bag, they're so lovely. Right, so I'm going to put them there. Okay. Right, so we get the pale blue, that lovely soft green, the lemon, the pink, the red, and two white. So is that background actually white, white then? Well, it's, do you know what? It's called cream. And there is white in one of the other kits. So it's oh, yeah, a fraction yeah, it's of a shade yeah. darker than a white. Yeah. So it is actually cream, but obviously it looks white, yeah. and everyone's presumed it is white, but there's a little bit of warmth to it. Yeah, and so it's pure cotton. Pure cotton, 100% cotton, and the softest cotton to work with. It's so lovely. What size hook do I need? A four millimetre hook, but you've got your tension for your square according to your size, so you might want to adjust up or down. Brilliant. So and is crocheting with cotton any different than crocheting with like acrylic or wool or anything? Well, it's a like little that? bit more luxurious. It a feels, luxurious. It feels quite soft on your hands. It's quite does, nice does to work it, with. Does it crochet up bigger or smaller? No, the same. This is a double knit, so it'll come up the same as an acrylic double oh, knit. Oh, isn't it funny? Because you look at it and you think it's quite fine. But yeah, it's... no, it should. Because it, it's just to do with the texture, so yeah. it'll come up very similar to an acrylic double knit. So, Beautiful. Yeah. 39 99 Then what's in here then? The pattern. Okay. <laughs> so that what you've so got there. So what I've got here is, is in there. Yeah, so, yeah. so you've got the front cover, the size chart, so the colour order for your squares, and then all your instructions through to Brilliant. making and it up. If anybody gets stuck, how can they contact you? So I'm on social media, as you know, under Sam Sabido Crochets, and I've got a website, which is adventuresincrafting.co.uk. Brilliant. So and that's all on, Any on messaging, here anyway. Yeah, 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 it's all on the pattern as well. Uh, so. Now, because just recently I bought some furniture for my downstairs room, which I've turned into a sewing room now, and the man who delivered it went, oh, you don't think about crochet, do you? Oh. I went, well, I don't, but I know somebody who oh. does it. Oh, my daughter wants to crochet a dress she's never done it for. And I said, so I've told them. Oh, to well, thank to you. You do your online yes, and I've all got that. Classes sort of and all sorts classes on there. Classes so if you want to learn how sorts. to do it, because if yeah. you want one of these, you don't know how to do it. This is simple, isn't it's it? It's very what, straightforward, what, yeah. Straightforward, yes. sorry, not simple. Straightforward. No. <laughs> straightforward. Okay, so that's Tutti Fruity. Then let's go through the other ones that are behind us on the. Thing then let me just put that back in the right place that one goes with that one right watch one next then ben cookies and cream that'll be that one i'm pretty yeah 
Right, I'll bring that one forward. Let's have a look at the colours in here. So now this is more earthy tones, yeah, aren't they? Yeah, very natural, one? yeah. There you go. And that's this one here, isn't it? It is. See, they're all lovely. They are. I don't know how, don't know how, how you're going to choose out of all of these. That's beautiful, isn't it? Do you know what, June? You'd like you'd look good in one of these, June. I wonder which colourway she'd go for. <laughs> anyway, so you've got your balls of cotton, you've got your pattern, um, and you're ready to go. As long as you've got a four millimetre hook, you're ready to go. Right, I'm just going to move that over there. That goes there, and that one's there. Beautiful, beautiful colours there. Look. I mean, that's why I couldn't decide which one to wear because actually I love them all, and yes. I think I could I could wear them all. Did you make them all in your size then? Well, um, they are all made in roughly the same size. They vary between a medium and an XL, but I could wear them all. Even okay, though I would normally so XL do we have to XL. say thank you to anyone? Yes, we do. Thank you for that. We do. We need to say thank you to Claire Goodman for making this one. Yeah. Ella Brakes Spear for making this one. And Terry ann Perkins for making that one. So you didn't make any much. of them? I made this one. <laughs> so actually, it's a happy coincidence that everyone wants me to wear this one. Oh. <laughs> right, yo, now I'm going to go on to this. This is this one here. Rum and now, raisin. Oh, have you done all ice cream flavours? All flavors, ice cream flavours. Now, yeah. that's not like a rum and raisin ice cream that I know. They're oh, those <laughs> colours. Yeah, oh, they're gorgeous, divine. aren't they? So when, you, when you're designing them, do you sit with the colours in front of you? Do you do a colouring in chart? How do you work out which colours? I do, I, I, so obviously I choose the range of uh, yarn I want to use, yeah. and then I play about, yeah, with the colours, putting them together and seeing how they'll turn have, out. Have we had any? Have we used this? The actual yarn, yes, I used it for a backpack I did recently. Oh, I've not done that. So one, no, no, but um, not for an item of clothing. I don't think for a while. It's so, gorgeous. Now, yeah. how does it wash? It washes really well, yeah. So it's Can I put it in the washing the, machine? Yes, it says here 30 degrees cool wash. Yeah. Um, if, in, if in doubt, hand wash, but I do put my crochet clothing in the washing machine. Yeah. Just on a delicate wash and just be... Re I might actually have the opportunity to demonstrate this. So weaving in ends is really important if you're going to wash it in a washing right. machine. Right, well, you're trying to tell me to hurry up. I'll hurry up. <laughs> no, it's fine. Right, <laughs> then we've got the blue and this one here. Gorgeous. Yeah. This is like seaside. What's this one called? Mint choc chip. Oh, <laughs> We are having an ice cream sundae when you do that. <laughs> Look again, I don't know how you're going to choose. Gorgeous colours there. Beautiful, beautiful colours. 39.99. Right, come on, let's get on with the demo then. So where do okay. we start? What are we going to do? So you're going to start by, well, something I haven't mentioned yet is this is made using the join as you go technique. Right. So, which is a really fun, easy technique. You need this for that. Yes, please. <laughs> Okay. A good way to get yourself started with um, crochet. So this is very beginner friendly. And if you are a more experienced crochet, you'll be able to whip this T-shirt shirt up in no time. It's a really quick make. So this is the square we're going to be making. So you, what you'll need to do is choose your dress size first. So choose what size you want to make it in for right. your T-shirt. And I highly recommend measuring yourself. Even if you think you know, oh, I'd normally be a large in a shop, please do measure yourself before so, you choose. So on the size chart, it's actually got physical measurements. It's got physical me measurements. Of you got, or the finished garment? It's both. Oh, okay, okay perfect. So it's got, your fin it's got your chest circumference. Yeah. Which I, I really highly recommend measuring with a tape measure. Yeah. And then a finished chest circumference. So you can see the ease that will be in it. So if you think, if, I mean, I could give away my chest measurement here, but s let's say, for example, <laughs> you're a 100 centimetre okay, or centimeters. a 40 inch. Yeah. Sorry, Mike. And you measure yourself. Yeah. And do you think, uh, okay, so uh, that makes me a large. Right. Um, and the actual finished chest circumference for that is going to be 112. Right. So that's a nice bit of ease. Yeah, exactly. So you really But if you like thing. wearing it tight, or if you like wearing it extra baggy, exactly. you could go up a size exactly. and you could check to see yeah. if you take measure how yeah, much you've actually got. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah. please do that. Don't just think, oh, I'm normally a medium, I'm going to make that one. Right. Because, uh, you know, my every shop, in fact, there's no uniformity between shops. None if, at all. If you were to look at any of the high street stores, but, size but also, guides. But also, <laughs> you know that when they use... Oh, sorry, I'm just going to okay, that's okay, um, <laughs> that they, When they use different designers, so you can go to Marks and Spencers yeah. and be a size 16 yeah. in a skirt one season. Yeah. And then next season, or a different style, you could be a 14 or an 18. Yeah, exactly. It all depends on so, the grading up. Uh, there's no uniformity If you size look at, at their size charts, because I've been doing this for some of my pattern design, just to get a point of reference, there is not, there's no. mountains of difference no. between a 14 in one shop and a 14 in another. Totally, totally. So, so that's why I say please do measure yourself. And all very uh, expensive designer shops, I don't know if they still do it, always used to 
like a 16 in designer shop, that it would be a 16 as we know it, but they put a 14 in because they want the people who are spending oh. extra money on expensive skirts. Yeah. Or many 14. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, that's psychological. interesting. Right, okay. So, so we that's get the pattern, important. we read the pattern, we make sure that we've yes. got the size. You make your first square, which I will demonstrate in a sec, and the square will change, will be a different size according to which size of T-shirt you're making. Oh, so That's how you get your variation. So, like, if you're a, a large, you're going to be doing more stitches bigger round squares. than bigger squares. Yeah, so oh, you've got the okay. same number of squares in every pattern. You've got your four across. Right. Um, but you are going to, yeah, according to um, which size you are, make more rounds or less rounds. So this is a size small here. Brilliant. So... This for your daughter, this one, then. Yeah, it? exactly, yeah. So you're going to make your first square and then please measure it because on the chart it will show you how big that square should be when it's finished. So it gives you that idea of tension as well. Yeah, perfect. Okay. So I'm now going to demonstrate how to make the second square. I've made the first square in advance. I've got it lovely, nicely blocked on yeah. the blocking board. Uh, I will tell you, I've got these in stock. We'll do it in a... Oh, no, let's do it now. Put it through now. Put it through now. We've got this, but I haven't got that many of them, I don't think. 14 of them. It's a blocking board where you get 12 pins on it. And you're, it, it, I don't know if it's this... Is it the same make? Hang on, let me have a look. Oh, yeah, yeah, this is Millwood. Is, yeah, I think I'm fairly confident it was. Oh, yeah, I think it's exactly yeah. the same. I think, it's, I think ours is a bit paler than yours, that's all. Worthwhile, worthwhile. Do I have to have one of these to do this thing? Well, you don't have to, but I highly recommend blocking. I mean, you, you don't have to have a blocking board to block, but you can put it on your ironing board and um, spray it with water and just pin it into place on yeah. the towel or something. Yeah, yeah. But these are lovely. And they, I mean, if you're someone who likes having the gadgets, it's just brilliant. Yeah, and you exactly. can, so what you do is... I'll talk you through it, actually. Yes, but yeah. I'm gonna, so, right, so, so start from the beginning. I'm going to start right? from the beginning yeah. as if I'm making my first square. Yeah. So you've got your colourways in here. There are three different colourways, and it tells you how many to make of each square in that colourway. So, oh, because they're all diff they're yeah, different. Yeah, so each one is like, well, so there's three slightly yes, different yes, colourways. Yes, 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 yeah. yeah. But it doesn't match if I go if I change, change no, it the only, No, the same amount. So oh. you've got two of the main colour, so that's the only one to keep the same. Yeah. So you've got two of the beige. This one's called Deep Ocean, yeah. Denim and Cream. Lovely. So keep that the same, but you can play about with the others. You can, I like being random. You can be random. Brilliant. So you're going to make a chain four. Oh, June. I told you, June. Oh, she likes your one. I told oh. you, June, would like this. She just mentioned Thank that's you, her favourite. Yeah. <laughs> right. So right. how many chains did we do? So then? starting with a chain of four. Yeah. And then you're going. So hang on, we're doing small now, aren't we? We yes. Yeah, so the, so, but the chain will be the same. The okay. first the first four rounds are identical. Fine. But if you're doing a larger sound, you'll do a size. You'll do more of them. Fine. Okay. So chain four. Yeah. Slip stitch to the first. Yeah. So pull the yarn through the chain and the loop on your hook, and you've made a tiny circle. Yeah. So for anyone who's newish to crochet, you can use a stitch marker to mark the centre of that circle. Available on the website. So Shh. find the um, centre. Yep. Okay, and then you're going to do a chain four in the air. Oh, another chain four? Yes, now this chain four is acting as your first treble and your first chain one. Right, so, so a faux way, treble. Yeah, a yeah. faux treble and a faux chain one. Right, okay. okay. And now I'm going to make a treble into this space, which I've marked with, a sti with my stitch marker. Yeah. If you're more experienced with crochet, you won't need to do that. But if you're new to it, it is quite a handy yeah. guide as to where to go. Yarn over into that circle. Yeah. Pull the yarn back through. Gives you three loops on your hook. Yeah. Yarn over through two. Yarn over through two. Right. Okay, and then you chain one. And then you're going to repeat that six more times until you've got eight little spokes, eight little trebles. Right, okay. Is this, is this a traditional granny smell? It's a kind of a twist on it. No, it's a little bit of variation oh, okay. here okay. to make it a bit more breathable. So right. it's, it's a bit more, more gappy yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> than a traditional granny square. Yeah. So that's where it's hopefully going to keep you cool. <laughs> you see, I think my nan used to make granny's. I'm, I'm going back... 60 or 50 odd years now. But I think my nan's granny squares look more like this than they do the other ones I've seen. 
Yeah, there's because there's all sorts of techniques um, that vary, and yeah. where it's a pattern, it's been passed down through the generations. Yeah. Well, she actually, won't use the pattern. She'll no, sat exactly. There, really, so, so there'll be loads of um, there's loads of variation between how many chains you put in. Yeah. So it does it does really vary the way even people that make a traditional granny square. So I've gone all the way around. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight spokes. Yeah. And now I'm going to slip stitch in the third of this four chain that I made at the beginning. All of this that you're saying is all on the, in the instructions? It's all in the it? pattern, yeah. And do you do writing or do you do chart? I do writing. Right. It's a written pattern. There we go. Lovely. So that is the first round completed. So okay. it's like a little wheel with spokes. Yeah. And then I'm going to fasten that off. So that's the center of your granny square. Fasten that off. And so when I say you've got eight spokes, that includes that very first one, which was your chain three. Yeah. So it's a circle. And now I just want to, I'm just referring to my pattern to see what color to use. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it is, we're doing this one. It's going to be the white. So I get to see the white in action. Okay, so for the next one, I'm joining in any of the one chain spaces. Right, it doesn't matter which, yeah. This is the shade that's a shade lighter than the cream in the one I'm wearing. But uh, it's almost the same. Oh, you're, but isn't you're it? doing mint chop chip. So aren't you? I'm yeah, doing yeah, mint yeah, chop yeah, chip. Yeah. So we're doing a joining, a chain three. Doesn't matter where I'd start. Doesn't matter any of these one chain spaces. And I tend to move away from where I finished off the previous yeah, round. Sure. Makes it a bit simpler. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to do a treble in the same space. Like so. And then you're going to do a chain two in the air. And then two trebles back in the same space. So this is your corner. So people who already crochet might be thinking, well, with a traditional granny square, you do three trebles in yeah. these groups. But with this one, I'm going to make it a bit airier. So I'm just doing two. And right. then you're going to do a chain one. And then you're doing two trebles in the next space. and then another chain one. So Lovely. if I put that down, you can see. So on this, I've just got the one round that's a circle, that's the first round. And for the second round, I'm shaping it into a square. And then I'm going to do another corner. So I've done another chain one, and for the corner, I'm doing two trebles. Chain two, and then another two trebles. Like that, so I've turned the corner. Chain one. Lovely. Oh, it's coming together quite quickly. It does come it? together quite quickly, yeah. Two trebles in the next space. And it's just going in spaces, so that's really fun. You don't have to worry about finding the stitch. Chain one, and now I'll make another corner. Yeah, you so don't have to go as fast as this. You don't, no. You've not speeded the <laughs> film up. It's just the way she crochets. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah, please go slower. I'm, so, I'm sure there's people out there that are faster than me. That's it. So just to show you that square shape coming together. Wow. It's really fun. Yeah. And Does it get addictive? Do you just think, oh, just yes. do one more round, then I'll go to bed? Or yes, just it really the kids does. In one round it and, really does. Yeah. yeah, and it's terrible if you're working on something that's in rows and you've got hundreds of stitches to go. So you just, yeah. think, just get to the end of the next row. Or, or if you're working on something new like this. Yeah. And you're like, oh, oh, just, oh I'm nearly there, I'm nearly there. Yeah. Like, yes, you can have your tea in a minute, children. Yes, just sit there. I think the, um, it's lovely when you're using lots of different colours. Yes, and with having yeah. the three different colourways, it looks so different each time you do yeah. a new colourway. And that's really fun seeing that come together. And I ordered the, I obviously played about with the colours, came up with the colourways, ordered the yarn, was thrilled with how it looked. But then the lovely, my lovely friends who are making the samples were sending me photos of each of their colourway squares. And yeah. I was like, oh my goodness, they look amazing. Oh, you know, it's so lovely exciting. when you see it. It is exciting. So I've just done my final chain one, and yeah. all I need to do now is slip stitch to the third of that original three chain. So Why did the third two. one? Then? It's the third one up because that first pretend three chain that you do, yeah. you want to make it look like a treble. So the two oh, chains course, are the yeah, height yeah. of the post, yeah. and slip stitch in the top, pretending it's like a little stitch. Yeah, got it. That's it, That's and right. then fasten off. Snip. Snip. So. When you do join as you go, you do a, your starting square, which is here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
and then you start a second square. And for so for every consecutive square, so the main colour for this one, it's the mint choc chip, is the denim. Right. So for every consecutive square, you join on this final round. So I've got one more round to go, and then I'll be on a joining round. So just to give you the idea, I've done that much. So you're going to do whatever I'm colour gonna, comes I'm next. I'm going to work one more Great. round in the next colour, which is... Where are we? Is that what it is? I don't know. I'm, I'm going from a, this one here. Soft green. Oh. So this one is... What did I start in the green? That's here. Green. Oh, yeah, I was looking yeah, at the wrong one. Soft yeah, green. Sorry. That's it. So... And then you're going to do another round, like, exactly the same as we have before. So all the it, um, rounds that follow on are made in the same way. So by the time I've done this round, you'll be able to see what you then have to do. Yeah. So it's very straightforward. So then join it in any of the corners this time. So the corners are these two chain spaces. Right. So you're going to join it in any of those corners. Right. And again, I like to go away from where my ends are mm -hmm. and my... my there are a lot of ends, off. aren't there? There are a lot of ends. That's the only thing. <laughs> so join it there. Can, can I not... Um, crochet them in as I'm going. You can work over them, yeah. And so as you work along and you come across, so as I work around here, I'm going to come to this white end. I'll show you as I get there yeah. that you can work over it. But I would just be cautious with washing afterwards. So you do, I would still recommend weaving in ends oh, okay. with a needle. Okay. So I'm not, there's no, not an if, easy way. If to. you're going to use it in the washing machine. So just because it's not the most, I don't find it as secure when you work over them. Okay. I don't know if anyone else finds differently though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. People might be you watching might think, well, it's fine. Machine. I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so another yeah. treble in there. So this is a corner. So working forward, you start exact every round from now on in the same way. Chain three and a treble. Chain two, and now I'm putting two trebles in that same space because it's a corner. And then chain one, and in the next space, put your two trebles. Yeah. Working on the edge now. Chain one, and in the following space, put your two trebles. All of this is in the instructions. All do in you the do, instructions. Do you do video thingies as well? I've got a YouTube channel, which has got, not specific to this, but it's got lots of techniques on oh, there. Okay, it's got okay. the granny square, for example. Yeah, yeah. It's called Sam, Sab uh, Sam Sabido Crochets. So if you want to look up any of Why the have techniques... Why you them all different things? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was all my social media and my YouTube were all Sam Sabido crochets. Yeah. The thing is, if you're Sam Sabido in, you're going to come up. They're all going to yeah, come exactly. up. Yeah, exactly. It's so, just yeah. the website that's slightly different. Yeah. But that, there is a plan in progress to have a Sam Sabido crochets website. Oh, OK, so that will sort that out. Yeah, it just takes longer and more money than you Exactly, think yeah. So in the next two chain space, I'm going to work my corner, which is two trebles... Chain two, and then two trebles again. So, so far, I've worked a corner. Yeah. I've worked along the edge, putting two trebles, chain one, two trebles, chain one. The next corner, two trebles, two chains, two trebles. Yeah. And now I'm just going to repeat that. So one chain, and then two trebles in this space. One chain and then two trebles in the following. Thank you. A bit of teamwork going on here. Mm -hmm. And on to the next corner, which is two trebles. And then a two chain and then two more trebles. Just like so. Yeah. Nearly there. So and then one chain in the air. It's funny, I'm thinking, not that I have any minutes of the day at the moment, but a friend of mine said to me the other day, uh, he was thinking about what he was going to buy me for my birthday coming up, and he was like, what hobbies do you have? And I was suddenly like, I don't have any hobbies. Oh, oh, yeah, that's the thing, so I'm isn't I think I might take up a new hobby. Oh, you tempted it for it to be crochet. Uh, well, we, I'd have to do one of your classes, because you oh, make it look so easy. Oh, that would be brilliant. I'd love that. You could, be, you could come along to it. Oh, my goodness, you'd be... Yes, you'd cause much excitement well, if I you think appeared I'd, yeah. at one of my crochet classes. Yeah, but then I'd be going like, what's this? Why can't I do that? Why is it not working? And you wouldn't want to see me sobbing in the corner. <laughs> you'd be fine. You could do it these days where anyway. Are you? Where, are, where are your classes? I'm though? based in Tring in Hertfordshire. Oh, that's right. That's yeah, right. so yeah, most of them are around that area. 
Lovely. Okay, so, so gap. I've just got to do my final Go to the third stitch. one. Yes, in the third of the yep. three chain. And then fasten off. Yeah, lovely. So for the size small, that's as far as you go before you join the final round. Oh, okay. Okay, so if I just take that off there. So this is a finished one. Now, back to blocking. Yeah. When you make your size and you get to the round before the final round, so I'm ready to put my final round on, mm -hmm. I would suggest weaving in your ends and blocking it at this stage before you add your final round. Oh, okay then. So, because you, I think you can probably see just by looking at these two, the difference that blocking makes. Yeah, no, no, totally. I mean, this one... Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> But no, no, totally. To look at, I mean, look at the yeah. difference. And that's just from having it on the blocker. Yeah, and, and spraying it with water. Yeah. So I've actually got some lavender spray, water spray, a bit fancy these oh, days. Yes. So I put it on my blocking board. Right. So, so, ha so um, if I'm there yeah. at this stage now, how do I weave in those small. ends? Ah, uh, weaving in ends. So Sorry, I don't know if I'm jumping ahead. Or no, you. no, it's fine. You're going to need a needle, which I haven't got out at the moment, so I'll get one out in a minute. Oh, OK, don't worry. Um, and then you, we, uh, you sew show us, them show in us when you on the back. Show. Yeah. Um, but you do all that first. But yeah. let's say we've done that. Yeah. And then I would put it onto the blocking board. So the corners go over the dowels, push it okay, down. OK, but those squares... You just had the bigger one on there. How come that's? I've just on there? moved it. Oh, I didn't see you. So move yeah, it. no, oh, but as if it, by sorry. magic, I've yeah. just moved it. And then when you've got the dowels in, spray it with water. Lavender water. It doesn't have to be lavender yeah. water. <laughs> just yeah. any water, like your plant mist or something. Okay, all right. Just literally, just give it just a mist. Spray it. Yeah. And give it a mist. Yeah. You can wash them. I know Rebecca Reed washes hers before she blocks oh, them. Oh, does so she? You can do that too, as long as She's they get mad, wet. <laughs> I've never had the patience to do that, let's no, just say. Okay. And then you let it air dry and right. you can stack them up on here. So you could have 10 on here. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you don't have to just do one at a time. Yeah. And then let it... I was going to say, because this could be really time consuming if you're then waiting yes. to do the next yeah, one. So exactly. you make lots of them at that so, size yeah. and, and just if, put them on there. You know, if you want it to be a production line, I think you need, say, 11 in one colourway. So you could do all of those. Yeah. Do your first one, do all of those. Oh, and you can't, but what you need, you can't join until you've got all of your no, squares so you, you up to that point. you can only do the middly bits like yes, that. Yes, up yeah. until the round before yeah. your final round, which okay. you make with your main colour. Okay. So do them all if you want to. I mean, or you just, or you just make them all and join them as you go. Yeah. But I, I do think it makes a difference to block them. Okay. Okay. You can see all, just from being on there for that few seconds. Yeah, it makes that such changed. a difference. Yeah, exactly. And also... You know, you do find even the most experienced crochet finds their tensions vary depending on mood time in. of the day, mood, yeah. all this sort of thing. Okay. So it just evens them up as well. Right. So now to show you the join as you go technique. Okay. So when you join as you go, you work your final round and that's always going to be in the main colourway. So it's denim with this one. Yeah. And the, pr the principle is when you do a chain, you also slip stitch it to your existing square. As you're crocheting it. So you do a chain and then you'll slip stitch it as you're crocheting it. Come on then. So people can be a bit frightened of joins you go. Other, I mean, it's kind of a bit, some people absolutely love it. And other people are like, oh, I've never tried it. Seems no, a bit tricky. No, but time to do it first. It's first not, time, exactly. So in your corner, join your main colour. Yeah. Make your chain three. And then make one treble. A real treble. A real treble, not a pretend treble and yeah. a real treble. And now I'm at the point in the pattern where normally I'd make a chain two space. Yeah. So that's when you make those chain spaces, that's where you join it. So do a chain one and then get your original square and in the corner. Yeah. Put your, now I tend to do it like this as if wrong sides are facing. So yeah. from underneath, put your hook through. And then how, how can you tell the wrong side? How do you know it's, it's wrong side? So it, it does look different because I always work on the right side. So right. that's the back of a granny square and that's the oh, front. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah, you yeah. want them all the right Same sides around, up. Yeah, yeah. Basically, the Vs at the top of the stitches of course, are yeah. facing up. Mm -hmm. So I've done one chain and then I'm putting my hook through the corner space yeah. of the first square, pulling the yarn back through that corner space and through the loop on my hook. So that's a slip stitch. Okay. Then I do another chain, just one single chain just in the one. air. Yeah. And now I'm going back into the second square in that corner, and I'm going to make two trebles in there. Right. 
In the, in the, in the, sorry, you, you take it through the first hole or the second hole you've gone in that time. Oh, still in the so same... So I'm going back in the original, original on hole. the new square, yep, back yep. in. So I'm always yep. working my trebles onto my new square. Right. But when I do the chains, I join it to the original right. first yep. square. Yep. So now it's chain one in the air, in the pattern. Yeah. And now I'm going to join it in the next chain space. Yeah. So I've joined it there. And look, my hook wants to do it anyway. It's yeah. going to the next chain space of the first square. Right. And pull it back through there and through the loop on your hook. OK. That's it. And now continuing the actual pattern, it's two trebles on the new square. Yeah. Two trebles in the next one chain space. Okay. So only through that square, you don't. Do you, yeah. So you're only ever joining it with the one yes. chain and the uh, slip stitch. Yes, yeah. yeah. So I've done my two trebles. Yeah. So I'm working on this square as if it's on its own. Yeah. And then I do a chain one, and then I find the next one chain space on the first square that I've already made, yeah. and I slip stitch in there. And that's the only way of joining it. That's all you do to join it. Okay. So it's joined in those one chain spaces. And that's enough to hold them together? That's enough to hold them together, yeah. Okay. And then two through the new trebles hole. through the new, yeah, the new hole. Well, I've got this. They have. I think you already can crochet, you just actually haven't done it yet. <laughs> no, no, I, I know all the terminology. Yeah. I don't know where you've you got to go, bridge. but it's actually doing it, yeah. And then one chain, and then find the next hole on this one. Yeah. And slip stitch in there. So the only place you're joining it is after you've done a chain on the new square, you slip stitch in the chain space on the old square. Yeah. Two uh, so this means, so do you just do, in, do, you just do rows to start with? Rows of yes. three? Yes. Yeah. Or four, is it? Yes, three? four. Uh, I can't remember now. Three. Three, yeah, thank you. There's four over the arms yeah. and then three in the other bit. Yeah. So now I'm on the corner. So I've joined a, on a, in all the one chain spaces. Yeah. And now I'm going to start the corner on the new square. Two trebles in there. And I've got to the point where I do a chain two space. Yeah, because you can't now carry on round, can you? So well, now I do a one chain and I slip it. So I still need to join to this corner. So yeah, it's yeah, right. Joined. So I'm on the heads of you. And then I do one chain again and I put, I'm going back into my new square yeah. and putting two trebles in there. Yeah. Like so. And that's it joined to that square. Right. It's so going to look now, odd, isn't it? Because this one looks so much bigger than that yes, one. Yes. Yeah. But now I'm just going to continue working around this one as, yes. if, as I normally would. So now, just as if you normally would, two trebles in the gap. Yeah. Chain one. Two trebles. And then a chain one. And yeah. keep going like so. All the way around. All the way around. Just like you have been with the previous rounds. Next corner. It's going to be two trebles. Isn't it funny the way they wind yarn? I know. All, it's all over the place. Chain two, two trebles. And you can see it's starting to take shape now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you've got, the, you know, and all you need to do is continue working round there. Okay, is the only it. time I block it when it's a single square? Well, I would, once the whole garment is made, then block it once more. And so you... Well, when it's made into a complete once garment? Once it's made into a complete garment, Isn't yeah. Isn't that a bit difficult to... Uh, I put it on my ironing board, so don't use your blocking no, board, no. your new... Your new wooden blocking board, blocking today, board yeah. at that point. I put it on my ironing board and I shape it and I steam it with my iron, but just held or just... But in half, it. It, like, so it, yeah, it in looks sections. like this, so it looks like that on yes, your ironing board. Yes, yes, Yeah, you yeah. don't try and... No, so I assemble the whole thing into something that looks like your T-shirt yeah. and lay it flat on your ironing board and steam it. We don't touch, well, you can with cotton touch it, actually, but I hold my iron about an inch above and oh, okay, steam right, it, yeah, yeah, which yeah. gives it enough wetness. Mm -hmm. Or you can wash the whole thing. When I used to go to my nan's house, she'd have her um, towels laid out by the radiator with all her sweaters pulled into shape, drying on them. Right, so you're supposed to do it. That's yeah, you're exactly. Do it, yeah. So you can do it like that. Yeah. So you can just wash it, give it a gentle wring out, yeah. put it on a towel and yeah. shape so it. So what you do with a posh yeah. jumper like cashmere jumper, you yeah. wash it, gently get rid of the excess water, put it on a towel, roll the towel so it takes the excess fluid out, then put it on another towel flat and leave it to dry. Look, they're all over the house. Yeah. Well, it was lovely. So that's, you know, that is essentially what you're doing. Yeah. You can buy also... Um, foam blocking boards that are joined together. Oh, like yes, it's like in the gym, like children's, yes, children's yes, play jigsaw exactly. ones. Yeah. And you can 
do the same thing, dampen your garment and yeah. lay it out and block it on that. So there's loads of different ways of doing it. I'm a bit of a, you know, I'm always in a hurry, so I do mine on my ironing board. Yeah. But <laughs> so nobody else can iron anything while you're No, that <laughs> that's it. But if you, um, if you do wash it, then again, it's good to do what we just discussed. When, if you do wash it either by hand, if you've worn it, if you know, and you want to cl it clean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, wash it and um, gently wring it out or give it a, a sort of a squeeze in the, your towel yeah. and then lay it out to air dry. When I went past, when I went for my haircut last week, I went past a charity shop in Ulster and outside they had a whole rail of crocheted blankets. Oh, how lovely. All, all there ready. I mean, they look so beautiful, like Someone's big chunky collection, ones. collection probably. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay, so that's how it looks now. Bearing in mind, I had, didn't get the opportunity to block this square properly. No, exactly. But you'll have blocked but all of yours. But you'll have blocked yeah. all of yours. And then you just continue like that. So, so you do a row of three. Yes. And then when you come to do your next, you've done your one wrong row. Yeah. You do your next one up to the round before the last. And then you join it here. So you don't do a row of three in a row. No, you can't because you, you haven't got the blue... No, well, the best way you could do, and then you just have to join them all together. Yeah. But you can just join, the whole thing can be joined as you go. Yes, okay. That's so you, right. you yeah. make all of them to yeah. that stage, yeah. that three-quarter stage, and then you add each one exactly. individually. Exactly. So your piece of work is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger on your on your lap, yes. isn't it? Yes. I and mean, I did do mine as four panels. You've got a front panel, back panel, and two sleeves. Oh, okay. And then I, just to get the security of having joined them together at the seam, yes, it's a bit yeah, better. Yeah. But um, yeah, so you'll have a, a bigger piece of work that looks like a okay. T-shirt yeah. on your lap. So then, how, when do you do this? That's and the this? that's the edging. So that's the ribbing. That if I've got time, I can. Oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Carry on, just carry okay. on then. Yeah, yeah. Right. So when you come to do your ribbing, um, you're going to need to think about what you've got colour-wise. I've I've gone through because you can see in mine I've got some colours featured in it. So instead of doing it all in white or cream in this instance, uh, right, right, yeah, I've yeah, got yeah. a pink, a red, and a soft green. Yeah. So you can choose which colours you want, although I have suggested a colour order. So right. it's up to you. Do I have to do different colours? I couldn't do the whole thing in the overall. You could, be enough. Yes. So that's where you just about have enough. Okay. So but to think, keep things safe, yeah, do it in the pattern. stripes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. But you'll see all that described in yeah, the pattern. Yeah, because you haven't done, you've only done one colour on yeah, the sleeve. Yeah, exactly. You haven't done three colours on the sleeve. So, you, you know, you'll see that in the pattern. Yeah. Some of these are, like the blue and this the beige, are in solid colour. Yeah. So, it, you have got enough, but I was just wanting to make sure you had enough. Yeah, so just yeah, be course, careful. Yeah. Well, I suppose it also depends which size you're making. Exactly. If you're making a small size, you're going to have you more will. Yarn, more exactly. Cotton, you? And yeah. I have written all that into the pattern. Exactly. So, for the edging, you're going to join your colour in a corner space. It's still just trebles, but it's nice to have the opportunity to demonstrate this because of the ribbing element. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chain three, and then you're going to make one treble in every stitch and in every chain space. So this time we are going into the stitches, and I'm on the front of the work. So the back, you can see, it's got the ends, but yeah, also yeah. it looks slightly different. So join on the front, yarn over for your treble, and you're going underneath the V of the stitch. Pull the yarn back through, yarn over through two, yarn over through two. And then in the one chain space, make a treble just in the space. And then a treble into both of the two stitches ahead of you. So you're making just a plain row of trebles by making one treble in every space yeah. and in every stitch. Keep going. So whoops, make sure you get under both strands of the V there. So I'm going to just go along here and you can see already that looks like a nice edging. You can see the effect of it. So one in every stitch and then in the space. I actually really like putting the edging on. It's when you feel like it all comes together. And then I've got to a, a chain two space, but I still just put one treble in there. Uh -huh. And a consecutive chain two space, which is here. So put another treble. This is good because you're mainly going through ho the holes, aren't you? It's very yeah, seldom. Because I always worry that yeah. you go, go through the top of the V or go around the back of the V. This is you're going into the holes. Yeah, aren't this you? is just your setting up row where yeah. you're just working. You are going the stitches as well, but nice and straightforward to find. Yeah, 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 yeah. And hopefully you can see with me working with this cotton how easy it is to work with. Yeah. And also, it's not splitting, is no, it? No, not at some all. some yarns, you put you yes. put a hook, don't you, and it splits. Exactly, and it, this one just glides, and it's really soft and comfy to work with, and feels soft to wear. Yeah. So 
go all the way along. And I'm nearly at the end, but so I'd like to get to the end just to show you the yeah, effects. Yeah, yeah. Also, it neatens up any gaps and things. Yeah. That's also what I love about crochet. If you take, if you drop a, if you're doing knitting, yeah. and you take your needle out, like, you've got to try and find them. I, mean, I it's know. This, it's there, isn't yeah, it? One exactly. hook hoops there, yeah. And then what, final corner space. So you'll do that all the way around the bottom edge, all the way the, around the cuffs, all the way around the neck. Right. Fasten off. Now I'm going to go to the main colour. It will tell you in the pattern which colours to use. Yeah. Okay, and I'm going to just join it. Now you will um, join it as you finish your round, but I'm just going to join it in the top of that three chain there. And I'm just going to do three chains, not including the joining chain, yeah. as my first pretend treble. And now I'm going to do the... Actually, it looks like a nice pencil case at the moment, doesn't it? Oh, oh Now yeah. we're getting ideas as we go along. Right, now we're going to do the ribbing. So the ribbing is going around the post. Now, if you want to, you can just do normal trebles. But to get the effect of the ribbing, you're going to make your treble. So yarn over first. Find the next post. So we're not looking at stitches anymore. So stitches sit on top of your post. Yeah. We're looking at these posts of the oh, Okay, stitch. okay, yeah. So yarn over and find that post and on the front of your work, put your hook underneath and through. Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. not going into any stitch. No, any no, 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 no. It's still doing it's the holes. Going, okay. Yeah, it's still yeah, the yeah. holes. Yeah. And this one's called a front post treble because you do it on the front of the work. Oh, okay. You can do a back post treble as well. Yes. Then, Grab is that what gives that crisscrossy effect? Yeah, there. it is, yeah. yeah. Grab the yarn and put it through. Yeah. And I always say put it up in the air because that straightens out any um, overlapping there. Yeah. Gives you your three loops on your hook and then finish your treble as normal. So yarn over through two, mm. yarn over through two. And then, so that's that front post and you can see it sits slightly on top of the work. Yeah. Next, we're going to do a back post treble. So yarn over and this time you come behind. So your hook needs to be behind the work. Oh, okay, and go and over the top of it. still going, yes, yeah. over the top of the post this time, like that. Now this is where it gets a little bit less clear. So what I do is I hold on to the work there. There's your post. Yeah. Pull the yarn back under the post. Right. Gives you three loops. And look, my hook's still at the back of the work. Yeah. Yarn over through two, yarn over through two. So then you've got your front post and your back post. And I'm just going to continue that pattern all the way along. Yeah. So yarn over from the front, you go under the post and make your treble. And then back post, so yarn over from behind, come on up and over it. Right. And if I do a few more, front post, you alternate front post, back post. And you can see it gives it that kind of, like you said, crisscrossy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So on living. yours, this one you've just done, your, your solid side, I'm going to be touching you now. The, you've got the <laughs> ivory there, yeah. which is your denim on this one yes. that you're doing here. Yeah. Then you've done the line of green, yes. which is your line of, is that your line of pink on yes, this one? Yes, that's right, yeah. But then you've gone straight to your... Main colour, where it's actually colour. in the pattern you're, yeah. yeah. You get, you, in, your main, in the pattern, I've done another two rows of colour. Of different colours. Yes, I yeah. think you, you've jumped up to this bit I up have, here. yeah. And then those effect. things, those behind the post have things, do those cause these ridges yes. up here? Yes, they cause the ridges. We know each other, it's fine, I'm allowed to <laughs> So as you get going, once you've established this pattern for that first round where you do your front post, back post, yeah. it gets much easier to work cons uh, consecutive rounds. Yes. Because you can see... You always need to put a front post around a front post and a back post around a back so post. So when we do this bit, yes, is the whole t-shirt made? Yes. Apart from the neckline, exactly. so the t-shirt finishes there and yeah. there. Yeah. And you're just doing this, so you go all the way around the exactly. neckline doing this. Yeah. Okay, yeah. All around the bottom, yeah. all around. So you're working. Oh, and the bottom. I forgot about the bottom. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Bottom neckline and cuffs are all edged like this. So whereas right. I've got, I go in a row. You'll go all the way around yes, and yeah. slip stitch it. Yeah. So you can see, and what I'm going to do, if I've got time... You've got plenty of time. Oh, good. Is start another row so you can see the effect it has. That's why I did the main colour, because actually you can see the ribbing really nicely when it's worked in the same colour. Yeah. So once you get to your main colour rounds... So I love... I mean, I put this on most of my patterns. It's, there's other ways of adding ribbing, but this is so 
easy and fun. So if people and... have made one of your patterns before, they'll be able oh, to Oh, it's this highly likely that yeah. they'll have done this ribbing before. Yeah. Has it got a name? No. Oh. Well, <laughs> well, I mean, in, in terms of the crochet world, I guess it's, it, it does get called ribbing. And right. the stitch names are front post, back post. Oh, OK. But, yeah. Front, back, back, back. front post, back front post. post, back post yeah. ribbing. Yeah, exactly. That's what it's called. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's Named right. it now. So now, um, are we allowed to talk about what's happening in October? Yes. Someone's got a book coming out in October. Very exciting. Yeah, it's very, very, I'm going to, I'm blushing now. Oh. It's very exciting. Yeah, I'm thrilled. So it's is it all done? Process. All done, gone off to the printers. So and now did you have a right waiting. to veto over which picture went in the cover? <laughs> I, had, I, had, I had a, I got, I was really involved in it. They were really amazing, the oh, publishers. Oh, brilliant. So, yeah, I went along to a photo shoot with some <gasps> models and watched it all being oh, photographed. Wow. And, yeah, because yeah, a lot of the time people who write books, they just send their stuff off yeah. and it's photographed by someone else and it comes yeah. back with how they've yeah, started. Yeah, no, I everything. was really, really pleased to be involved in it all. Oh. It, was, it was such an amazing experience. So, so what's, can we ask what's in the book? It's, you'll be surprised to hear Granny Square Clothing. Oh, okay, fine. Oh, no, <laughs> so no, 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 that's nice. It's uh, 15 patterns all made from, they're not all Granny Squares, but twists on the Granny Square. So there's some squares, there's some motifs, there's some hexagons, oh, all sorts in exciting. there. So it's very exciting. October will be here before you know it. You're yeah. going on a world tour around all the bookshops. Oh, I'd like to. We'll oh, see. no, you say that now. <laughs> you won't want to be doing that. <laughs> But how brilliant. Yeah, I'm very, very excited. It's oh, we'll talk more about that in October then when yeah. it comes out. Yeah. Thank you. Right, so carry on. So carry on. this is in the book, ribbing. Yeah. Oh, it's the ribbing. <laughs> so is, there's, there's actual patterns and techniques in there. Yes, yes. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So brilliant for beginners then. Yeah, really. Yeah, very, hopefully very user friendly is what I've aimed for. Oh, yeah. oh how fantastic. Yeah, it's amazing. Also, what's next? You've done telly. You've got I know. Book. You've got your show. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> Right, so that's a, that second row of ribbing done. Yeah, yeah. So when it comes to the next row, yeah. I'm going to, you will slip stitch and carry on round, but yes, other course, than yeah. that, the only other difference, I'm just going to join it in this third of this three chain. Oh, they're seeing an owl's face in the gallery now. What's that? Owl's face. Oh, yes, eyes. oh, yes. You did them identical, it'd be an owl's face. Wouldn't that it? is actually. Oh, we're really doing your cool. next book, this is book number yeah. two <laughs> Granny Square Granny Animals. Square animals. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so ahead of me is a front post. I'm continuing the pattern of front post, back post. But yep. you can see, hopefully, that the front posts are raised yep. and the and back posts sit behind. Yep. So if you're going merrily around your garment and you discover you've accidentally put two front posts together instead of doing front post, back yeah, post, yeah. that's fine. Just continue that. Don't try to correct it by going, oh, we'll now put a back post. And if you've got two front posts together, just continue with two front posts together oh, okay so if you make a mistake yeah which you know is inevitable it does happen either undo it which is fine or yeah. just stick with always put a front post around a front post and a back post around a back so post. even though you might have done two yes front you yeah. just then go back to front back front back front exactly back. Yeah. two fronts and then front back front back is it going to be that noticeable no it won't be noticeable if you do that. Yeah. If you try and rectify it, Oh, it will. OK, that's when it starts to yeah, be Yeah, so you want to keep that pattern. And you can see, as I go on, it gets a, becomes more defined. Yeah, yeah, we ribbing. can see it on the one you wear. Well, yeah. On, on, on all of them, you've yeah. got that depth. Oh, actually, on the blue one, they've done it the opposite way around. They've start, gone straight with the background yeah. colour and done a little bit exactly. of that at the so top. Exactly, so you can be they? a bit creative with it as well. Blue one's catching up. I will, I'll do it. Well, uh, we've got a couple more minutes, then I'll do a big, uh, do a big recap. OK. Because I want to know how the family are. Have any of them gone to university Oh, yet? not yet next year. I've got a daughter who's in year 12 and she's looking at university. So is that, is that a, is it year 12? Uh, it's different. Yeah, year 12's first year of A-levels. Oh, yeah. lower six. Yeah, lower, lower six. Oh, well, we've forgotten yeah. about lower six and upper six. Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> no, I well. had it too. Oh, did you? <laughs> yeah. And we're going around looking at universities. I'm really annoying her because I'm going, oh, my goodness, this what is amazing. She, she wants to do structural engineering. I know. <laughs> it's that cardly crochet. I know. Yeah, so she's very, very I much just, of that mind. I just think it's fantastic that anybody, because Steffi Stern was in this week about her children. One's gone off to do physics, one's a bodybuilder, one's, and it's oh, just really? brilliant the way yeah. that. Nowadays, Anything's like when possible. I was at school, you went to university to be a doctor or a lawyer or a teacher. Yeah. Now it's so much more kind of like, yeah. just go and do what you want to do. It do you is, know and I it's, it's you know, we went, we've been going to open days and, um, 
they talk about the courses and it all just sounds so exciting. I uh, went with my sign niece. Me up. Yeah, I went with my niece and she was doing English and cre creative writing. And uh, I went to one of the lectures with her thinking, well, I think I could do a degree. <laughs> after five minutes, I was like, anyway, listen, we're going to go on, got to go on. Okay. So, and no, I've not gone on the read degree. Right, and let's let's move all that over there if you don't mind. And we'll just do the four the four bundles now. So this one here is called Rum and Raisin, which is this one here. I'll bring that into the shot there. Um, keeping the bags with it because I don't want anything to get confused, right? So that's that colourway, beautiful colourway. That makes this one here. Beautiful. When I was little, my mum used to have a chocolate, and I don't know what it was called, but it had rum and raisin in it. Oh, really? It was a Saturday night treat, yeah. Oh, nice. Anyway, so that's that one there, rum and raisin. Then we've got uh, this one here, which is called Tutti Frutti, which is this one. <laughs> Beautiful. Tutti Frutti one there. Gorgeous colours there. Plus your pattern, $39.99. Uh, right, OK, please be careful. There's way too many people got that in their baskets. You need to check out on that one if you want that one. I know what happens on this, on this show. Is you, you, it's so intriguing to watch. You forget to check out, so you do need to start checking out. Right, this is Cookies and Cream. Cookies and Cream, they're beautiful. More n earthy, natural tones. And they've given them proper names. Like sage and <laughs> yeah. terracotta, not anything airy, fairy, or beige, I hate that <laughs> one. Mid grey. Very, oh, hang on a second. There you go. So that one there is your cookies and cream, which is this one here. 100% pork, pure cotton, remember. Pure, not pork, pure cotton. <laughs> and then we've got their chocolate chip, which is the one we've, the one we've just been uh, demoing. Two, no, mint chocolate chip. You've done Tutti Frutti. 39.99. Beautiful. And then we've also got the blocking board. So is, it, is this one in the lead? Is that one in the lead then? Yeah, get in the shot. Look, we match today, don't yeah, we, colour yeah. so, Um That one's in the lead still. Uh, right, blocking board. Oh, they're all sold. Sold out. Sold out. Well done. Sold out. Uh, right. OK, then. Oh, OK. Uh, do we need to do that yet? Have we got to do it now? I'll ask you, when are you in next? 24th of June. 20, and what are you doing? I'm doing a beautiful summer wrap for oh, holidays. Lovely. Is that a Monday, 24th of June? It is, yeah. So like you be with Rebecca Mead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She always gets the good show. <laughs> it's lovely to see her, but it's nice to see you today. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Right. No, no, it's a good show, but she always gets some speedo, that's what I mean. <laughs> right, OK, now, I've got to, the, he's forgotten to do the menu, so we'll do it from tomorrow's website, right? So here we go. So it's, oh, now, it's, what are we selling in the first hour? Because I've got, I've got chocolate chip, a Sandy chocolate chip cookie and Kim Suleiman in tomorrow. We're not spending a whole hour drinking a cup of tea and a biscuit. It's only 10 minutes, so I don't know what we're selling in the first hour. Then we've got Kim Suleiman with Six Penny Memories. Then we've got, uh, Sand oh, what's Stuart doing in at 10 o'clock? I've got an hour off. So Stuart will be in doing the Sandy chocolate chip cookie with the brand new quilt, My Sunflower. Oh, and then I'm back, look. Six Penny Memories, Kim Suleiman with more Six Penny Memories. Uh, now, I saw Alistair, oh, I'll talk to you in a minute. And Sandy chocolate chip cookie bringing her project Summer Tote, the Portofino bag at 12 o'clock. Now, you know, Kim... At works with Alistair a lot. You know Alistair used to be on sewing coach, I think. I caught him on the tapes on the other channel. Um, he's lost so much weight. He's like this. He's like that. Ooh. Oh, no. Impressive. No, he hasn't had surgery. <laughs> right, we've got to go. Give me a hug. It's oh, lovely so to see you. Like really lovely to see you. Send my love to the family. Oh, and I will do. come to one of your classes Oh, I'd one love day. that. Uh, I'll see you tomorrow morning. Now, Dave Bradford's up next. What's he got first? I can't see. Hunky Dory. Hunky Dory. He's got a Hunky Dory and he's got his pink jacket on. So he's obviously got some good news. I don't know. <laughs> or he's in a happy mood. Anyway, he'll see you in a couple of minutes' time. I'll see, well, I won't see you. I'll watch you in June. <laughs> and I'll see you tomorrow morning for a cup of tea at 8 o'clock.